looking a little closer to the ground. I tell you what, though, that, no, that's still got some uh, air in the tyre. He will get back round again. I don't think it will take too long to clear up down at the incident because he'd barely touched the tyres. The pits are open for prototypes. It'll be uh, Scott Dixon who has the opportunity to come in first in the number 01 Cadillac, then Mike Conway for Wheel and Engineering, Richard Westbrook for JDC Miller Motorsports, and making up a Cadillac foursome at the top, Kevin Magnuson in the 02. So both the Chip Ganassi run cars, Whelan and JDC, that is uh, four out of the five Cadillacs at the front of the field. And I'm now interested to see if they come or not. Well, the number 60 car will come in uh, for sure. That's in fifth place for Ollie Jarvis yeah. in the Acura from MSR. Yeah, but he's back on a lead lap, so you know making a pit stop now isn't going to cost him because Good point. Uh, you know, so he will definitely come in now. The question is how many of the other guys will and who will stay out. Uh, if the first guy comes in, will somebody else stay out? Yeah, it's, it's all about uh, Michelin endurance cut points at this stage. Right, into the pit lane. None of the top prototypes yeah. have come in, have they? Kevin Magnussen is in. Yes, he has. So the first of the, of the leaders is the 0-2 Kevin Magnussen from fourth place. As Jeremy Shaw predicted, Oliver Jarvis in from fifth. And Jimmy Johnson from sixth. Ricky Taylor now behind the wheel of the uh, number 10, Konica Minolta Cadillac. We'll start with Andrew at pit in. Yeah, pit in, but the car's pit out because he's just roared down the lane. Uh, just uh, fuel, that's why I call one of the short services. No driver change down here for the 02. Uh, and the 48, I'll get down to the 48, John. I'm going to run down there. You can get the lights right in your eyes in the pit lane this time of night. Oh, the engine cover is off the 48, Andrew, and they are working on the area around. The, in fact, they, they're taking, they've taken the tail off, and now they take. The, uh, are the 60 doing the same as well? It's a new tail and a new engine cover on the 60, certainly a new engine cover. They had a little crack, remember, above the back wheel, but there's work going on by the gearbox on the 48 car, and now they're putting the rear wing back on. It's just a couple of ratchet bolts there. Jimmy Johnson talking to the team members as the cover goes back on. Andrew. Yeah, I'm getting down there, John. All right, don't worry. Well, let's go to Joe Bradley in GT, lads. <laughs> yeah, Owen Tringland's managed to get that 64 TGM Porsche here. All that was wrong with the car was the left front tyre was punctured. Now, as to whether that's caused or effect, I do not know. I can't tell. No damage on the car, though, and right. the car's gone back out. Yeah, it would have been that uh, tyre that he was leaning on when he went out. So the 48 has gone, the Allied Cadillac, and the, and the 60 of uh, Sirius XM Acura for Michael Shank Racing, also with the engine cover replaced, has just gone out as well. Andrew can have a chat with uh, Mike Rockenfeller, and let's see if we can find out some news. Yeah, Mike, what was that all about? I was running down the pit lane to try and see what you were doing. Well, I mean, um, you know, when Jose was in the car, we got hit yeah. by the Ganassi car on the rear end. And since then, we were struggling a little bit with pace. And uh, now we used the opportunity uh, to change the rear end and uh, just to make sure, you know, we have a good car again. And uh, it's a long race. Uh, we all know it's not uh, decided in the night. Normally, it, it will be at the end uh, tomorrow. Excellent, thanks. That's what we thought it was, but thanks for confirming it. He got an old man running. Don't have to do that, Andrew, honestly. Much better to just saunter down there, really. <laughs> It, it, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get the, we know we'll get the information from you. At the Riley number 74, uh, the, there's a brake change going on uh, on the uh, front of that car and some changes in the regulations, uh, Jeremy, about brake changes for LMP3. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the uh, LMP3 was introduced into the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship last season. These cars really weren't meant to do 24 hours necessarily. Uh, brakes were marginal. These teams at this level, LMP3, you know, they're not the multi-million dollar operations you see at the top end of the sport. 
certainly some of them aren't. Uh, but so uh, they, they, they need to make a, a brake change. Last year they had to make that mandatory brake change and they were given eight, there had to be a minimum pit stop time for eight minutes just to make sure that yeah, there was no rushing of that of that procedure well since then you know, the teams have got a lot more proficient they've had the teams for much longer this time this year that minimum time spent on pit lane making that brake change which must be done anytime in the first 22 hours i think of the race at any time is a minimum of four minutes so that car will lose a lap at this stage but in the previous times even on the yellow it would have lost several laps and so uh, yeah it's, uh, i think interestingly certainly this with just six hours into a 24-hour race they're making a stop relatively early with that car and they're going to hope they don't have any brake issues later on. I'm sure that's Riley Motorsports and Bill Riley. He will know exactly how far those brake, that brake system will take the punishment for here at the Daytona International Speedway. 64 TGM Porsche is back in, Joe Bradley. Now, you reported that they just threw a tyre at ah, That would have been emergency service yeah. for that car. Of course it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. He came in with a problem, remember. It was the 64 Porsche, remember, that caused this caution period. Now he's had to come back in and take what is a proper pit stop. And all he's done is take on fuel, extending that fuel window. Yeah, thanks, uh, Joe Bradley. Dave Alcock saying two Cadillacs changing rear wings. Maybe this is for aero purposes. As the air is killing. No, I, I don't. I don't think that's the case, Dave. As, as, as you heard Mike Rockefeller say, his car, the 48 car, was uh, damaged when it was run into by the uh, 01 Chip Ganassi car, and the uh, the other car was the Mike Shank Racing Acura, and that car had a crack above the wheel on the right rear from memory that they had looked at before so I think that's what they were looking at there but they had to take the rear wing assembly off to get to the engine cover which has that wing piece on uh, I'm sure Andre will be down at MSR just to confirm that that is the uh, situation uh, and in fact I've just heard Andrew May saying I can confirm so excellent stuff uh, at him radio if you want to get in touch uh, with us, 30 minutes short for, of another pit stop of my washing machine, says Marcel Duke. I'm keeping the housework going while listening to the Rolex 24. It's half one in the morning, CET, six Celsius outside in East Belgium. It's about the same here at the moment. Seven degrees Celsius, tracks holding up nicely. It's just dropped another two or three degrees down to 13 degrees celsius on the track now andrew is down at era motorsport for a little catch-up yeah john i've seen some crazy and funny things in motor racing in my life but never before have i seen a hot dog machine with the sausages rotating but that is what happening in era motorsport Andrew, hot we've dog got... machine in the era motorsport and uh, just the number eight tower car has just come in we're expecting ritzy in in a moment in the 62 but I'm going to go back for a hot dog if I get a chance. Well, you've just made me feel hungry, but fortunately, there's a great tradition of that right here uh, in the area where we have the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre, and uh, there's some warming hot dogs just behind us. So uh, I think while Jeremy gives us a little rundown, I might just go and grab one myself. Jeremy, in the middle of pit stops, but uh, at the front of the field, the top cars the ones that wanted to come in have come in. Yes, they have indeed, John. And we're still uh, eight minutes. Uh, we are, what, yeah, eight and a half minutes away from a six-hour point in the race. Most likely we are going to go back to green before the, the six-hour elapses. So the uh, the points for the Michelin Endurance Cup are not going to be uh, given out until after that. Uh, but at the front of the field then, in DPI, the 01 car, Scott Dixon is at the wheel. That's the Cadillac of Cadillac Racing, Chip Ganassi's team. 182 laps completed right now. Second place is number 31, Mike Conway. Number five, Richard Westbrook in third position. Number 02 is Kevin Magnussen in fourth. The number 48 of Jimmy Johnson. And the number six Oliver Jarvis, they are all on the lead lap. In seventh position, two laps behind, is car number 10. In LMP2, the number 20 car leads the way. The number 20 and the number 52 had a super battle through that last, uh, all the way through that last stint. And Nico Muller is at the wheel of the number 20 
20 uh, Orica. That is the high-class racing entry ahead of the racing team Netherlands, car number 29. Fritz van Eert, the team principal, back at the wheel of that car. Nicolas Lapierre is driving number 52. Pierre Wassers, Matheson Motorsports car is third in that class. One lap down is number 69, that's John Falb. Also, Louis Delatraz in car number eight is also one lap down, just making a pit stop. Uh, and he remains, I think, one lap down. In LMP3, car number 36 for Andretti Autosport leads the way. 172 laps completed. Uh, in second position, number 54 for Core Autosport, Colin Brown at the wheel of that car. So two charges there. And Joao Barbosa in third position in car number 33. In fourth position, having just ga gained that lap back with the pit stops for the other cars ahead of him, Performance Tech Motorsports is back on the lead lap with the young uh, Chilean Nico Pino at the wheel of that car. Uh, those are the four cars on the lead lap. The number 74, after making that brake change, is back out on the track one lap down. In GTD Pro, 22, 22nd position overall, car number two, KCMG Porsche, Dennis Olsen leads the way, followed by the Risi Competizione Ferrari, car number 62, David Arigon. And then number nine, Matt, Matty Campbell, the FAF Porsche, in third position. Those are the top three cars in GTD Pro. In GTD, Tom Gamble in number 27, uh, Aston, uh, Aston Martin for Harter Racing, leads the way from the number 39 car barn with Peregrine Racing Lamborghini, car number 39, Jeff Westfall, and number 19, Lamborghini, with Giacomo Altoe, that is TR3 Motorsport. Uh, a little bit of confusion down at Ally Cadillac, Jeremy. They've already replaced part of the back of the car. They're now trying to put a new nose on. They've had to do it a couple of times because it was being somewhat recalcitrant. So that's a new front and a new rear uh, for that car after earlier damage. The headlights are working, that's good news, but they're doing this under full course yellow, which loses them far less time than if they'd done it in uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the green and uh, Peter Mackay has been talking to Lamborghini then number 71 car lost time early on due to an air track air jack failure for that car as Jimmy Johnson rejoins Andrew uh, I'm down at Andrew uh, I'm down at Mustang. I've got uh, Loic Duval here Loic going to go in the car you're, you're bouncing up and down a little bit you're ready to go in the car yeah i'm just trying to stay warm a little bit but uh yeah it's getting it's getting really cold but yeah soon i will be in the car so i will probably feel much better in there yeah, have you ever raced in such cold in such cold conditions i you know i mean it's uh, it's always for sure more tricky and uh mainly the the outlaps and uh, and after uh, be so yellow, yeah yeah so you have to be careful and after yellow like that you know also it can it can be difficult to keep the tires warm, but uh, it's the same for everybody. So uh, we have to go through that. And uh, you know, the most important is to survive the night and let's see where we are tomorrow. Yeah, great battle at the moment because it really matters in the morning. Just yeah. got to be on that lead lap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's always the same thing. You know, when you're in the car, you get a little bit excited, you know, about, uh, about everything. But at the end, it doesn't really matter until the last, uh, the last few hours. I think you're enjoying this Cadillac a bit more power than the Gibson you used to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of fun to drive the car. You know, the, the Cadillac is a really good car. I mean, uh, I always really enjoyed it since uh, since the last three years and uh, looking forward to, to this race now. Thanks very much. I think we're going back racing. We certainly are, Andrew. Perfect timing. The BMW has pulled away from the field. The safety car lights out just as it came out of the newly named Le Mans chicane. Just coming up to the restart now and we go down to 18 hours of racing as the green flag flies again here at Daytona. Fantastic to hear those cars across the line. Another racing hour about to get underway and it is the 0-2 Kevin Magnussen car that's making the moves earlier on there side by side with Ricky Taylor. Jimmy Johnson with now a new front and rear wing has just gone off the circuit as he was trying to fight his way through. He lost position of course because he didn't get the DP 
the eye wave through Jeremy and start the front of the field so Jimmy Johnson's having to pick his way through all the GTD traffic uh, got a drive through penalty as well for the number 26 car that is the Duquesne of Hugo de Vilda too many people over the wall Jimmy Johnson way off on the grass being trying to go by a couple of GTD cars I think it was the 32 AMG and also in there as well actually very close with the 66 gradient Acura that was coming through as Jimmy came back on from the grass surface that could have been very nasty indeed. Oh, and there's a touch and a spin. That was the number three Corvette getting involved with one of the prototypes. The sticky Katzberg there. And the prototype spun, but then got back straight, I think. At the front of the field, Scott Dixon has cleared off by 1.4 seconds. And Jimmy Johnson now is racing one of those challenges that you get on console games where you've only got four laps to pass 60 cars and get back on the back of your lead group. It is, that's exactly what it looks like at the moment. Damage to the right front of the number 39 Lamborghini. That's the Huracan with Jeff Westphal behind the wheel. And they are sitting in second in GTD. They were leading and that car has got damage to the right front. I'm not sure that he can continue that without at least get, getting his mechanics to have a look at it in the carborn pit. So once again, a fraught restart, I say of that, Jeremy, and you've got, to, yeah. I mean, you've got to give these guys some credit as we come down to the six hour mark. Yeah. There's points to be had here, but you've got to stay on the track to get them. Yeah, at the end of this lap, I think the points will be uh, awarded and uh, for, oh, well, let's wait till it happens. Uh, but yeah, you're right. And, you know, we talked about it all the way through the race and before the race as well, how tricky it is on these restarts, particularly with the temperatures outside being so cold right now. You know, there's hardly any temperature in those tyres as they get ready for the restart, and particularly difficult for those in the LMP3 category for reasons we talked about earlier on. The contact between Nicky Katzberg in the number three Corvette and the prototype, it was the 47 Motorsport number seven car. I, I didn't want to call the, ne the, the number until I was absolutely sure uh, that was at turn two, but it has continued. Hugo de Wild has, has come into the pits and gone. So after his little incident, uh, that number 26. Ah, oh, no, that was the uh, the drive-through, wasn't it? It was the drive-through for too many people over the wall. Cadillac, 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 Cadillac. No, we haven't got a problem on the stream. That is the top four. Zero, one, 31, five and zero, two, separated by three seconds at the moment as they've cleared the, the traffic. They were at the front of the field. Jimmy Johnson having to fight his way through is 21 seconds behind the Acura of Oliver Jarvis, who sits in fifth position. Johnson in sixth. Ricky Taylor still two laps off the lead. They've not been able to use the cautions, Jeremy, since that incident uh, for Will earlier on. And he sounded very nonplussed about what had happened uh, there when the car spun and he subsequently got the puncture. But they've not been able to use any of those yellow flags that we've had since then to get a lap back. I don't think we've had anything since then, actually. Is that the first one? Yeah, is I think it, it right. is, actually. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, unfortunately, they, they were uh, on the same sequence as the other leaders. Uh, uh, th this time, they did come in and splash off with fuel. So, in terms of the race leader, there are, they are better off on fuel. So, if there's another caution now, that potentially could give an opportunity to get one of those two laps back. But at this stage in the game, yes, that Ricky Taylor car is two laps off the pace. They won't be too worried, much, you know, too worried about that at this stage with uh, just one quarter of the race just completed right now. In LMP2, it's number 20 car, Nuka Muller, who will get maximum points, I believe, at that six hour mark. Second position, number 52, Nicola Lapierre, who's just managed to get past Fritz van Eert. Uh, in the number 29 car at the restart. So there'll be second place points, I think, for number 52, which won this championship last year. Uh, in the LMP3 category, Colin Brown, I think, was able to make the pass on Rasmus Lind. 
and, and get maximum points for Core Autosport in car number 54. So that's a big deal for for uh, Jonathan Bennett's team. Uh, number 54 car ahead of number 36 on Andretti Autosport. In third position, Sean Creech Motorsports with the Joao Barbosa at the wheel of that car. Those uh, three cars covered by just uh, a couple of seconds at this stage. In fourth position in the class and on the lead lap is Performance Tech Motorsports car number 38 South Florida team. Dan Goldberg driving that car at the moment. In GTD Pro, the uh, number two KCMG Porsche, Dennis Olsen, led the way at the restart, maintained that at the six hour mark, ahead of the number 62 of Risi Competizione, David Arrigon. In third position for FAF Motorsports, the team that won the, the GTD Championship last year. Uh, Matt Campbell holds down third position. There's a spin for the Era Motorsport again. Car number 18, the LMP2 car. That's down at the International Horseshoe, Jeremy. Yep. He'd, he'd be able to get that pointing back in the right direction. Sorry, that was at the West Horseshoe, I think. Yeah, and just to complete then, the class is at the six hour mark. The number 27 harder racing, harder racing Aston, I reckon, will have maximum points uh, at that six hour mark ahead of the number 57 Winwood Racing. Mercedes, that is the car that won this race in GTD last year. Third place uh, in the number 19 for TR3 Motorsports. So that's the rundown, I think, unofficially of the points. There's a, some contact down, ah, contact that sent the uh, 08, the number 18 car spinning. I think that was the, the uh, team hard point number 99 Porsche. Rob Ferriol is driving that car at the moment. Uh, it's running in the eighth position in GTD. And 47 Motorsports going around, Jeremy. Just heard the squeal of tyres right in front of one of the GTD leaders. But a masterful catch and point in the right direction. Click down through the gearbox and it's pointing in the right direction already. I don't think that was a mistake. Day. Ah, just gone by the 99 Porsche and then sp spun right in front of it. Almost took it out as they were going up onto the banks out of the newly named Le Mans chicane. Bizarre. So that was a close one. Jeremy, sorry, close. carry on. I mean, super fast pace at the front here. We're just seeing low, low 1 minute 34s here by a whole bunch of cars. Uh, uh, the, the race leader got a bit of traffic on that lap, but uh, just within the last couple of laps, we saw, I think, number five, and the number 02 set their fastest laps of this race. Uh, uh, yeah, Kevin Magson does so in number two car that time. Here is the number 99 uh, hard point Porsche onto the pit lane after that spin a bit of damage to the right front. Uh, and uh, they're going to change all four Michelin tyres on that GTD Porsche. Stop is completed there, it will appear. And finally, Rob Ferriol gets that car back underway again. Running in the top 10, all on the lead lap in GTD. They're uh, the best pace of the GTD in relation to the GTD Pro cars is that the seven pre GTD Pro cars that, that kind of are ahead in the GT category, then the leading non-Pro car, which is Russell Ward, car number 57. So in that case, where is the Aston Martin? The Aston Martin advantage of Tom Gamble of a sudden is shown in seventh place. I don't know what happened. Which Aston Martin was that? Uh, 27, it was, it was leading the class. And it's now all of a sudden shown in uh, seventh position in that class. Tom Gamble that, was, was yeah. took that car out, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. So it was leading two laps ago, and, and it must have been a couple of laps. It must have been right after I was talking about it. it, it, it Is something that someone happened else there. you've cursed, Mr. Shaw? Yeah. The, no, I hope not. Well, I just give you credit for leading, leading at the six hour mark, John. There you so go. There not. you go. Uh, and when Jeremy's talking about leading at the six hour mark, why this is important, it's the Mission and Endurance Cup points that are awarded at interim stages through this race. It's the championship within the Endurance, uh, within the WeatherTech. IMSA Weather Tech Sports Car Championship uh, through the longer races. It gives you the opportunity to play a little more strategy games and it is scored separately from the main championship. And for those people for whom it matters, it matters a lot. It is a trophy at the United Champions at uh, Michelin 
Raceway Road Atlanta at the end of the season. And some of the teams, uh, Jeremy, who are only doing the longer races, they 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 really prioritise that if they can. They do. Yeah, you know, it's it's a big deal. I mean, winning a, a championship, it's the, it's just the same as the overall championship in terms of the fact there's a drivers' championship, there's a team championship, there's a manufacturer championship as well. So it is important. So under 18 hours to go. The splendour of Daytona International Speedway under the light. And from the Haggerty Global Broadcast booth over the tri-oval, we get an awesome view of what is going on. The different coloured headlights, the yellow signifying the GT cars and the bright white of the prototypes in the swan song for DPI here at Daytona. And the top five separated by four seconds. Incident Incident Top four by less than a second. My goodness me. <laughs> Penalty for the 99. That's the Porsche. Incident responsibility with the number 18. So that's another drive through. Our Porsche keys to the race was minimise mistakes and drive throughs. They're all adding up for some of these teams. And in the meantime, the Carbon car, which we saw in trouble, that's the number 39 Lamborghini. That car has had to go behind the wall. And another car that has been worked on early. Uh, he, he was right in contention. It was, uh, he, he, was, he was battling for the lead there yeah. at, at, the, uh, at that restart. So uh, was, that, was that involved in that incident down at turn one? Don't know, but uh, it's, that's a shame because that car had been running really, really well. Into the Le Mans chicane on the far side of the circuit from us, there's a great DPI battle going on between the Cadillac Chip Ganassi. Mike Conway lost a couple of places yeah, there, I think. Yeah, he it? has, absolutely has, because Richard Westbrook and I think and Kevin Magnussen have gone by him. Yes, that is correct. Or is that the 0-1 coming into the pit lane? It's, no, it's the 57 Winwood car coming in, but that's not the prototype. I can see the white lights of coming into the pit lane. That is the, in fact, that is the number five coming in. So that is Richard Westbrook coming into the pit lane. And at that end of the pits is who? Who's down that, that end of the pits? Andrew, is that your end of the pit lane? Yes, John, I'm down here with the uh, number five. New set of tyres going on. No driver change. Lost you, Andrew, there for a moment. Number five is in the pits. Is that about the right time, Jeremy, for that car? Um, I'm, I'm looking at that's 24 laps, or so yes, with a bit of yellow in there. That's yeah, there's a fair bit of yellow in there. Uh, yeah, they've got they've got to the uh, they're going to need to fit pits up fairly soon. So um, yeah, why that car? Uh, Lost a position on that lap, though, is, is kind of interesting. It's a quick turnaround for that car. It's already rolling and, and heading out. I wonder if they had a tyre pressure sensor warning or something like that, and they brought that in. Andrew's down there, and we'll, uh, we'll try and get word from the, the pit lane about why that has happened. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with me, Spooner in orange, K-Mag is on one, fastest car on the track over the last few laps. Leader after the first three make their stops, question mark. Oh, sorry, exclamation mark. Certainly been... I, I've really enjoyed watching Kevin Magnussen since he came into this season, Jeremy. He's taken to it like a duck to water. We're going to lose him to Peugeot, of course, uh, in the WEC. That's not to say that it's in the new for 2023 top class here, GTP, that we wouldn't necessarily see some of those Le Mans hypercars coming back it's a, a measure of the continued partnership between the ACO IMSA Le Mans and Daytona that the back straight chicane here has been renamed Le Mans and one of the chicanes on the Multan straight at the Circuit de la Sarte will be called the Virage Daytona yeah Fion president of the ACO was here for a couple of days I think a flying visit but was uh, certainly here this morning. I saw him walking around and uh, being very, very 
complimentary about what he was seeing. And why would you not be, Jeremy, when you look out at what we can see in front of us, the infield and the 61 car starting grid? Yeah, exactly. A, a, a big crowd here. The infield is absolutely jam-packed. There was a lot of people in the stands at the beginning of the race as well. So the atmosphere here is absolutely superb. Many, many people down in the pit lane uh, in the garage area before the start. There was a mandatory autograph session that uh, all the drivers were taking part in. And an hour, maybe an hour and a half or so before the cars were all assembled on the grid, then all the fans were on the grid. There was a huge crowd down there on the grass here in front of the main uh, grandstand, and the atmosphere was just absolutely fantastic. So, waiting for the uh, 99 Porsche to serve that uh, drive through, the incident responsibility for the contact earlier on. Into the pit lane for Nico Muller from the lead of P2 for high class racing. And he trundles down the pit lane. Can't I see him? Oh, there he is. Almost turned his high-class car with no marker lights on the side. It's quite unusual, but the striking red and white livery, this looks like... This might be fuel only, actually. They've got no tyres out on the apron. They're cleaning the windows on the car. Maybe a drinks bottle replenishment. Yes, I think that was but no offering of a set of new Michelin tyres there for the high-class car. That's quietly gone about its business, the high-class team, Jeremy. Uh, high-class by name and by nature, they just tend to get on with it. Meantime, in GTD Pro, the battle's back on again between KCMG and Risi, that's Ferrari and Porsche. They're on the back straight heading down to the chicane, heavy braking area. They are 22nd and 23rd overall, and it's Dennis Olsen and Davide Regon. And the second stint for these drivers, and it's the second stint, same as the first stint. Second verse, same as the first verse. They are back <laughs> at it again, although after the pit stops, the KCMG's team did steal a march on Risi and they swapped positions in the pit stop cycle, but now that matters nothing at all because they're together in the tri-oval. Underneath our feet they go and down towards turn one. Yeah, great. So this is a super battle. It's in the top seven cars, top eight cars in GTD Pro, uh, covered by uh, about six seconds. And uh, Giacomo uh, Altue in the number 19 GTD regular car, number 19, that another Lamborghini, or the best Lamborghini actually at the moment, is right with them as well. He's pulled away a little bit from Richard Richard Leitz in the number 16 right motorsports Porsche. It moves his way up all of a sudden up into second place. I don't think we talked about that car today. Uh, in third position is James Davison right. in the Gilbert Courthoff number 32 Mercedes Air that bizarre situation with the team where they changed their driver after the roar, after they finished in fifth place, for goodness sake. That was rather bizarre. James Davison had been on a beach in Melbourne, Australia, when he got the call, would you like to on come and drive here? The, uh, and he's in Australia? Yeah, on the beach, literally yeah. on the beach. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's got to get from Australia to here. And yeah. I think that was the Monday or the Tuesday after the roar. That didn't give him a lot of time. It didn't give him a lot of time, no. Guy Cosmo, the uh, driver to miss out. And he'd never driven one of these. He had driven one of these Mercedes before, but not raced it. Uh, he was telling me, but he's, he's settled in very nicely. He's running in the third position at the moment, ahead of uh, Mark Miller in the Gradient Racing Acura. That's the car that had the, uh, the refueling problem at the first stop. Had to serve a penalty, I think, after that as well. As we see the number 01, 24 finally last giving up uh, the lead of this race. It had been out front since lap 119. We've now completed 196 laps. Uh, Scott Dixon into the pit lane and looks like a new oh, pit stop time for Mike Conway as well into the pit lane. 20, what did I say? 20, 24 lap stint for Scott Dixon. It'll be a 26 lap stint for Mike Conway at that stop. But let's keep our eyes on the Porsche Ferrari battle at the front of GTD. This is as close as Davide Regan has been for a while. He's got the number 48 prototype, third overall, with Jimmy Johnson coming through them. Can he? Can Davide use that? Maybe to his advantage. Johnson going round the outside, going into the Western Horseshoe. That will mean that the KCMG car has to pinch to the inside and maybe a better exit from the Ferrari. No, can't do that. 
Uh, and then it is Matt Campbell, who's not that far behind this. The Faf Porsche is gaining on the two leaders. It's a cracking battle out on the yeah, high backs. Brilliant. So Kevin Magnussen now leads the race with a zero, with a zero uh, one uh, sister car coming into the pits. Uh, and the number zero two now, that becomes the sixth different leader of this race. Uh, well, Not the sixth uh, lead change, the sixth different car. Yeah, it's the uh, 13th lead change, the sixth different so car. So six out of the 17 Correct. cars have led. Yes. And uh, which and one's the unlucky one? Uh, the car that won last year's championship. Caliber 31 uh, has not wow. yet led a lap in this race. Well, you only have to lead the last one, don't there you? There you go. <laughs> uh, and in fact, in terms of the championship last season, the, the, only, the only race in which they were leading the points after was the final one. Kerr and indeed Ching, I think, is what we say to that. Again, stunning uh, pace at the front of the field by, the, uh, by a whole bunch of these uh, guys in this at uh, this stage in the race. It, the, the pace oh. is hot. Davide Regod spinning up the rear. Michelin's coming out of turn one. It's getting a little bit dusty offline. He goes for the wide over and under cut back. Surely Dennis Olsen won't fall for that one. He's held his line in that number two. Porsche with the blue fluorescent tube lighting over the top of the header rails and on the uh, rear wing as well. It's a little more toned down for the Ferrari number 62, Giuseppe Ricci's Ferrari of Houston sponsored and Penzo sponsored car. Again, just as Regon thinks he's getting close, it's the Tower Motorsports prototype, fourth in its category that comes through them. And then they're going to have the wins 52 PR Matheson car going up over the top. Now, any chance to grab a bit of aerodynamic advantage? Well, that's what Regon tried to do. He just slipped up half a lane, maybe a car's width. But again, he was thwarted just as he was getting close there. More traffic coming through. You don't want to put yourself off the track at this stage. This is a good run. Porsche, Ferrari, Porsche in the top three for GTD Poor. Two for KCM Juice, 62 for Risi and Matt Campbell for Faf. And Gilles Gounon for the number 97 WeatherTech Racing. By far the best of their cars with problems for the other two, the other AMG GT3 and the full championship Porsche. That car went back behind the wall for a second time. It's the uh, 79 Porsche. And I'm not sure we've seen that car back out again, no, it's, Jeremy. it's a long, long way down, that car is. Uh... Oh, yes, it is circulating, though. Coop McNeil's in it. There is problems, though, here for the 99 car. Yeah. So that's gone behind the wall. Had its penalty. So it is not even damage limitation at the moment. They just want to get to the chequered flag in that number 79 car and try and get Cooper McNeil and the rest of the team some points. Once again, traffic. This time it's the Algar Pro Racing fifth position LMP. And that would be James Allen behind the wheel of the number 69 car going through that battle for GTD Pro. I'm really liking how GTD Pro has shaped up, Jeremy. I know we won't get the same amount of cars for the rest of the season, but this will. there will be manufacturers and other teams looking at this going, yeah, I think I might have a little basin full of this. I think so, it's magnificent, isn't it? Certainly interesting also how the, uh, the pro cars have moved their way forward. There's some... Uh Jockeying for position. Whoa, yikes, one of the Corvettes pushed. Who was that pushed off the road? Was that another P? Uh, was that the, it wasn't the 47 that? Motorsport car again, because that got dinged and spun on the restart by the number three Corvette. Hmm. So normally we talk about the prototypes not giving uh, enough room to the GTs, but it was reversed there by Corvette with uh, Nicky Katzberg at the wheel. Mark Sorensen behind the wheel of the number four. Yes, that's right, Mark Sorensen. Nicky Katzberg, BMW refugee. Mark Sorensen has driven for a number of other manufacturers. So Kevin... Kevin Magnussen leads by... by 
Excuse me. Kevin Magnussen leads there by, by about 10 seconds over Oliver Jarvis at the wheel of number 60 uh, Acura. In third position, Jimmy Johnson is about 24 seconds behind Jarvis uh, and uh, still quite a long way ahead of the number 01 car that pitted, of course, just a little while ago. The 01, number 5 and number 31 have made pit stops recently because they did not stop during the yeah. previous caution period. So, so Kevin Magnussen and three of the cars since the restart have set their fastest laps yeah. of the race. The, 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 the lap record still stands to Rega van der Zander. That was set back on lap 122. But lap 188, so that was 10 laps ago. Uh, Rega van der Zander uh, and Mike Conway, who were then driving the number 01 and the, excuse me, number 31 and... Mike Conway in number 31 and Richard Westbrook, who was driving number five car at the time, both set their car's fastest lap of the race. And a couple of laps after that, Kevin Magnussen turned at his fastest lap. It wasn't quite as quick as the other two, but it was pretty darn quick. And it's a relentless place at the front of the field at the moment. Yeah, and as far as the leaders are concerned, it'll be two, possibly three laps for both the leading 0-2 Cadillac and the MSR Acura, the 60 in second. And Ricky Taylor, still those two laps off the lead in seventh position. Uh, a, yeah, about the same. Two or three laps there on their 21st lap since coming down to the pits. But back at the front of GTD Pro, it's back on again. And David Rigo looking at the back of the KCMG Porsche of Dennis Olsen. These two have raced each other all across the world, they know each other. Regon, they now have memorised every decal on the back of that KCMG car. He's been following it since they came out of the pits at the last pit stop. So evenly matched. I know, I know BOP are three dirty letters sometimes, but you've got to say, when you look at this, with two top drivers with traffic, with two cars of different configurations, mid-engine, low slung Ferrari, rear engine, slightly more sit up and beg Porsche. And yet their lap times, lap after lap, are almost down to the fraction of a second. But they still have their differing strengths and weaknesses. But it is so difficult to overtake if the driver ahead doesn't make a mistake. Yeah, it really is. Big, There's it? no gimmies here, Jeremy, is there? No, there's certainly not. And, uh, yeah, the battles are uh, going to be going on for a long, long time to come. It's just super to see how close they all are uh, still in GTD Pro. And uh, Giacomo Artue in that number 19 uh, TR3 Lamborghini, he's, he's not running in a pro class, but he's running against the pro class cars. He's made up, he's passed a couple of them. He's passed to Patrick Anson, Aston Heimer, number 15 Mercedes. He's passed Marco Sorensen at number four Corvette. Uh, on which we, we we ride on board at the moment. So has, that means uh, has Altuve also passed Katzberg then? I think he probably has. I think he's probably directly ahead of him. Yes, he is. That's the red and white car that's directly ahead. So he's also passed uh, Nicky Katzberg. He's got past both Corvettes in the last few laps. And uh, all of these cars though, are within uh, about eight seconds of the class, the overall, well, so excuse me, the GT leader, which is still number two, Porsche of Dennis Olsen with David Regon in the Ferrari right with him. Porsche against Ferrari there. Two Corvettes running together, Jeremy. Uh, they're feeling their way into this new era of GT Daytona. Yep. I like Nick. Running nicely at this stage. Well, I mean, very, you know. Keep your nose clean, lads. Absolutely. Bring them home. They're sitting in sixth and seventh in GTD Pro, but they've got. Uh, well, on the scoring, they've got the Lamborghini Huracan of Giacomo Altuve. Altuve. Yeah, they haven't come past yet, I think. Ah, they're, right, they're so they've just, the right. they just yeah, gone yeah, past yeah. OK. I, I, liked, uh, I liked Tandy's attitude early on about it. Look, it's not as fast as, as what we're used to, but it's what we've got. Um, and we're learning. Yeah. And, it's, uh, you know, it's, I think it's smart of them to put two cars in here. They're only running one throughout the whole championship, but they're getting twice the data from drivers that they know very well. It won't do the WEC team any harm 
team of drivers any harm to sharpen themselves up right now either. Because, because frankly, WC after this 61 car fail, they're doing pretty well. 39 cars for WEC uh, this year. Starting the next uh, cycle of DPIs, the seventh place car, a couple of laps off the lead. Andrew Marriott has the Acura of Wayne Taylor Racing. I certainly do, John. Again, this is what I call a short service. Just uh, a set of tyres going on. Fuel, no driver change down here. And it will be off in just a moment. You hear that uh, Acura engine really off. Uh, you're absolutely right, 0-2, Kevin Magnussen in from second, Oliver Jarvis in from third, thank you Andrew. So, as we suggested, those guys are coming in at the end of their 24th lap. So that means that Kevin Magnussen should have three more laps at the end of this one. And that was a very quick... Uh, so I reckon... Andrew, was that... Um, was that fuel only for that stop that you witnessed there, was it? Uh, negative, John. No, they did put the set of new water on. Uh, I haven't seen anybody oh. double stinting yet. Uh, and I've just turned down at 60 now, just uh, checking them out. They were just uh, coming down to the pit stop. And I think, uh, I think Oliver Jarvis got out of the car, Correct. He? he did. Simon Pagino is in. Well spotted, Andrew. We've just seen that confirmed on the timing screen. And a very uh, feisty exit from the pit lane by Loic Duval, who uh, wasn't prepared to be held up behind Simon Pagino in the uh, in the 60, and uh, went straight round him as they came out, trying to make up some time and some laps. Kevin Magnussen in the 0-2, just out of the pits. Let's have a word with Ollie Jarvis. Uh, Andrew is with him now. Yeah, Ollie's just stripping his uh, race suit off a little bit. Uh, can tell he's been working hard, Ollie. Yeah, not too bad. A um, little bit sweaty, but want to get the clothes off because of the outside temperature. But, you know, we're back on lead lap. I think we're, we're back in the game and a uh, long way to go, but just happy to be back on the lead lap and hopefully we can take it to the, you know, take the fight to the front. Obviously, with this uh, DPI car, very different sort of engine configuration to what you had with the, with the Mazda or AER engine last year. Do you feel that at all? Yeah, um, a big difference in the driving style, the power delivery, so very noticeable. It's probably the biggest difference, to be honest. Um, a lot more functions with the traction control and adjustability, which, when you get it right, helps. Um, when you don't, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of information, but you know, every lap I'm getting more and more comfortable, and you know, it's a great car, and so far, you know, I've been really impressed. Well, it was a great end to your time with Master to win the final race. Yeah, by the, I said to the guys, I went to see the Multimatic guys yesterday and just said, you know, by the end we were a very well-oiled machine. You know, they did a fantastic job. We finished on a high, and it's just a shame it couldn't continue, but that's life. Um, you know, move on and got a new home here at MSR and hope they can do a good job for them. You just did make a cracking session there. I think you took a lap back, didn't you? Yeah, we got the lap back. Um, and then I'm just having a look at the screen now. I think we're, we're still running P6, but we're back in the game. On way to go, thanks. That's Ollie Jarvis from Norfolk. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Andrew and Ollie. Uh, and in that victory at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta at Petit Le Mans, that Mazda was, from memory, um, the sharp end of three, if not fully three laps down at one stage, and came back to win. It's, uh, yeah. It was a great piece of tactics. It was three, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, yeah, pretty sure it was. Yeah, so Scott Dixon leads now. Jimmy Johnson was scored as the leader on the timing screen as he came through. He's out of the 48 now. Kami Kobayashi uh, gets in. That will excite a lot of people. That'll do this race no harm. Side by side action on the banking. Down into turn one. 31 wheel of Cadillac on the inside. 0 2 on the outside. The battle for second position. And there's no quarter being asked or given here. Mike Conway against Kev Kevin Magnuson. Well, what, what a battle this is going to be. World champion in the endurance series of the FIA versus former Formula One champ, uh, former Formula One driver. 
And Kevin Magnussen, as we said earlier, has really taken to this form of motor racing. Somebody taking the shortcut there at uh, turn five at the western end. That looked like a right rear puncture for a, re a BMW. I think it's the 90, 95 turner BMW. And I think that's got problems. Ooh, that's a shame. That was running well. Seventh position in GTD. So the, the, the cycle of pit stops at the front of the field of DPI has now been completed. They're all kind of on slightly different strategies at the moment, but the Zero One car back in oh. front. But with only a seven second advantage over this fantastic battle for second place. Which is just which has just changed. The Zero yeah, Two has got just gone got through passing. under braking into the Le Mans. Shakin. So Ganassi he, won two. He just, uh, talk about send it. Came from a long way back, there was traffic there. And Mike Conway is not sitting back, he's got the draft, he goes to the high side, coming into the tri-oval. Will try to take the outside line into turn one, they go side by side, Magnussen squeezes him to the middle of the road. 0.001 of a second across the line and that 24 b that was the 24 bmw that had the problem not the uh, turn of bmw my apologies uh, that car with the uh, white neon around the top of the windscreen and the smoke coming from the back of that car tire smoke from the right rear i think and that must have happened early in the lap and there's pieces of rubber or bodywork coming off that car he's down on the apron and coming back towards the pit lane now. That is a car that already has no diffuser under the back. Well, no, there's air in all of the tyres. Ah, but not the right front, not the right front. It, with the smoke being drawn underneath the car and spit out the back. That's what made me think it was a rear tyre, but it's uh, down. It's completely devoid of any rubber on that front wheel as it comes to a halt. New Michelin tyre for the right front. The problem is that there's uh, a lot of rubber detritus and, a, and the, the whole carcass of the tyre is wrapped around the upright and the, the wheel disc. He wants, uh, the, the mechanic there needs some snips to get that out because the reinforcement is stopping him from, is preventing him from getting it out. Ow, 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 that's going to be hot and that is going to be sharp as well. The wheel is taken away, but they can't take the carcass away. It needs to be cut off. And the wars for BMW continue in this race. Yeah, the other car, the other BMW Team RLL car is uh, still, it's one lap only off the pace in GTD Pro. It's running in the ninth position in class, but to say not, not, you know, not out of the realm by any means. It's the number 24 car that's had more problems already. That's already a 10 laps behind. Uh, car uh, coming back from behind the wall is the Ayrton O number six Muller Motorsports America Duquesne. This was the car that had the incident earlier on, LMP3, ninth in class, but uh, many laps down, uh, sitting in 58th position. And it is Ayrton Ori that uh, takes that car back out onto the track. So we have another one back, Jeremy. We have another one back, that's good news. So, yeah, indeed, so had 57 the cars still running out of the 60 that started. 61 yeah, that started, uh, yeah. Number 34 car isn't running, is it? So. Uh, uh, yes, yes it is. Uh, no, that was the car that crashed. Over on the far oh, yes, side. Yes, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think we're probably going to see that car, but only two cars officially retired. You're right. I believe. Not bad after, uh, what, six, uh, six and a half hours? S uh, slew of GTD pit stops, uh, including for Gilles Gunon in the number 97 Mercedes. He's double stinting. Ben Barnicourt is in the Lexus. That's the Pro Lexus, the 14 car. Antonio Garcia has just left the pits in the number three Chevy Corvette. Darren Turner is in the Aston Martin Vantage GT for Heart of Racing and a spin for the number 15 WeatherTech AMG 
GT3. And that's just come out of the pit as well, hasn't it? Yes, it has. So is this a new, was that a new set of tyres? I'll find out who's in that car whilst we go down to Andrew at Ally Cadillac and seven times the cup champion, Jimmy Johnson. I certainly am, and with a seven times champion. Well, that restart was a bit hairy. Yeah, it was. You know, I was trying to pack up and there were GT cars going everywhere. And I took to the dirt and uh, thankfully didn't hit anything and I uh, was able to get back on the track and get the tires cleaned up and get going. And then you really got into a good rhythm then, I saw. Yeah, I felt good. We had some damage uh, to the diffuser on the car. And when I was in it, we finally caught our caution, was able to change that. Now the car's performance is much better. So, I think you did, they did the front and the back, did they? Yeah, we got the front um, some other time. It looks like a piece of debris took off the front uh, from one of those flat tires that took place earlier. And then uh, the, the contact with the 01 at the start of the race took out the diffuser. Oh, briefly, you were, you were scored as a leader, uh, briefly. Yeah, I'll tell you, lap sled or lap sled. Um, we got our main man, Kobayashi, in the car right now, and he'll help close that gap. And now that the car is, uh, is back to where it should be, um, I think we'll be much more competitive. You've come close to winning this in the past, Jimmy. How much does it mean to you? Yeah, this has really been on my hit list since being a young boy and growing up in Southern California, watching IMSA races at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. So I think Bobby Rahal won like in the late 80s, early 90s when I went to one of those races as a kid. And uh, the cars have always captivated me. I've been very interested in these prototypes and I'm very thankful for this opportunity with Ally and Action Express Racing. Also warming up a bit for uh, the coming uh, season in the IndyCar. And of course, the first race is not very far away, is it? Because you're, you're heading off to Florida for that, or staying in Florida for that. Yeah, excited to get to St. Petersburg, Florida for the season opener. And also very excited for my first full season in the IndyCar Series. Uh, I feel like those ovals might treat me a little better than these street road courses have. But uh, having a, a, an amazing time and learning a lot. Uh, we did talk about this in practice, but you, you had a bit of fun with Zach Brown and the swap, and uh, maybe our listeners didn't hear that. Uh, now we're on race day. I'd like you just to repeat uh, the great fun you had driving with Zach in the Formula One car. Yeah, that was a really amazing opportunity in 2018. Fernando and I got together and talked about swapping cars, and the Mr. Hendrick and Zach Brown both agreed to, uh, to make it happen. We did it in Bahrain, and that was my first single-seater experience and first time really feeling down for us. And honestly, that's what started this kind of uh, 2.0 thing for me. And, and then my interest was IndyCar and certainly get back into a sports car. Thanks very much. You're going to have a bit of sleep now. I'll try. But easier said than done. It is. Thank you. Great to hear from Jimmy Johnson with Andrew Marriott down there. The number six Milner Motorsport reported that that car had come out of the out from behind the wall it did and on its outlet it planted itself firmly uh, in a wall not behind it at the international horseshoe full course caution uh, for that car uh, meantime bmw number 24 has gone behind the wall after it came in after the puncture and also returning to the fair the 12 vasa sullivan lexus and the 59 crucial mclaren uh, critical information there that that is back on the track for the number 59. <laughs> Many laps down, but running again uh, with a bit of pace. Bump start, push start for the number four Chevy Corvette. Four pit crew trying to get it going. Oh, that is a thankless task. That's not going to work. Yeah to lower gear, I think, there. But that's the problem with sequential boxes. You can't get through and put it in the third or fourth to try and bump it and then dip the clutch. I know what that's, I know what that's like, because in, in 1995, I was working down in the pit lane. I was doing the scoring for one of the teams, uh, the Euro Motorsport team. Actually, Larry Holt was part of that multimatic organization as well, running that car. And uh, the, it was a Ferrari 333 SP, and the, oh. the starter failed fairly early in the race. So after every pit stop, the car needed to be pushed started. Oof. And by Sunday morning, the, everybody in the crew was absolutely exhausted from trying to push that car all time. So I was about the only guy who hadn't really... Put your hands on it. Exactly. So I got, I got, that was the only time I left the box in the entire race from my scoring chart for them uh, to, was to push, push start the racing car and it wasn't a lot of fun I can tell you the engine cover is coming yeah, off so. at the back now of course of the Chevy Corvette the C8R mid engine mm, that's problems and there well, for the car that was running in the top uh, half dozen uh, 
48 car, the Ally Cadillac is back in the pits, just been taken over by Kamui Kobayashi as the in the H and R sponsored Milner Motorsport number six is rolling again. But I can see movement down on the Ally Cadillac pit wall. Uh, Andrew hasn't wandered too far away from there, having just spoken to Jimmy Johnson. Uh, is there any sense of urgency down there, Andrew? No, there doesn't seem to be, John. And we got the 31 uh, Whelan Cadillac also looks like it's going to come in any moment. So uh, maybe they're just hedging their bets a little bit. But no real urgency down here. Five and seven. Uh, five. Five laps only for the 48 Ally car, but 14 for the... 31, so I, I think that's oh, yeah. worth a stop if oh, you're more no than question. halfway through. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll all come in, quite frankly, now. Even after, you know, the number 48 cars, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 laps of green, uh, and uh, you know, it's only a 20, 21, 22 lap stint, so that's uh, you know, almost a third of the way through a stint. I'm pretty sure they'll come in. Just It'll be only a splash that they require, so should actually make up some track position. Corvette has gone behind the wall and they can push it with more people now. This is the number four car that was in fourth position in the GTD Pro category. Shea Adam is down on the pit lane and I think we... Have we heard from Jao Barbosa already this week, Shea? I don't think our weekend's complete until we've uh, heard from Jao. It's not Joao. a proper race? No, no, it's, no, it's not a proper race. And Jao, everybody makes a lot of big deal about Andy Lally having five class wins at the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. You're sitting on four right now, searching for the fifth, but we're not going to talk about that until after the race. Sean Creech Motorsports is a very well put together team, and you just handed over to Priyu, Seb, instead of Andy. How much are you enjoying working with him? No, it's been it's been great. You know, it's uh, new new young blood to the team. It's always good. That's a lot of excitement. The guys are really really excited about just the opportunity to race here, which is awesome. And Andy was such a tremendous job as well as. Sean Creech Motorsport, I mean, they put a, a really good car and we just need to stay out of trouble for uh, a few more hours and now uh, we'll see in, uh, tomorrow morning what, what we have. You mentioned earlier in the media center that it's very difficult to get heat into the tires. As the temperature is dropping, I'm imagining that's not getting any easier. No, it's not. Actually, I was surprised like by the end of my stint, uh, the temperature is dropping this quick. Uh, really struggling for for front grip, which is uh, in very interesting. I uh, wasn't really expecting that, but you know, it's, uh, track conditions are, are not easy, but uh, it's the same for everybody. So we just need to do the best of it. Well, it looks like there's another LMP3 that is dead stick out on track. Not your car. It's Rasmus Lin behind the wheel of that one. We're going to get a slew of pit stops here. Good luck the rest of the way. Hopefully, I don't jinx you. Thank you. <laughs> the safety crew already at the. Andretti Autosports car, it is indeed Rasmus Lin behind the wheel of that and no headlights, no forward motion and requiring a tow, arms outstretched from the AMR safety crew member standing in front, that normally means it's a flat tow, as long as it's not stuck in gear of course. Well I wonder whether this again is that uh that oh, problem the two-footed the, thing, yeah. yeah. Trying to keep the the engine, uh, trying to keep the heat in the brakes and the tyres. I, I, I sort of understand that, but you left foot brake. So I mean, they're all. T if it's a two-pedal car, you should really be left foot braking it, and if you left foot brake there's a lot of times that you've got your foot on the brake and the throttle there's crossover onto it well, and you balance the car if you do that you're going to use more fuel well, so yeah, well, that's know, true you, 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 you try not to do that and uh, you know you, you, you could cope with it for, for a second or two what, what you in that ah, sort of right, situation okay, but not anything but not much more so than if that. you were just sort of tapping the brake or riding the brake just to balance the car in a corner it wouldn't just cut the engine on you for you know half a second of not of if you've got full throttle on not if, you've got if you've got full throttle on uh, and, and, you're, and, you're dab and you're holding the brakes down as well, then the, the electronic system thinks the throttle is how, stuck open. How interesting. Yeah. How interesting. And that's uh, it's afflicted several people already this weekend. Hopefully it isn't, it isn't, that isn't the problem. Well, kind of hope it is the problem. Scott there Dixon leads the race and comes in to the pit lane where Andrew Marriott is waiting at pit in. 
Yeah, it's absolutely full of these uh, leading cars coming in. Certainly the uh, number 48 did come in, although it had only been out for five laps. Uh, there, obviously, they're just going to top up with fuel. Actually, they are putting up the fresh set of tyres on. Uh, I did see Cliff O'Donnell riding them further down the pit lane, uh, climbing into a car. Otherwise, I don't think we've got any climbing there. And uh, that was a vast noise of about three different Cadillacs all uh, accelerating down the pit lane at once. Oh, that is so exciting. Around about 16 litres of uh, Cadillac V8 firing up uh, at the same time. The 01 is the last of the Chip Ganassi cars to go. So came in first, will not hold on to the lead there as the uh, number 01 car goes. They're being held at the end of the pit lane. Shea Adam is further down the pits and we've had some uh, of the other prototypes taking uh, the opportunity to come in as well, Shea. Yeah, it was just a splash of fuel for Sebastian Prio going out for his first night stint here at Daytona. The Mjolnir cars are both in their boxes. The one that caused this yellow sitting uh, patiently, well, impatiently was the driver's point of view, but patiently from the team's point of view for repairs while the sister car came in for fuel and tires, but it blocked, it was blocked by its sister car, the one that caused this yellow flag, if you see what I'm trying to say. Try to <laughs> That is the roar of the number seven from 47 Motorsport trying to go back out. Mark Kwame's car, when it came into the pit box, very nearly took out the 02, which is Earl Bamber's car, which would have been awkward because those two are friends and do a lot of uh, off-roading excursions together. But for this, the 47 Motorsport machine, they put the new engine cover onto that car. So that was a little bit of cosmetic surgery going on. Thanks, Shit. Hello to Stephen Gardner, who's being tuned in from the very start, it would seem, but uh, unfortunately, real life uh, got in the way, had to pop out and leave the house, uh, and not sure which part of the world you're in, uh, but clearly here in the States, it's nice to be able to carry on listening via Sirius XM, and uh, give us a screenshot of the IMSA radio graphics. Meantime, Corvette number four in various states of undress and pieces all over the floor in the garage. Shit, uh, that's back in the uh, gasoline alley part of the racetrack. What are you hearing about the yellow and grey number four? Good choice of words with gasoline alley there, John. Uh, they think it might have been a little too low on fuel when it rolled into the pit box and when they went to refire it, well, there wasn't enough in the engine. So that could have caused that issue. Well, they've got it stripped well down, if that's all it was, and they're looking at... I think they're looking at gearbox under the, the back of that car. There's work with purpose going on, so it's not as if they're trying to find out what the problem is. I think they, they've identified that. Whether they can fix it easily, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, GT's coming in this time, the bulk of which are down uh, with Shea, and led in by the 16 blue... Right Motorsport car. Now they've just been very stealthily doing their job and leading on the way in for Ricard Leitz, followed in by Mark Miller in the second place GTD. That's Gradient Racing. Good run for Andris and the guys. And then James Davison. In the number 32 AMG, Shea Adam is watching those stops. Richie Leeds has jumped out and three times as champion from 2021. Jan Halen has gotten behind the wheel of the right motorsport Porsche. Further up the pit lane, we've got the Gradient Racing Acura in. It is sticker tires for Till Bechtelsheim. Remember when we talked to him earlier and he was excited about going out at night? Well, he didn't have to wait quite as long as he thought. Mark Miller is out of that car, just waiting on the fuel. We've also got Windward into the pit lane. I believe that was Lucas Hauer who was getting into that car, number 57. And the Mercedes is doing fuel and tires as well. Andrew is down here with uh, Mike Conway just out of the car. Mike's just listening on the headphones at the moment. And uh, Mike, how was that uh, little stint for you there? Pretty hectic, I think. Yeah, busy. Um... It's getting a little bit quieter with a few less cars out there, but yeah, once you catch a pack of, or a mix of anything really, it's, uh, it's difficult. You, you can easily pick the wrong side and then you get blo blocked in and then uh, you get past. So that happened a couple of times, just a bit unlucky there. Uh, but pace was good, car feels pretty quick, so uh, we could do the lap times when we needed to and, and save some fuel as well. So uh, 
Yeah, uh, so far so good. Just trying to take it steady, stay up front, stay out of trouble. It's not. Well, you were battling with uh, K Mag, having a good battle with K Mag out there. Yeah, not trying to get too Larry. Um, yeah, we have a nice, clean little fight there. But they seemed uh, a little bit better at that part of the race. But you know, we're, we're going to try stay with these guys and and get back in front if we can. Mike, do you have a different mindset for this sort of race to the WEC? Of course, you're a double world champion at that. Uh, it's similar, um, but obviously it's different here. The restarts, everyone's more together, so you've got to be, uh, you know, your wit, you've got to have your wits about you for sure. So, but there's some great drivers here, so I always enjoy driving with everyone here. Excellent. Nice to talk to you, the man from Bromley, Kent. <laughs> incident coming out of the pit lane AF Corsa Ferrari involved in that one Jeremy yeah. with three cars trying to get in to the pit exit lane including the number 32 AMG which was the car that was hit as the number 21 car came out of its pit store so uh, I think the 21 car yeah it's it's actually not that not an incident under review is an incident involving cars 33 and 24 is under under that's review said, number that's said pre or yeah, at the is. moment in the song Shane Creech Motorsport car yeah which is leading the class at the moment number 24 of course is the uh, BMW ah which, which, which we went behind the wall behind the wall yeah right uh, so that I think yeah, was before Prio Seb BM got into it Prio involved in an incident against the BMW yeah he's done looking at me no <laughs> Andy is here, as is his mum, Joe. I think all the family is here. Saw them uh, earlier on in the week, Wednesday night. Had a good bit of a chin wag, um, particularly with uh, Joe. Haven't seen her for a few years. And uh, Darren Manning as well. Sean's yeah. uh, godfather is here, sporting a very impressive full set of whiskers. Yes. And uh, still, as, uh, still as northern as ever, uh, calls right. a spade a... A shovel, um, possibly with the odd expletive in, involved in that. It's great to see him. I've seen uh, DM for quite quite a while. And he's uh, helping Seb out at the moment, doing a little bit of management work uh, with the young Channel Islander. And, um, and of course, running his sim business space oh. in Indianapolis, which is yeah. going very successfully. Just a note here, the number 10... Uh, Acura did not make a pit stop on this sequence when all the other cars are on the lead lap did so that has been able to uh, run past those cars and now make up its lap so the will make up one of its two laps so now the Conor Camolta Cadillac car number 10 just one lap down from the race leaders as the work goes on still in the garage for number four Corvette yeah, Nick Tandy uh, looking slightly impatient Tandy yeah. looking on slightly impatient got his balaclava on I think not because he thinks he's getting in the car anytime soon but it's actually keeping his head warm a couple of people from bmw around there as well they've got the next garage across so there's uh, work going on there as well in the background to the uh, works bmw in from getting its lap back is the one of its laps back is the number 10 Acura ricky taylor so getting fuel only, no tyres for that car. So this is, I think, the first opportunity to get one of the two laps back for that car that they lost after that uh, incident when uh, Will Stevens was in the car and he picked up that puncture. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's uh, exactly what that team needed. I'll come in, uh, take a quick splash and get underway and be on the same sort of strategy with a full tank of fuel uh, as everybody else. And now just one lap down rather than two. Uh, Shay, uh, has anybody from Corvette been able to give you a little more information about that? But that's, it's either differential or gearbox. I'm fairly, fairly certain about that. <laughs> Meantime, the 25 BMW, the red, white and black car, is receiving service. So that car was uh, in its problems earlier on. And something the matter with the dri around the driver's door there being pointed at by the outgoing driver of BMW number 25. They have done a driver change. So who brought that car in? Uh, that was... I think it was... It was Jesse Cron who brought that car in. And now Shea's telling me it's Farfus that uh, brought that car in. 
Oh, Farfus is in it now. Sorry, shit. Misunderstood. So the prototype class split is going on at the moment to get the faster cars to the front. Although, in fairness, I think with the, particularly in these conditions, the LMP3s uh, perhaps aren't as quick as the some of the faster GT cars. More Andretti Autosport problems. And where's that on the track? It's got behind the wall now. So is, is that behind the pit? Did he hit the wall leaving the pits? There's this. Is there something hanging off that car on the right-hand side? And he's doubled straight back into the pits, I think. Well, he's, going, he's on the access road, kind of, you know, uh, leading up towards the, the back of the paddock and the media centre. Yes. And that's, uh, yeah, curious. It's a very odd one. Try how to get there. <laughs> I was thinking exactly the same thing. It has, they had a problem earlier on when that car was a dead stick during the yellow, but uh, obviously they got some more of power on it again. Recent pit stops then for uh, Ripinto de Andrade in the number 11 Orica, the 81 Dragon Speed, Josh Pearson's just rejoined. Gar Robinson's gone back out now in the third place, Legion LMP3, that's the uh, Riley 74. Dan Goldberg out in the out in the 38. Ori Fadani in the number 13 Decane LMP3. Augusto Farfas has rejoined in the 25. That was the car that was receiving uh, some attention in the pit lane a moment or two ago. Rasmus Lynn back out after his earlier problems for the Oh, that was the uh, yeah, that was the Andretti Andretti car. Yeah, so that 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 out and back in through the back door. Yeah, that's bad news. I and mean, that car's now five, uh, four laps behind. It was leading the class. And who is it? Maxi Paul in the 71 TR3 uh, Lamborghini Huracan has also just come out of the pit lane. And... Uh, rejoined the circuit oh, he's quite a long way down isn't he in that car t3 motorsport north america to give them their full title yes and that was maxi paul that took that car out I was just checking for that well we're about to go back green and start another racing hour it's rs2 imsa radio jeremy sean john hinder from the haggerty global broadcast center live from daytona great to have your company wherever you are in the world or around the track here sirius xm202 imsaradio.com for sound and vision if there's no network coverage in your territory and imsa at IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with us, the green flag is coming up as we start another hour of motor racing live from Daytona. Well, decent timing for them to go back green at the top of the hour or near enough, Jeremy, just under 17 to go. I wouldn't say we've broken the back of it, but it's been an interesting opening few hours here oh, the man. pace at the front of the of all the classes actually but particularly in dpi i think we've seen the lap record lowered four times now three or four times certainly yeah and it's come down yeah better part of half a second too uh yeah the old record was set back in 2019 by the way oh, by yeah, philippe and azure a uh, 134.504 the the new mark 34.042 that was set by Renko van der Zander, a uh, lap 122, I think it was, somewhere around about there, uh, a while ago now. But, uh, you know, we've, we've got uh, six cars on the lead lap in DPI, one car just one lap behind in LMP3, in LMP2, excuse me, we've got uh, five cars on the lead lap, one car, another lap, one lap behind that, another one, one lap behind that in LMP3. We've got uh, four cars on the lead lap, 33, 54, 74, and, which is back on the lead lap, having made its brake change, and the uh, number oh, yes, 38 as well. GTD Pro, it's still... Oh, it's the Lexus back in the lead now. Yeah. With a, a pit stop there for the... Uh, 
for the number 97 Mercedes before we go back to green. That's Jill Gunon, yeah. Yeah, so that puts the the, uh, ac the uh, Lexus that had the uh, drive-through penalty early on for some incident responsibility. That cost us some time. Worked their way back into the game. Now leads the class in car number 14. That is Ben Barnicot, who started that car back at the wheel of it. In second position, then, will be uh, Lawrence Vantor in the Porsche number 2. In GTD non-pro i reckon number 19 car for tr3 has stolen a bit of a march here and is now is a, is a full lap ahead of the number 16 car of jan halen uh, i believe is works, the case right now work still going on on that corvette and they've got the uh, they've got the hammers out it's not a 10 pound lump hammer but it's the rubber hammer and uh, Alan Prosser reckons he spotted some new ex exhaust uh, pipes going up to that car. The Andretti number 36 is back out again. Uh, let's go for one quick question to Harry Tinkle as we're about to, to go uh, green. How is how is the Tinkmeister, Andrew? It's the Tinkmeister. It's looking pretty good, actually. Well, how's it going so far? Um, well, I've just been in the motorhome enjoying your coverage well, you so far. Out, yeah? Honestly, Heidi's having you running up and down the pit lane. You know, well, I can imagine he's up there, the heating on. He's probably got his people bringing him his cappuccinos. And all I'm hearing is your rally's telling you to run up the pit lane, down the pit lane. I mean, you've got to sort it out, Andrew. I don't know what's going on. It keeps me uh, slim, I think. What, what are you going in the car? Uh, I'll be in next after Josh, obviously Josh Pearson with us this weekend, uh, or he's in for the whole year, but uh, he's doing a fantastic job, youngest ever starter of the Rolex. I'm determined to try and help him become the youngest ever winner as well. You're, you're almost old enough to be his father. <laughs> I'm double his age, it's the first time I had a teammate who's, who's, uh, I'm double the age of, but uh, yeah, look, enjoying it. Um, we had a few little issues early on, but the, the main thing is the LMP2, we, we're still in the fight. We're only a lap down now. JB's uh, had a few little um, issues to overcome there, but he did the, the great job that he always does, and Josh is back in the car now, getting an, his second taste of uh, the Rolex did that day, Tona. Excellent. Have fun in the night. Cheers, man. Yeah, sorry, can you ask one more question, Andrew? Because I, I haven't had my next grape peeled for me uh, at the moment. I don't know what Tink thinks is going on up here in the Haggerty Global broadcast booth. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> Jer Jeremy and I surrounded by banks of screens yeah. and pieces of paper in Jeremy's case. He's just gone through another one of his lap chart uh, pieces of paper. What's your question, John? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, how is it? Ask, can you ask Tinks uh, how his uh, helmet visors and cheek pads are? Oh yeah, we we specially shipped over a helmet visors and special cheek straps for you. I think what's that all about? Um, yeah, I mean, just uh, start of the year, um, freshen up the helmet and the visors. We actually just had a, an issue in the car then when one of the vents fell off and JB was having a 180 mile an hour wind in his face and he had all sorts of dust and stuff. So the team just told me to put on a clear one. So thankfully you, uh, you brought it over for me and that's fully installed on the on the Arai now, ready to go out in this next stint in case we have any more issues. But PR1 done a fantastic job in that pit stop, got us a lap back and uh, fixed the issue. So hopefully it should be all good. Yeah, the invoice is in the post, mate. <laughs> No, not at all. Not at all. Just want to remember, never play, never go and play darts with Harry Tinknell. He and uh, Nick Tandy are rather good. Jeremy, before we go back to green. Yeah, the uh, number 14 and the number 7 car. The GTD Pro Lexus and Mercedes. Um, I, I think I've managed to uh, get a lap ahead on the, on the rest of the field in GTD Pro. Ah, now, is that why they waited to, to they pitted? Because Gilles Gounon, remember, came in right at the end there as we go back to green yeah. with 16 hours and 54 minutes to go. It'll be Kevin Magnussen that leads them back to the green in the 0-2 Cadillac. Simon Pagino in second place. Then Pipo Tarani, Kamui Kobayashi, Loic Duval, Scott Dixon, Ricky Taylor now just one lap off the lead. They stream through. Dennis Anderson, Ben Keating, James Allen. Ben Keating back in, oh no, he's in the 52. Yeah, of course, he's in the uh, P2 car. James Allen, Fritz van Erd, Reprinto de Andrade, then Josh Pearson, Patricio O'War, but the last two uh, a lap off their lead in class. 
Seb Priel leading for the number 33 Sean Creech racing team in LMP3. Oh, if he gets him, if he bags himself a Rolex, I'm going to imagine Andy's going to be green with envy, he's dad. Oh, stop plus 60 for that Sean Creech Motorsport. Running the red light at pit exit. That's not the first time we've seen that. Our Porsche keys to the race. No mistakes on drive-throughs, and we've seen at least three or four people have, have not seen those red lights in the race so far. Oh, my goodness, mate. News from behind the wall, thanks to Hardpoint for letting us know a splitter being replaced for that. Also, a diffuser at the back and a steering rack. Rob Ferriol will get or stay in the car when it returns to the track, but they're not giving that up. So that's two penalties for the 33. There was the instant responsibility for a, 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 a crash with the 24 BMW, which, which I have to say we did not see, but race control see everything. And also that stop at 60 for running the red light. Also, the Milner Motorsport number six, improperly served emergency service, stop plus 10. Now at the front of the field, second place, Simon Pagino has some company in the shape of Pibo Tirani. Through turn number five, the Western Horseshoe, now heading towards turn six and up onto the banking. Pagino's car, the number 60, looks a little bit of a handful, the Cadillac behind. Jeremy said this a few times, Maybe the heavier weight of the bigger engine Cadillac just helping them get some heat in the Michelins on those early laps. The Acura looking very skittish indeed. Change for the lead in LMP2, Jeremy, on that opening lap after the restart. Yeah, it was uh, number 20 car that uh, Dennis Anderson that led up towards the green ahead of number 52 of Ben Keating. James Allen was in third place in the number 69 G drive entry. At the end of that lap, however, it's James Allen in the lead. So the Aussie leads there in car number 69 in LMP2 in eighth position overall. 52, Ben Keating in third position. One of two cars that Ben is racing this weekend. He stays down low. And who was that going past him? Was that, that wasn't the Jumbo car, was it? Uh, it, it quite like... Fritz van that's Ernst the car it would have been if, if, yeah. uh, if somebody went past him. I didn't see it. It's, uh, no, no, it wasn't. No, it was number 11 car actually. Oh my Josh goodness! Pierce. Huge news! Improper final wave by. I'm just going to give you the numbers here, and you can work this out yourself. Number 19, number 97, number 14, and number 44. Stop plus three minutes and 30 seconds. That's effectively uh, a couple of laps for those guys, and that. That is uh, the punitive penalty, deliberately so, for the improper way by, so you don't get the advantage. So I was wondering how the number 14, number 97, managed to get a lap lead on everybody all of a sudden in GTD Pro. That explains it. They took the wave around when they, w when they were not eligible, uh, and it's up to the teams to decide who is eligible and who isn't, wh whether to make that, uh, that, that pass around, and that's what they did and they shouldn't have done. They weren't in the right position to be able to do so, so it's going to be a massive penalty for those two teams. It's going to take them... Well, they might be able to get away... No, they're probably going to lose three minutes, 30. Two laps. Probably going to lose two laps, which is good. They might conceivably be able to stay just one lap down. Depends where they are, I suppose. Or, Shea, or uh, right at the end of that late lead lap. Yes, yeah, good Be point. lucky if they do. Shea Adam has uh, news for us, and it's not great news. We, th we thought we got the Allegra car back out, and we did for a wee while, Shea. Yeah, but then they decided to just save the car. They're a kind of team that are going for race wins. And rather than risk it here at Daytona when they're 15 laps down after changing the alternator, they decided to park it and keep it safe, keep the racing miles off the car for the Mobile 112 as of Sebring, where they will be back. 
just looking at those uh, penalties, thanks, Shay. Just looking at those penalties, the 19 car is the leader in class, Jeremy. Uh, that is... Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, I mean, that was, uh, yeah I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that one as well, yeah. So it's, it, it was the two cars that are leading in GTD Pro and the GTD leader you all did that the same got a, thing. A lap yeah. on, the, on the field, yeah. yeah. So that is extraordinary. The, the ben Keating Mercedes. in the pits. Why is Ben Keating in the pits? What's that? Uh, in and out for Ben Keating in the 52. He'd done 14. Yeah, but most 15 of that was laps. under caution. Most of that was under caution. Let's see why he would come in now. No, indeed. He only did and five he, laps before that. Yeah, he was in second place. He was, he'd lost a couple of positions there after that restart. There's a new best lap of the race for our race leading car. That is. Uh, Kevin Magnussen, 30, 1 minute 34.225. Also, Lloyd Duval turned his best lap on the last lap of, as, as well in the car number five. Well, in the Porsche Keys to the race, we said no mistakes. Mistakes bring penalties, but when you come in for the penalty, as the number 19 did for Al Giacomo Alto, for TR3, shit, you've got to go to the right spot. Yeah, and uh, you cannot serve a stop and hold penalty if you stop in your pit box during a trip down the pit lane. Giacomo Altoe stopped in his pit box, then realized he was in the wrong space, and began to get going again. Clearly got a radio message from the team saying, no, stop, stop, stop. Stopped three pit boxes down from his box, waited about three seconds, and then continued moving down the pit lane. He's going to need to make another trip down the pit lane to go all Richard beyond pit out for a three minute uh, span of time, but yeah, that comes down to reading the rule book. Three minutes, three minutes, e 30 seconds for that car to stop. Great to see the copper coloured McLaren circulating again. We'd lost that one earlier on after contact, remember, but it got dragged back to the pits. Oh, and the WeatherTech Porsche still going around as well, but still no sign of the four Corvette coming back out onto the track and as I said that uh, nope still in the pit lane getting worked on in the back still haven't had word from uh, their PR guru Ryan Smith uh, and Shea Adam has news on why that Corvette had to go back into the pit lane. I did a little bit more digging, and off the restart, it appears to be a very bad restart for two cars in particular. Yes, the Ford Corvette, which initially needed a diffuser change, but then clearly the team noticed a little bit more. Then they thought that they had run it too dry out of fuel, and it wouldn't get going on its own, so now it's back behind the wall having extensive work going on, and yes, I'm waiting for Ryan to send the message any second now. But what caused the diffuser on the Ford Corvette? to error in its ways. Well, that was contact from the 39 car bomb with Peregrine Racing in the beginning. That car, which went behind the wall for several laps, uh, I think at least 20, radiator change for them because their nose was what went into the back of the Corvette. I think we uh, mentioned a bit earlier on that the hard point car was getting a split, a diffuser and steering wrap. And Rob Furriel back in that car. Yep, I did uh, mention that one, but uh, just in case you didn't catch it, because that was uh, whilst there was a lot going on. Thanks to Tom Moore for getting that to us. At IMSA Radio, if you'd like to get in touch with us, uh, I'm at hearing from Curtis James at IMSA Radio. Debris covering the airbox. Harry Chapman as well. Uh, it was a windscreen tear-off or some kind of debris in the engine air intake. That's why Ben Keating came in early, Jeremy. Debris, uh, some kind of tear-off or something blocking the air, air box. That's why he came in after just 14 laps. Thank you for that, those of you who have tweeted in at IMSA Radio. A quick reminder that... Uh, we're, if you're joining us late and you want to try and do a little bit of catch-up, we're posting the hour by hours as we go through. Easy to catch up on imsaradio.com. All the memories coming back now with thoughts of GTP for last for next <laughs> year and the cold night for this year. And... Uh, 
all of us who remember back in the day starting to go, oh, well, I remember when. Well, what's coming in now, Jeremy? Yeah, who just, have you had that from? Yeah, I just got a text from Bobby Golazinski, who ran the Win Autosport car number 11 last season. He was part of the uh, Niptec team back in the day, the oh. NPTI Nissan team. And he remembers in, in 1991, Gary Brabham, uh, well, well, yes, sorry, Gary, uh, totaled a, a Nissan GTP car on that pit lane exit there uh, on cold tires, hit the outside wall. And uh, it, it, uh, it put the right front tower, he remembers, all the way into the tub so hard it broke the windshield. Yeah, it was a big, sh big shot, that one. No, no pit lane speed limits in those days? No, no pit lane speed limits in those days, exactly right. You don't, you don't have uh, as nearly as much an excuse these days. So we're waiting for those cars that uh, did the improper fi final wave by procedure. We mentioned the AMG 97 yeah, and, the 19, yet, and the 19 uh, Lamborghini. The other two being the uh, number 14 and the 44 that we mentioned. Three minutes and 30 seconds for those guys. So clearly arguing their case. 14 being Ben Barnicat leading in the GTD Pro category ahead of Jules Gounon in the WeatherTech Mercedes. Uh, that was the, the uh, 97. And the 44 is the Magnus car, of course. And they're a little bit further down in ninth position. John Potter out in that car. Let's take a couple of updates from the pit lane. Remind you that uh, leading the motor race at the moment in uh, DPI as well is Kevin Magnussen by about 2.1 seconds. Let's go to uh, Andrew Marriott first of all. Andrew, what have you got for us? Well, you know, John, we're expecting a very cold night. I've just seen an engineer testing the uh, temperature of the actual pit lane. At the moment, it's 6 degrees centigrade, so uh, it's, it's not on that freezing mark yet. I know, God, we've got the whole night to go. Uh, reporters uh, Andretti Autosport telling us it was an electrical issue that uh, was plaguing their number 36 prototype but it's back out again meantime performance tech I'm very happy that uh, Misha Goldberg have moved up into third position uh, for them uh, London producer talking about the old days I think Max Pappas' exploit in 1996 while trying to catch the leading car, which, if I remember correctly, was being driven by Wayne Taylor at the time, he said, uh, led to the introduction of the pit lane speed limit for 1997. So our London producer, Rob Lomas, who is a mine, a font of knowledge. Thank you, Rob. And uh, thanks for being up in the... We small hours back in the UK. Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Jeremy Short, John Hindhoff and Peter Mackay joining us as well. We've been watching on from a couple of doors down. It doesn't get any worse, does it? <laughs> I felt like I was uh, being very well looked after in the IMSA suite, a couple of boxes along. It's a very comfortable chair and a, a nice meal and a uh, cup of coffee and ready, ready to get going. And uh, haven't taken my eye off the action, though. In particular, it's the GTD Pro Battle. Six manufacturers in the top seven uh, while I was watching it, and it's very close to that at the moment. So, I mean, you have to give a huge, huge... Uh, doff of the cap to the IMSA technical team to be able to get such different cars all together uh, with top teams, top drivers. It's just fantastic in GTD Pro. And in, in GTD, well, Jan Halen leads at the moment uh, in the Porsche after a Herculean stint from the Austrian uh, Richard Leeds. But still, these Cadillacs are, are looking good at the front in DPI. Uh, and I, and uh, I think Jeremy's theory of the slightly heavier uh, Cadillac engine, the big honking V8 in the back of that uh, machine, I think that's given a serious 
advantage on traction, particularly in the uh, in those colder temperatures as well. So I definitely sign up to the the Shaw theory uh, as far as DPI is concerned at the moment. Um, but Simon Pagano hanging on at the moment, 4.6 seconds behind Kevin Magnussen at the moment. Kevin Magnussen at the wheel of the 0-2. Uh, Chip Ganassi Cadillac, of course, drove for Chip Ganassi last year in the full season in IMSA. Uh, sadly, we won't have Kevin here in IMSA for the full season. Of course, taking up his role as a Peugeot uh, factory driver. Well, unless Peugeot come here, of course. I like your thinking, John. I like, yeah. Later in the season. I don't think we'll see them in the start. They're certainly not coming to Sebring. Uh, doubtful. Uh, well, they might go to Spa if they're going to do Le Mans, but if they're not doing Le Mans... Uh, Maybe Monza and Bahrain, Total are very big there, but they might still want to do Le Mans, in which case they've been told they've got to do another race before then. Mm. But right now they haven't confirmed the homologation of the car. They haven't finalised the specification of the Peugeot 72, which what, is what I keep calling the <laughs> nine times eight. But you see, 72 is the department of the South, so I, I think they actually meant that. I think that's a little French joke, and I'm prepared to play along with it quite, quite happily. Well, a, it might be you making the joke, John, but we'll go with, well, maybe Peugeot will go along with your joke, maybe. Soison Deux uh, is uh, <laughs> the, the Peugeot Soison Deux. <laughs> at the front of uh, GTD Pro at the moment, well, it's uh, a little bit confusing at the moment as the, until these penalties get sorted out, but still the, the 62 Rizzi Ferrari being the thorn in the side of the Porsche onslaught at the moment. Change for second place, Pippo Durrani up to second in the 31 Whelan uh, Cadillac. So the gap is about seven seconds at the moment between Kevin Magnussen in the 02 Chip Ganassi Cadillac and the 31 Whelan Cadillac. Good news for fans of the number 99 Hardpoint Porsche. Uh, Rob Ferriol's back on the move after a long time in the pit box in the uh, behind the wall. Rob Ferriol, the former uh, Marine and Special Operations uh, serviceman, who, uh, of course, has started up this incredible hardpoint team who operate in a number of IMSA sanctioned series. But, uh, the, uh, of course, this is the kind of pinnacle of their, of their outfit and the, uh, the racing activities that they have. So still this endless conveyor belt of traffic for the prototypes to get through. Always tricky. Particularly spare a thought for the LMP3 drivers as well, because they don't necessarily have the 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 big overlap in speed. They've really got to work hard to get their way through uh, the GT field. But everybody coexisting very nicely, it must be said, for such a large size of field. We've only got three retirements at the moment. The number 28 uh, Allegra Mercedes, the number 23 uh, Heart of Racing Aston Martin and the 75 Sun Energy Mercedes uh, all confirmed retirement now. Now, uh, question for the um, number 97 Mercedes, although it does have a, a, a little bit of a penalty hanging over it, ha did Cooper McNeil complete his two hours driving time in that car? Now, I've been trying to search my timing software, but maybe something that... Uh, Either that you, you might know, but uh, if he is, then he's. Although the Porsche number 79, the WeatherTech car, is uh, out of the running, the 97 WeatherTech Mercedes is very much in the running, even with this penalty hanging over at the moment, which by my reckoning hasn't been served yet, so there could be discussions ongoing uh, about that. So the only penalty that has been served so far from that batch is the number 19 uh, Lamborghini in GTD. That's the red uh, Pilotti shoes uh, machine, Giacomo Alto. He's now down to 10th in class in GTD. 16 and a half hours to go here. We're now under the cover of darkness, a long darkness period here at uh, Daytona. Sunset was around six o'clock local time and the sun will not begin to come up until about a quarter past seven
tomorrow morning. And if you've never seen the Floridian sunrise here at Daytona, it is something, something to tune into EMSA TV to see. Or if you're at the track, well, it's worth getting up for or Certainly. staying up for, depending what side of that got seesaw some, you are. Thank you to Ryan Smith. We've got some uh, news about the number four Corvette. The Marco Sorensen hit was harder than they had realized. The diffuser, yes, but bent some of the rear of the car and they still don't know the full extent of the damage. They're working on it. As I say, they were looking at the, they were looking at the uh, gearbox on that car. Right, I'm going to leave you in the uh, hands of Peter and Jeremy for a little while. It's shared down in the pit lane, Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Uh, with 16.32 to go, here's the rundown of what's happening at the front of the field. So at the front of the field, we've just seen that the lap record tumble, a 1 minute 34.000 from Kevin Magnussen. He's loved this Cadillac DPI ever since he set foot in it, uh, testing in Sebring, and he is going so quick at the moment, seven tenths quicker than people Durrani last time by, who sits second for the number 31 Whelan Engineering Cadillac. In third, it's Kamui Kobayashi, the winner of the Le Mans 24 Hours, and the World Endurance Championship last year. The 48 uh, Ally Cadillac is in third. The first of the Acuras, Simon Pagino uh, in fourth. And uh, so beginning to drop off the scent of the Cadillacs a little bit. Fifth place is the number five uh, Mustang sampling Cadillac of Loic Duval. Scott Dixon for Chip Ganassi Racing in that Cadillac 01. Uh, and then in seventh, it's Ricky Taylor for Wayne Taylor Racing Acura. Jeremy, how are we looking in P2? Yeah, first of all, uh, Kevin Magnussen, he set his, be his, his best lap in that car on c two consecutive laps. First of all, to a 34.1, and then on the next lap of 34.000, actually, to take that new lap record away from Renga van der Zander in the sister 01 Cadillac. In the LMP2, it's now, we, it's now Rui Andrade who leads in car number eight for the, that's the Tower Motorsport team. They've done a good job to get themselves back into contention. Uh, in second position now for uh, high class racing is Dennis Anderson in car number 20. The 29 of Fritz van Eerd for racing team Netherland in third position. And James Allen having made a pit stop a few laps ago is now in the fourth position in LMP2. In LMP3, uh, there's been some uh, shuffling as well. Number 74 car, Gar Robinson, back into the lead of the class. Now, ahead of John Bennett, he took that uh, uh, lead a couple of laps ago, I believe, from uh, from uh, John Bennett. A in third position is Dan Goldberg, still within 10 seconds of the lead in LMP3. And then Seb Prio is uh, currently one lap behind, having had... Did he have a penalty recently, I think? Uh, to drop that car off uh, off the, the off the lead lap in LMP3, but still very close there. In GGD Pro, finally number 14 and 97 are in. And are they serving? They are. Their they penalties? are. They're, thanks, thanks to our pit oh, no, they're just taking on regular are. service, aren't no, they? No, no, so they're serving their penalties. No, no, no they, they, they serve the penalties down to the end of the pits. Okay. Also, so the the penalty. This was the same for the number 19. Uh, um, Lamborghini, the uh, Pelotti Shoes Lamborghini of Giacomo Alto served this very lengthy pe penalty in the pick box, which is your, uh, very different to the to the reg to the normal procedure. So the 97 WeatherTech Mercedes AMG sitting for an agonising three and a half minute wait. Likewise for the GTD Pro uh, Lexus RCF of Ben Barnacle and. Well, looking at the crew guys, all just could just sit and stare at their cars sitting there for a very, very long amount of time. Um, but with 16 hours and 28 minutes on the clock and with the number of yellow flag periods we have seen, there is opportunity to fight back as well. This is the, the type of, this is how the style of racing works here uh, in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and we love it. Um, in GTD, Jan Halen leads the way. 
in the number 16 Wright Motorsports Porsche, that's the blue and black machine, uh, leading by two and a half seconds uh, from Tony Vlander. Great to have Tony Vlander yeah. back in the series in the Ferrari, for, of course it would be a Ferrari, 488 GT3. Scott Andrews in number 32 Mercedes uh, sits third in class, uh, fourth in GTD is the Lucas Auer driven number 57 Winwood Mercedes with Jordan Pepper rounding out the top five in the Inception McLaren. Meanwhile, we've got a super battle on track between the number 10 Wayne Taylor Racing Acura driven yeah. by Ricky Taylor yeah. and the 01 Cadillac of Scott Dixon. But this is, is this for position, uh, Jeremy? No. That, that was, a, was that a 02 car, wasn't it? 01. It was 01, is that okay? Fine. Getting the lap up. It, it's, uh, it, if it was 01, it's not uh, a battle for a position um, because uh, the, number, the number 10 car is a lap down. But one one more uh, one more yellow flag period, and that Wayne Taylor Racing Acura will be back in the back in the game. But I have to say, Jeremy, Will Stevens did a super job there because that tire let go really early on in the lap, and he didn't he didn't lose patience. He he kept to a certain speed. He brought the car back. And he kept it in the game. He did. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, he super yeah showed immense patience there. Mm. Uh, he, uh, the uh, the temptation is to just get back to the pits as fast as you possibly can. But uh, by doing so, you're going to risk more damage. So you've just got to you know, do what is as safe as possible and try not to incur any more damage onto that car. Kevin Magnussen then completes that uh, 235th lap, 136 now for him. And pit stops now for the number 31 car and the number 60. So lead, they lead the way. They're the first cars to make pit stop on this sequence. It is a very frantic pit stop down at the number 60 Meyershank Racing Acura. As leaving the pit box right behind them was the Mercedes having served its stop and hold penalty. Three minutes and a half in that box for the 97 WeatherTech Racing Mercedes. But four tires and fuel. No driver change. Simon Pagano sitting behind the wheel of this one. A few boxes further back, one of the Action Express Cadillacs. It's a wheel and engineering car. It beats out Simon Pagano. Still people to running behind the wheel there. Fuel and tires for them as well. We are expecting both of the Cadillac Racing entered cars and the JDC Miller Motorsport car to come down the pit lane this next time by. Thanks, Shea. She had him down in pit lane for us for the next little while. As the number 18 Era Motorsport LMP2 machine comes to take on service. The mechanics uh, give it a nice clean windshield for Ryan DL before he goes back out on the circuit. So, Kevin Magnussen leads the race by eight seconds here in the 60th running of the Rolex 24 hour at Daytona. 30 years as well since Rolex watches have sponsored this great race. And it's uh, amazing how everyone refers to it as the Rolex 24 as well, and rightly so. It's the number. Thank you, Shay. Down to you. Kevin Magnussen comes into his pit box and hits his marks perfectly. Fuel tires and a driver change as Kevin jumps out. I jump out of the way of the number five Mustang Sampley Cadillac because that one comes in two boxes behind. Uh, this was a driver change. I'm not really sure who was getting into it for JDC Miller Motorsports. It is also a driver change with a yellow and orange helmet, which normally means like, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure that is. I think that's Richard Westbrook actually because he's running a slightly different livery on his helmet for this year. Fuel and four to slit. That is the sound of the zero Cadillac. Revved within an inch of his life and away it goes 32 three seconds in the box. So darn near a perfect stop. Next up, Ally Racing Cadillac. Then goes JDC Miller Motorsport. Then goes the 10, Conica Minolta Acura with Ricky Taylor behind the wheel. And then finally the 01 Cadillac Racing Car, which also had a very significant driver change because IndyCar champion Alex Palo got out and uh, he got in for his first stint after taking over from IndyCar champion Scott Dixon. There, there, thank you, Shay. There really is an embarrassment of riches uh, at the uh, the Chip Ganassi pit. Of course, the 01 running under the Cadillac V Performance Academy banner. That's the white and black car. The number two is the uh, Cadillac Accessories banner, banner. That's the black and red car. And the 01, the regular season drivers, Renger van der Zanda and Sebastian Burde. And in the 02, it's Earl Bamber and Alex Lynn. I mean, it's all star stuff all the way down. But we don't expect any less. 
Jeremy, of course, Chip Ganassi, the most successful team owner in the history of, of this race. Yeah, that's right, and uh, yeah, it's 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 his record of uh, of three wins in succession uh, in 2006, seven, and eight that Wayne Taylor Racing's Wayne Taylor's team, Konica Minolta Racing, is trying to beat today. Uh, that car comes in for its service as well, so it will remain one lap behind the other contenders, but certainly the car is uh, is poised. <laughs> to take advantage of any opportunities that might present themselves to get back on the lead lap. Who's that going behind the wall? It's a Duquesne. I think it may be the number six Duquesne. Okay. Um, I get, uh, the, 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 the Duquesne again. Uh, uh, that, that, we don't want that to stick. Uh, a lot of cars having to go behind the wall throughout the, the course of this race, but that is the attrition that can happen in the 24-hour competition. So I tell you what, there's a, a battle emerging. At the, front, the sharp end between well, Simon Pines, you know, people Durani, that's something I would uh, buy a ticket to. Pines, you know, in the number 60, pink and white, uh, Kerbagajanian MSR Acura, and the number 31 of people Durani in the Whelan Engineering Machine. So they blast underneath our commentary position here into turn one, hard on the brakes, rattling down the gearbox using yeah. every last um, bit of that three and a half litre turbo engine. And we've got a new race leader now, Kamu uh -huh. Kobayashi has managed to get past Alex Lynn on that outlap. They they came into the pits uh, with the number two car ahead of number 48 by, by about seven seconds actually. So uh, the uh, is it the pit stop time itself or was it uh, on the outlap that uh, that change took place? Let me see when you find any sector times so the gap, yeah 3.6 seconds yeah, slow the middle sector there for Alex Lynn lost four seconds on that on that uh, middle sector that's from the where's that from it's just from just before turn six I think it's all the way till around about the bus stop uh, and uh, I don't know whether he had a spin in turn six or Maybe. some sort of problem there but four seconds that's a lot to lose especially when it's sector. flat out for most of the way as well you're more yeah. on the throttle for uh, all the way to the Le Mans chicane of course renamed this from the formerly the bus stop which a lot of fans will remember it by but Le Mans chicane and of course the opening chicane at uh, the first of the two Mulsanne chicanes at Le Mans will be named the Daytona chicane which I think is a fantastic uh, bit of serendipity and uh, shows that links are, are strengthening Jeremy let's have a look here maybe there's a replay coming up here uh, because uh, eight seconds slower uh, on that last uh, no this is number 68 car running wider that's uh, in the eighth position G -drive. in LMP2 the sister car uh, is back in the lead of that class that's car number 69 James Allen I'm quite sure what happened though to Alex Lynn on that, that outlap the, the the time from when they crossed uh, the start finish line coming out of the pits to complete the outlap was eight seconds faster for Kamui Kobayashi than Alex Lin. And given that they both had a pit stops down at the beginning of pit lane before the timing line, uh, it was uh, it was in all three sectors Kobayashi was quicker, but particularly in the middle sector, uh, a four second difference. Four four of those eight seconds were made up in that middle sector. So a great outlap there from uh, Kamui Kobayashi. Of course, Kamui, Kamui Kobayashi, a uh, uh, winner of this race on multiple uh, occasions, two-time winner in 2019 yeah. and 2020. Now, uh, what do you think, Jeremy? Now, Alex Lynn, of course, we, needs no introduction, an incredible driver, but in that early phase, we've heard the teams talk a lot about, about warming the tyres up. I spoke to one uh, P2 uh, chief engineer yesterday, said that it'll take, during the night, the P2 is three laps to get the, the tyres up to really proper temperature and pressure. Do you think it was maybe that Kamui was able to get the tyre heated up quicker or the setup of that car's better? What well, do you think? I mean, Alex Lynn certainly is not a well-known name in, in, in this country. Uh, he's, he's made only one previous start in, in the Ipswich Weather Sports yeah. Car Championship back in 2017. 
with uh, Wayne with uh, Wayne Taylor seeming won that race, uh, but this is his first time at Daytona, uh, and it, you know it makes sense. You know, don't push the envelope uh, and risk making a mistake. Uh, still relatively early in the race, so you know he won't be cons too concerned by that at all. Uh, Kamu Kobayashi, having won this race in 19 and 20, he's got a lot more experience around this racetrack than does Alex Lynn. So uh, it, I think the experience there telling for Kobayashi. And that would be the 17th, well. lap, lap, uh, 17th uh, lead change. Wow, goodness me. Well, that, that just shows you as well as it Kamu, not only has he won the race twice, he's won it in this very car as well, the Cadillac DPI, albeit both of his wins coming with the uh, Wayne Taylor racing outfit. I love the story of when Wayne Taylor called up Kamui Kobayashi to ask him if he'd like to drive, and uh, Wayne forgot that he lived in Tokyo and woke him up in the middle of the night, but uh, he, uh, Kamui didn't mind to be offered a drive uh, for such an outfit, but now driving for uh, the Ally Cadillac team alongside uh, Jimmy Johnson, Mike Rockenfeller, and Jose Maria Lopez. Of course, Jose knows very well from sharing the number seven Toyota uh, hypercar at Le Mans and in the World Endurance Championship. It's oh, side by side between the heart of racing, number 27, Aston Martin, the number 96, Liqui Moly Turner, BMW, the tackle machine, still side by side, coming through turn two as they head down towards the International Horseshoe. Who's going to give best here as well? Oh, it's 96 BMW still forced to go round to the long line. That's Robbie Foley driving that car. Oh, and it's the wily old fox. Darren Turner's the driver behind the wheel of the Aston Martin. That is a battle now for sixth we have position in GTD. Brilliant stuff. Shea Adam is down with Kevin Magnussen, the new lap record holder. Kevin, you've now set the official fastest lap around Daytona International Speedway in the race. Uh, how good was that car for you? Yeah, it was really good. I mean, uh, we had a we had a good stint. We um, got to the front with the yellow. Uh, we'd already pitted, so we were kind of um, on more fuel than the rest of them. So, or at least the car in front of me. So when the other yellow came, I I came out in the lead after that. So um, then after the after the yellow, it was just really uh, gruesome. Yeah, we had good pace, and I was able to pull out a lead and hand the car uh, over to Alex uh, in P1, which is what we want to do. Now, you took that lap off of Ranger Van de Zander, your teammate from last year. How strange is it to be in a different car from him? Yeah, I mean, we we had such a good time just, uh, you know, last year, so, uh, yeah, it still feels like we're, we're very much teammates, you know, it's hard to, it, it's easy to forget that we're not in the same car, so, I mean, we, we, we have a pretty close relationship, we're good friends, but, uh, you know, we, we'll compete hard on track and uh, looking forward to that too. Thanks, Kevin. Get some rest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shea Adam down there with Kevin Magnussen, driver of the 02. Uh, uh, I can't keep the run by Chip Ganassi, the uh, Cadillac there. Very impressive run indeed for Kevin. Of course, if you recognize the uh, Magnuson name, it is indeed. Kevin is the son of Jan Magnuson, of course, who had so much success with Corvette racing in this paddock as well. Well, there is hardly anything to separate the second and third position at the front of the field in DPI. Alex Lynn uh, just holding off a charging people Durrani uh, in the 31 car. And while the battle continues between Lynn and Durrani, Simon Pagino is just creeping up behind in his, well, I don't know how you can creep Jeremy in a bright pink Acura, but uh, <laughs> yes, he can be as stealthy as you can. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, <laughs> Alex Lynn has certainly been a bit more circumspect at this uh, stage in the proceedings uh, because uh, Pippa Durrani has closed right in on him and put him, put him under pressure. He'd slipped back already eight seconds behind Kamu Kobayashi since being overtaken, what, uh, five laps ago. And uh, you're right, Simo, Simon Pagino closing in as well and Lloyd Duval is only a couple of three seconds behind that pair, that trio of cars battling for second plate position and then Alex Palou is the last car on a lead lap but again just about 10 seconds away from the lead at this stage super stuff Oh, we've got a spinner, one of the LMP3 cars off on the run down towards the International Horseshoe. It's the number 38. Oh, it's Dan Goldberg loses it. He can't, somehow gathers it up. I think he may have glanced across the wall. And now the, 
the number 19 Lamborghini just looking to get back up to pace. So I wonder if there's been a clip. That's the performance tech motorsports Ligier, driven by Dan Goldberg, the 43-year-old from New Jersey, competing in his first Rolex 24. Florida. The driver of the 19 uh, Bloody oh, Shoes Lamborghini, John McGrew. Oh, I think may have, who's just had a huge moment coming out towards the super speedway area. Coming out around turn seven. So we're going to get another look at it and see what happens. So it's a little bit of side to side contact between uh, one of the P2 cars. I think it was the number 11 and that kicked the 38 off into a spin and maybe just glance the wall, but if so, only just, and able to keep going without too much serious damage. So, whoa, that was a heart starter, yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? And mm. I think Dan Goldberg was just a little bit unlucky there. Uh, it was, there was nothing, I think it was just kind of one of those things, and you know, you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, but a little bit of a side swipe there. It was number 14, uh, Vassar Sullivan, Lexus weaving its way down the pit lane. I think it's just making a uh, schedule stop. Having served that penalty, however, it's now, instead of being one lap ahead, it's uh, two laps behind in GTD Pro with the penalties for that car. There was some damage to the, uh, and a punctured uh, left rear tyre on the performance tech machine for Dan Goldberg. That's really unfortunate for that team. Running beautifully in the third position uh, and not too far behind either Gar Robinson or John Bennett. Three bronze drivers there, all of them doing a nice job and running pretty consistent lap times. Oh dear, so the number 38 performance tech motorsport machine driven by Dan Goldberg just limping back on the low side of the banking, going very slowly indeed compared to those around, but uh, plenty of room on the banking there for the drivers to get through. So the 38 uh, LMP3 machine will be coming down to see our pit reporter, Shadam, very soon. But at the front of the pack, Kamui Kobayashi, he continues to impress. He has just one mode, and that's absolutely maximum attack. 36.291 last time by. That's nine tenths of a second quicker than Alex Lin's last lap, and three tenths of a second quicker than Pippo Durrani in third. So Lin holding off Durrani for now in second in DPI. In GTD Pro, well, it's looking very good for Rizzi Competizione Ferrari. It's a red Ferrari with the yellow Pennzoil branding on it, driven by factory driver Daniel Serra. A full lineup of four factory drivers, and uh, I think Giuseppe Rizzi will be quite happy just now, be feeling quite quite pleased. Yeah, uh, sitting on the pit perch. Yeah, particularly yeah, after that was the very first pit stop of the, of the day. Uh, he, he came, he, the, the car had to serve emergency service, so therefore had to come back in again after he was able to come in for a splash of fuel, but then had to come in again after everybody else had pitted. So he fell right to the back of the field in GTD Pro, worked his way through the front, and since then that car has been one of the leading contenders here. And uh, Sarah now leads by five seconds over Lawrence Van Tour, one of the factory Porsche drivers. Ferrari versus Porsche, yes, indeed. <laughs> Matthew Jaminet, another factory Porsche driver for FAF Motorsports, another 17 seconds back in third position. Austin Sindrick driving the number 15 WeatherTech Mercedes, another 10 seconds back. And then in fifth position in the class and still on the lead lap, Augusto Farfus in the BMW Team RLL car number 25. Uh, that team has done well to get back on the lead lap in GTD Pro. They were one lap off the pace. They were able to make that up during the recent, recent caution period. And with that uh, penalty for the other two contenders, uh, he's uh, right back in the, in the fray now. Uh, looking is, is that car's best lap is, is down a bit still compared to the other contenders, but that's been a good effort, a very good effort by that BMW team with that brand new BMW M4 GT3. That is very impressive uh, indeed uh, for BMW. They're fi fighting on, not giving in. That really is the true spirit uh, of endurance. Now, for fans of the number 79 WeatherTech uh, team, the Porsche, uh, Matteo Cairoli, the Italian on board, the man from Como, uh, is, uh, he's had to wait patiently to get in that car. And unfortunately, it's been a really difficult day after having such strong pace early on. Julian Andler charging through the field and 
showing just how impressive he is. Then Alessio Picarello on board, and then all of a sudden, some issues have, have, have held them back, uh, which is such a pity. Now, while we're on the topic of Porsche, a big hello to uh, Sebastian Borowski, who uh, sent me a message during in the last couple of hours. Uh, of course, Sebastian is, uh, for those who have seen the uh, Road to Le Mans series on YouTube with uh, Michael Fassbender, uh, Sebastian's the uh, principal for uh, that uh, project, so he's, he's wishing us all the best here uh, in the booth and said he's uh, enjoying watching the coverage uh, at his home uh, in Germany, probably with a few whiskies. He's quite a whiskey fan, is, uh, is Sebastian as well. So at the moment, although the WeatherTech car in GTD Pro has not been not been able to stick at the front. Well, it's uh, it's good news for the number two fa uh, the number two KCMG car and the number nine uh, FAF uh, Porsche in GTD Pro, who temporarily go to the top of the timesheets in GTD Pro because the number 62 Rizzi Competizione Ferrari has uh, come in for a pit stop. Daniel Serra remains on board. And Austin Sindrick now goes up into third position in GTD Pro in that number 15 uh, Mercedes. Now, I, t I have to say, uh, Jeremy, Austin has really, really impressed me because obviously he's incredibly talented uh, in stock car racing. Um, he races at the very top level of stock car racing, which is such an incredible skill. But this is this is a new this is a different discipline, not a new discipline. It's a different discipline. He's really impressed me this weekend. What do you think? Yeah, no, uh, Austin Sindrick is is a, a, a real talent. You know, he's got a lot of road racing experience. He started his career in, in open wheel cars, and uh, so he you know, he's uh, he's not a one trick pony as Austin. I mean, there's only three drivers in that car, uh, so that shows how how much confidence they have. I think in in that trio, Patrick Assenheimer, Dirk Mueller, of course, has been around the block uh, many many times. Got ten previous starts in this race. It's the first start in this race for Patrick Assenheimer, but Austin Sindrick has raced here three uh, three times in the past. He's had a fifth place finish previously, uh, had uh, success in the Michelin Pilot Challenge as well, so he's well used, well versed to the IMSA paddock and, uh, and just loving this opportunity to drive in the GTD Pro class for the Mercedes uh, team there in car number 15 and doing a fine job running along in third position right now. Shea Adam has, be, has been pounding up and down the paddock and she has an update for us on the number 38 Performing Tech Motorsport Leger. Shea, down to you. Never fails that as soon as I get close to the car, it leaves a pit lane, but I checked in with the team and I said, is it okay? And the response was, yeah, well, we'll see. So not a whole lot of confidence, but they didn't recall that she's going to, as it were, behind the left for a real Dan Goldberg back out for another stint. Thank you, Shay. So hopefully cheese wedges remain intact uh, on the back of that LMP3 machine. Speaking of LMP3, leader at the moment, the number 74 Ranch Resorts machine driven by Gar Robinson. Now, Gar Robinson, this is, uh, and this was an, another uh, Shea Adam uh, gem. Uh, we were driving back uh, to uh, to the paddock in, in a golf buggy, and uh, there's this wacky looking old, looked like an old school bus with chimneys coming out of it, all sorts. It looked like one of these proper party buses that you see in the infield for those who aren't going to sleep throughout the whole weekend. And uh, she goes, she says, that's Gar Robinson's bus. He takes it to uh, takes it to all the races. And I normally I said a shiny motorhome. It is not, but I love that. It's. Uh, uh, wonderful well, character, that's yeah. the word I'm looking for, that's the word I'm looking for. Well, Kamui Kobayashi, well, the, the gap actually has come back to uh, Alex Lynn a little bit, so Alex Lynn's let it bed in. It's now yeah. only 4.2 seconds from our leader, Kobayashi, to Lynn in seconds. Absolutely right, uh, and again, just, you know, it's still relatively early in the race, it's a long season ahead of him as well, so, you know, there's no point in, in extending yourself, not particularly familiar with uh, these cars, particularly in these cool conditions. So Alex didn't really, being really sensible, I think, the uh, the English driver there, to uh, just settle into a rhythm, and now running some really good lap times. We 135.00 last time around for Alex Lee, that's a really good lap. Uh, and uh, Pippa Durrani uh, has uh, all of a sudden slipped uh, a couple of three seconds behind him, but remains under pressure from Simon Pagano in that number 60 car for Maya Shank Racing. The uh, pit stop for our leader in LMP2, James Allen, the 25 year old from Perth in Australia, uh, has brought the that car Perth. in. The other Perth, yeah, the sunnier, more glamorous Perth. Um, James Allen brings that in, the number 69 G Drive machine. Driver change, I did not 
quite catch who the driver was. New set of tyres and fuel, so full service as the leader in LMP3 comes in for a little bit of uh, linearity in the, uh, well, it can only be described as a car painted like an iron brew can. It's orange and blue, comes in to hit the marks perfectly. Down to you, Shay. It looks like Michael Cooper is going to be jumping in the car now, an all-black helmet. I would assume that that would be the young American uh, getting behind the wheel. And Gar Robinson is out and hop back over to the pit wall. It is four new Michelin tires for the Riley LMP3 machine. And as soon as the fuel nozzle is detached, it will be sent out on its way. Quick update for Corvette racing fans out there from the garage, unfortunately, for the number four Corvette. They're still working on the thorough damage to the number four. The diffuser is off, the exhaust is bent, and the starter is cracked. They are working to try and pull all the broken pieces off, put new ones on, and then get that car back out to help the sister car, which is the car running for the full season championship. Remember, so the goal of Corvette racing is always one family. Might be multiple cars, but it's one goal. The four car, well, that goal is not going to be a watch at the end of the day, unfortunately. No, it's, thank you, Shay. It's such a pity for that number four crew. It seems, Jeremy, that, you know, racing is everybody gets their doses of good and bad luck, but that four car, uh, you know, whether it be uh, whoever's been in that car, they just over that last couple of years, it's, it seems that the bad luck's really followed them around somehow. It did for a while, certainly last year, it seemed. Then they came, got a bit on a bit of a roll towards the end of the mm. season. But it's, it's always, yeah, you're right, you know, it, hey, this, it's all about swingers and roundabouts, this sport. Mm. We've just seen the, uh, the, the leaders uh, in GTD Pro, the number nine car, th through the pit stop sequence, coming into the pit and also into the pits. Uh, in the lead in GTD, the number 70 McLaren, Jordan Pepper, uh, has uh, just brought that car into the that was that, that McLaren was running uh, extremely well early on, the Inception racing car. It's uh, Brendan Areeb, uh, Frederick Shandorf, who started the car, Ollie Milroy and uh, Jordan Pepper, who's driving it at the moment. That car's been con in contention all the way through this race. With the ebbs and flows you get in GTD uh, as to whether, when the bronze driver is at the wheel, uh, but uh, right behind him, uh, in the in the proceedings at the moment, having taken over, actually taken over the lead now with that pit stop, once again is the number 57 Winwood Racing Mercedes Lucas Hour at the wheel, but he's only a few seconds ahead of Scott Andrews, who's another Australian, uh, who's uh, driving now in the number 32 Gilbert Courthoff Motorsports Mercedes. So it's Mercedes 1-2 at the moment in GTD. Brilliant stuff. So we're just coming to the top of another racing hour. We are a third of the way in to the 60th running of the Rolex 24 at Daytona. Thank you so much for your company here on IMSA TV and IMSA Radio. You can find all that content on imsaradio.com. You can tweet us as well at IMSA Radio. We'd be delighted to hear your thoughts on this cracking motor race so far. It's Peter Mackay here alongside Jeremy Shaw in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre with the wonderful Shea Adam down in pit lane getting all the scoops and information for us as we reach the top of the hour. Another racing hour is about to begin. So under the cover of darkness here at Daytona International Speedway, Kamui Kobayashi leads for Ally Cadillac in the number 48 by 1.6 seconds from the now charging Alex Lynn in the 0-2 Cadillac with Pippo Durrani in hot pursuit as well. But Alex Lynn, a slightly steadier start to the stint, but really coming good uh, as the tyres come up to temperature and pressure. A very mature drive and showing Alex's absolutely world-class credentials. Now, the driver change for uh, the former leader in LMP2. James Allen brought the number 69G drive racing machine in to pit lane. And Luca Giotto, the 26-year-old uh, Italian, uh, multiple race winner in F2, GP2 and GP3 at the wheel of that machine now. So uh, expect some very red-hot lap times. But the leader in LMP2 at the moment is Luca Giotto in the number eight uh, sorry, my apologies, is Rui Pinto de Andrade uh, in that machine. 
the Angolan Portuguese. He leads by uh, at the moment, just as the timing screen flicks around. He is leading at the moment in the Tower Motorsports number eight machine. In LMP3, it's Michael Cooper in that number 74 Ranch Resort uh, LMP3 after taking over that machine from Gar Robinson. In GTD Pro, the Ferrari, the 62 Rizzi Competizione Ferrari, has reclaimed the lead after that round of pit stops, and it's come back out to almost exactly the same gap. Back to Lawrence Vantor in the KCMG Porsche, the team from Hong Kong. About five seconds the gap at the moment. Your leader in GTD, the Mercedes of Lucas Auer, the number 57. Of course, the windward Mercedes number 57 winner of this great race in the GTD category last year. Can they make it two in a row? That would be very cool indeed. But c coming back to Giuseppe Rizzi, uh, Jeremy, of course, owner of Rizzi Competizione. I remember speaking to um, Jimmy Bruni, who of course now is a Porsche factory driver, um, but formerly Ferrari factory driver, and he said Giuseppe was just a proper enthusiast when they went to race at Le Mans, when he raced for Giuseppe at Le Mans. He says Giuseppe never left the pit post. He watched the watched the race from start to finish and had a big smile on his face the whole time. That's that's a true racer. Yeah, that's Giuseppe Risi. <laughs> I've known him for uh, well many many years since. Uh, the British, the Aurora Formula One Championship in the UK, which was, yeah, quite a few years ago. Uh, great character, great, in, huge enthusiast, just loves this sport. And, you know, it's been kind of painful for him in some ways not to be regularly involved here uh, over the last few years. But great to see that car back again here. And hopefully, uh, we've had no confirmation, but we certainly hope to see that car back on a regular basis. You talked about Alex Lynn getting really in the groove again. He's narrowed that back gap to Kobe Asher to nothing now. Two tenths of a second as they cross the line. In fact, has he taken the lead, in fact? Where are those two cars on the race? I just saw as they went through the second sector, I think he might have got himself ahead. I think those are the leaders coming around the turn four banking right now. So we'll wait and see before they get into the trioval and see whether we have another new race leader. This is the fascinating thing about endurance racing, particularly a 24 hour race, when you're going through such an evolving, dynamic state of not only the track, but also the temperature. And you're absolutely spot on, yeah. Jeremy. Alex Lynn takes the lead here at Daytona in the 0 2 Cadillac, the Cadillac accessories machine. Wow. So after it looked like Kobayashi was going off into the distance. And uh, Alex Lynn says, eh, no, back you come. And uh, wow, what a what an incredible drive from Alex Lynn. Of course, he'll be doing the whole season here in the IMSA WeatherTech Championship. So if Alex Lynn is a new name to you here in the United States, get used to it because he is showing just exactly why he's been hired as part of that program. He'll be sharing with Earl Bamber, and we just we know how good he is in a prototype racing car course winner of Le Mans on two occasions outright in the Porsche 919. And looking at the GTD Pro of course is a new uh, a new initiative this year of course the old GTLM category a, th a thing of the past what a great era it was we had it here from all the way through from the beginning of the new era of IMSA in 2014 to uh, the end of last season um, but GTD Pro using the GTD base uh, of car and then filling it with the best drivers available. And we've got a Ferrari from two Porsches, from Corvette, from Mercedes, from BMW. That is my mind is a is a win at this early stage. Yeah. Not many take. I'm not surprised, Jeremy. Not many takers in the wonderful illuminated Ferris wheel. It's actually sitting perfectly still at the moment. No, nobody turning up for a ride on there. I'm not surprised with the cool temperatures we're seeing. Yeah, that'd be pretty hardy, wouldn't it? But uh, <laughs> great to see the fans here this weekend. And just got a note from uh, from Lella Sopa. Uh, British race fans or BMW fans from over the years might be familiar with that name, Sopa, Steve Sopa. Well, this is his daughter. Uh, Lella, who's visiting Daytona International Speedway for the first time. Great to hear from you, Lella. She is uh, uh, loving the light, the night time here. First time she's seen him Weather Tech Sports Car Championship race and having a great time. So welcome to Daytona International Speedway. Glad you've, ha you've, you've enjoyed the experience and uh, stick around for the end of the race because a lot of racing still to come. 
that there is, yeah, brilliant to, to hear. And of course, Soper and BMW are two, two names that are uh, kind of one in the uh, one in the same, aren't they? Uh, yeah. The man's an animal. Right? Yeah. You have to say that when you're Scottish, <laughs> when you talk about Steve Soper and a BMW. <laughs> uh, so, Alex Lynn leads the way then in the 0-2 uh, Cadillac accessories machine. So at the moment it's a Cadillac 123. First of the Acuras, eight seconds back from the lead. That's Simon Pagino at the wheel of the Meyer Shank Racing machine. Yeah. And of course, I, it's 10 right years. Right there. No problem at all. Yes, correct. Right in the game. And uh, of course, it's 10 years, Jeremy, since. Uh, Mike Shank's uh, outfit won uh, this race in the 50th anniversary yeah, of the Rolex right. 24. Yeah, hard to believe it's 10 years ago, mm. but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was the team that really put this uh, Meyer Shank race. There was a, a re, I think that was a replay of the was that the change of the lead or was, it was that live pictures? Just, it was a live picture. Okay, just diving past uh, another car going into turn one, but there's still you know there's only. Uh, less than 10 seconds covering the top uh, uh, five cars on this racetrack and Alex Pelo he's turning you know similar lap times to the other leaders as well back in that sixth position yeah Alex Pelo uh, driving the 0-1 uh, Cadillac Performance Academy machine of course uh, the winner of the 2021 IndyCar Championship and I noticed when I was doing my, my research uh, on his Instagram page, he says uh, just simply, I love Kiwis. Now, I don't know if he's referring to uh, people from New Zealand or the fruit, um, but if it's, if it's people from New Zealand, he's in a team with, uh, with Scott Dixon, who's, of course, a, a Kiwi himself. So he's in, he's in the right place. But Alex, uh, born in Barcelona, uh, wonderful city, great place to go. Uh, can recommend a MotoGP weekender uh, in Barcelona. That's well, well worth, uh, well worth a weekend away. Ryan Hardwick is back at the wheel of the number 16 Wright Motorsport Porsche. Ryan, an uh, entrepreneur, uh, in his early 20s, started up a, a motorcycle dealership, a Honda motorcycle dealership, and it has evolved into a chain of power sports uh, dealers called Mountain Motorsports and uh, Ryan actually a former national a three time national jet ski champion uh, started off racing dirt bikes then did jet skis and then it now ended up racing cars so he likes his <laughs> he likes anything with a motor anything fast and so what a really really nice uh, really really nice person very polite and uh, him and Jan Halen are going to be together for the whole IMSA WeatherTech Championship at the wheel of that right Porsche, which, of course, Jeremy, last time, although they didn't win any of the big Enduros, they won the Michelin Endurance Cup. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, there's uh, honours are nicely shared yeah. uh, on a regular basis. Is this battle is still going on, is it, between the Alex Lynn and Kumi Kobayashi? They were virtually side by side uh, on the uh, start finish line the last time around. They're separated by just a few car lengths. As they're heading around the back, he actually got a bit of a break, did Alex Lynn, I think, on that lap. But uh, there's... Uh... No, he didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> Could be three wide it was there, <laughs> uh, with a couple of GD cars in the middle and an LP2 car on the outside. Camus Kobayashi takes no prisoners going into the Le Mans chicane. Camus Kobayashi is decisive in traffic, yes. you, could, you could say that, but wonderful. This is what... Well, this is what DPI is all about. She, who's come to see you in pit lane? I've got the number 11, the formerly Win Autosport, now PR1 Matheson Motorsport LMP2 machine. We've got Josh Pearson getting out, Harry Tinknell getting back behind the wheel of this machine. But the DPIs have arrived, the 0-2 forward drop down for Cadillac Racing. Alex Lynn staying behind the wheel of this one. Also coming in was the 60 Meyer Shank Racing Acura. This is a driver change. It is Tom Blockfuss getting back behind the wheel there. That is fuel and tires. Yes, yes, and tires. Um, it's something fairly smoothly for the Cadillac Racing 02. Waiting for it to drop off the air jack now. There we go. Waiting for the fuel curve to come out. We've got movement for the back. The Allen Racing Cadillac is already moving and going to beat Alex Lynn off because he's going to fire properly. Is he going to make it out in a second? Racing Acura 2. Oh, Alex Lynn just, uh, I don't know if he was, I don't think it was a stall, but just couldn't quite get that big 0-2 Cadillac fired up, and that's given 
the lead back effectively to the 48 uh, machine, the ally Cadillac of Kamui Kobayashi, uh, and also the Acura of Simon Pagino getting by uh, Alex Lynn as well. So Alex has got the job to do, and of course, when we saw uh, in the last stint, Alex did take a few laps to get himself up to up to pace compared to Kamui, but didn't it came all the way back round again uh, in the start and straight away, straight out of the pit lane, Alex Lynn gasses it up and just blasts straight past Simon Pagino like he's standing still. Now that's something we just do not we do not see. I think Jeremy, I think you are spot on with this theory. Those Acuras are really struggling on cold tires. Yeah, that's been a uh, a. Uh a problem for for them uh, and it's even worse in cooler conditions when it's harder to build t t temperature into those tires i think it could be a long night for those acuras speaking of acuras we have another one the number 10 wayne taylor racing uh, acura uh, in for service she had fuel tires and possibly a driver change i saw the door open at the very last moment as uh, another pit stop going on for cadillac this is mustang So it was fuel and tires only. Um, but I thought I saw Tom Blomfist getting into the Acura while they were changing the, the tires. You did. Was I mistaken? No, you're not mistaken. Shay, you're never mistaken. Oh, that's no, no, no. The, that, that's <laughs> one thing we, I've come to learn. Uh, Tom Blomquist, you are absolutely correct. And you told me that. And I, I, I was listening too as well. I've just not got a very good short term memory. Tom Blomquist, of course, son of Stick Blomquist, uh, the 1984 World Rally Champion at the wheel of an Audi Quattro. So Tom out and about on in his would you believe his first Rolex 24 he was a factory BMW driver uh, in that M8 but never actually took part in the Rolex 24 Jeremy should have done should have in done. 2019 he was scheduled to drive here but unfortunately he couldn't get his visa organized oh. so I had to pass up uh, up past that opportunity that was a guy that went on to win the race so that was what uh, disappointed so finally he gets his chance uh, to come here uh, he's uh, managed by Mark Blundell these days is uh, is Tom and uh, he was Tom was given an opportunity to come over here last fall in, in October to test with Marshank Racing at uh, Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta was massively impressive a couple of weeks later he got the call to come and race here so uh, he, he said great yes please uh, so he, he wasn't really expecting to come and run race here on a regular basis this season but he's very excited to be doing so and is being a, giving a really good account of himself here uh, during this race that he is and I think the the one thing about the Meyer Shank racing outfit is that you don't you, you don't get too many kind of one and done performances with that outfit if you go to that team and you do a good job you know they they, they will they will ask you back yeah. <laughs> which is uh, which is always good Mike Shank who uh, of course leads the operation had a really a dream year last year to win the Indianapolis 500 uh, to, for Elio Castroneves to claim his fourth uh, Indy 500 title um, and to win the Rolex 24 in the same year albeit for a different team but still Elio to do that double is uh, is mighty impressive now now that the temperatures are coming up uh, Tom Blomquist is making is going absolutely side by side here down into turn one around the outside of the ally Cadillac so Kimi Kobayashi unable to hold off the charging Tom Blomquist there into turn one. So although it's a little bit tricky in those early laps for the Acuras with the colder tires, once they're up to temperature, they're off. So Tom Blomquist just right behind Ricky Taylor in the blue and black Konica Minolta Acura for Wayne Taylor Racing. Of course, races in his uh, in the fa in his father's team, but it races under a contract, a factory contract for on the performance development part of. Uh, Acura here in the United States and Ricky one of the really the best drivers in a prototype racing car in the world and I have to say his previous uh, just his uh, after that pit stop there full marks for a nice big sideways smoky burnout as well and uh, speaking to to some of the uh, engineers yesterday Jeremy they were saying that although it looks very spectacular it is important especially in those cold um, those cold temperatures to get get as, as much friction as you possibly can leaving the pit box yeah absolutely right and uh, you, you you've got to uh, 
any way you can to get heat into these tyres is, is what you've got to do, and it's it's not easy. Uh, generally speaking, though, by the end of the by the end of the first lap, the, the tyres are working pretty well. You can push pretty hard on lap two. That's certainly what we're seeing from uh, from these guys. The first sort of flying lap there for uh, Alex Lynn in car number zero two is a, a 35.6. Uh, that's only two laps into his stint. The previous one was 37. So, uh, you know, he's, he's right back on the pace now. The fastest lap of the race, a 34.0. Full tank of fuel aboard, aboard that car down in the mid-35s uh, already. Very impressive indeed. And the lead has uh, been reclaimed by the 69G drive. Orica in LMP2, Luca Giotto. Uh, at the wheel of that number 69 machine, a very striking orange and black car. Uh, one outfit that are uh, still ha hanging in the air at the moment, ninth in P2, uh, James McGuire for United Autosport. Had a difficult start to the race, had a couple of spins and things like that, but I think as long as you're within touching distance, uh, you, you, you never you never know, but there's some, oof, there's some, uh, some pretty big names in the P2 class behind the wheel at the moment. Harry Ticknell in the number 11 uh, machine. And also uh, Colton Herta as well for the 81 Dragon Speed car. Yeah, that's the car that uh, had fallen a couple of laps off the pace in LMP2. I think it's oh. still two laps down. Oops. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's, a, that's a second place car in LMP3. The core order sport car number 54. He seemed to have briefly lost power. Maybe he's fired it up again now that... Yeah, he's finally got it started again. Where is he? That's John John Bennett, the team owner of Core Autosport, the number 54. Co-driving with his long-standing co-driver, uh, Colin Brown. There's a little bit of damage to the rear of the car, the splitter Yellow. hanging off and dragging along, particularly on the, the, right, the rear right. Yeah. So Shea Adam may have... Uh, someone else to come and see her. Full course yellow. Ah, full course yellow. So there may be more to that story than it meets the eye. So full course yellow here at the Rolex 24 hour at Daytona. Uh, 15 hours and 41 minutes to go and we are under full course yellow. So this is, uh, this is interesting to see who, what kind of strategical plays will come out here in each class. So Alex Lynn is your leader at the moment in DPI for the 02 Cadillac squad. The 69G drive LMP2 of Luca Giotto leads there. P3 is the 74 Ranch Resort Ligier of Michael Cooper. In GTD Pro, it's Daniel Serra for Rizzi Competizione, number 62 Ferrari. And in GTD, it's the windward Mercedes of Lucas Auer. That's how they go into this yellow flag, uh, um, full course yellow period. But how will they emerge? We shall see. Um, and any teams that maybe have got a couple of little things to repair or to, to rectify on the cars, this is a good opportunity to do it while the field is neutralized. Now we know that uh, the, the only thing is, Jeremy, what we, sh what we did see of the 54 of John Bennett, it didn't look like him on his own would be enough to call a full course yellow. So there's got to be there has to be something else as part of that, you would imagine. But just as uh, just as we have our uh, full course yellow, it's almost as if it's been brought in on purpose. It hasn't, of course. It's part of part of the race control. But we've got a beautiful fireworks display here at the Rolex 24 at Daytona. 60 years of this wonderful race. And I tell you what, looking at the uh, the Grand Marshals, some of the names in our list of six Grand Marshals, uh, Jeremy, it was. Uh, yeah. Talk about an honour roll of, of of legends of motorsport. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, the six Grand Marshals for, for this uh, event. Uh, they're all uh, extremely accomplished. Mario Andretti, Hurley Hayward, Scott Pruitt, Jack Roush, Bobby Rahal and Wayne Taylor. What a group that is. Oh. And they've all done their own, they've all got their own specific part of the sport that they've excelled in as well. That's what I like about that group is it's a real variety uh, of disciplines as well. Well, uh, a Florida sunset and a Florida sunrise is pretty spectacular, but so is this wonderful display of fireworks. If you're watching around the circuit in the camping areas, uh, enjoying a few beverages, uh, enjoy this uh, wonderful firework 
display. Now, it will be fireworks in a moment when uh, in, when, when the pit lane opens and uh, Shea Adam will be very busy with the microphone keeping an eye on things. But Shea, the number 99 hardpoint car is coming in. Is this? Yep, it is. Yep. And uh, actually, the crew had to tell me to get out of the way because I was having a nice chat with Catherine Like, This is emergency service yep. for refueling only. Five seconds. Now that's gone. <laughs> This car will come back to visit me when the pit lane opens for real. Now, do I see with my um, slightly degrading eyes a driver preparing to get into that car, Shay? That would be a very, very much uh, helmeted and eager Catherine Leg. You are correct, Peter. She's had to wait very patiently. Uh, we've wait over eight hours into this race, and she's had to sit and, t sit and twiddle her thumbs waiting to get into that car. So uh, Catherine, of course, the most experienced driver in that, that lineup. Um, so I'm sure she'll be itching to get behind the wheel of that beautiful white, red and black uh, grid rival Team Hardpoint machine. Of course, Team Hardpoint who run, they've got a car here in the IMSA WeatherTech Championship. Also, the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup North America uh, as well, which will kick off at uh, Sebring. And uh, Jeremy, you, you uh, have the privilege of... Uh, calling the action in that in that series and I have to say I really enjoyed the racing last season with those new 992 machines yeah it was fantastic series of competition uh, in last season and um, this year is is going to be uh, arguably even better there's going to be more of the new 992 cars in action as many as 30 cars on the grid for that championship we've got both of the top two uh, contenders uh, from that Porsche career in North America last year here in the race they said Prio who has spent some time in the lead of the class currently running in uh, third position in LMP3 at the moment in car number 33 and his main rival and teammate last year Kai Van Berlo also is uh, in an LMP3 car this weekend with a with a good shot uh, of uh, of uh, of doing well and the the it was Efren Castro who won the Pro-Am class. He also is racing in LMP3, uh, making his debut. All those three making their debut in the Ips Weather Tech Sports Car Championship and the Rolex 24 at Daytona. And of course, Efren was in a, in a hard point, team hardpoint machine as well, coached by double Super Cup champion Larry Tenvorder, who uh, arguably the fastest driver in the world in that specific type uh, of car at the moment. So now the BMW Sao Paulo Yellow uh, BMW M4 has brought the pack under control. Alex Lynn at the front of the queue in the, the 02 Cadillac. So pits will be soon be open, ready for service. And uh, ah, now Shea, the number three Corvette has just come in. Is that also emergency service? I think we'll, Shea Adam will be, no doubt, will be finding out what's going on there as well. So the number three Corvette, the yellow machine, comes in to take just a quick splash of fuel. I would imagine that's emergency service as well. There's a red light at the end of pit lane. There goes the green light. So uh, the number three who's driving that at the moment, that's Antonio Garcia, the king of Spain, as often people often refer to him. One of the most quiet, understated reserve guys, but once he gets behind the wheel, he turns into uh, an absolute demon, and his record is just out of this world. A three-time winner of this race, actually won the final race uh, outright for Brumos Porsche back in 2009, and that winning car is presented in the paddock. So if you're walking around and you're just taking a little break from the action, maybe now's a good time to go and have a look while we're under full course yellow, just around the displays, just on the run up towards the International Horseshoe. There's a, a load of uh, manufacturers' displays and there is the uh, winning 2009 Brumos Porsche Daytona prototype that Antonio brought to victory in that race. So go and check it out. But three wins for Antonio and who knows, maybe a fourth later on in that yellow Corvette, of course, reigning champion in this series. And best of all, I love this, Antonio's got great taste in cars. He's got uh, a Mitsubishi Evo 6 Tommy Mackinan edition as well. So very important to get the Tommy Mackinan edition in there because that is a particularly special uh, Mitsubishi Evo 6. So a few cars taking their wave by as the safety crews go to into action. Now, Jeremy, I can't quite tell what it is that 
they are going to. We did see the number 54 car going very slowly, but I, I still haven't yet to identify what car was involved. Yeah. Or if there is another car involved, but given that the safety crews are on the way, I would assume so. Yeah, I'm not sure to be perfect. I'm just trying to look up the uh, the uh, race control channel here to see if I can find out what... It just says that your number 54 car stopped on course, and then the uh, the call for the safety car to go to, to go out on the racetrack. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what it is, uh, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me certainly if it would be... There's quite a lot of debris out on the track at the moment as well with the various incidents that have taken place. And I fancy they might take this opportunity to give the track a bit of a clean. The, uh, this uh, sixth full course caution of the day went... Oh shoot, when was it? About five minutes ago, probably, wasn't it? What was it called? We, we'd, been, we'd been back under green again for a... A reasonable run. Yeah, just over an hour it was. Oh, see, uh, an hour and twelve minutes bad. since the previous caution. Yeah, they often they often saying it. It's one of these well-worn phrases by commentators like ourselves that yellow flags breed yellow flags, or safety cars breed safety cars. But it, it, it is true when the field is bunched up, especially a, a field as tightly competitive as this, and with so many cars, we have had a few retirements. We've had three, but we started with 61 cars, so the field is still very busy indeed. And as we come now into the nighttime hours, the temperature will continue to drop, the, t the temperature will begin to drop in the track surface and getting those Michelin tires up to temperature and pressure is gonna get harder. Shay, what have you got? Core Autosport just went roaring through the trioval, so uh, not into the pit lane. They did not come in when the pits are closed, but they are back with the safety car train. Excellent stuff, well spotted, Shay. So that's good, of course, Core Autosport, um, where the, well, of course, many fans of, of IMSA will remember the Porsche factory team that raced from 2014 all the way through to 2019 in the GTLM, uh, sorry, all the way through to 2020, my apologies, in the GTLM category. And that program was run by Core Autosport. Of course, uh, John Bennett, the uh, owner of the team, a very accomplished driver, in his own right, particularly in the old IMSA prototype challenge uh, uh, class uh, when we had open top uh, prototypes. Of course, that's uh, rightly a, uh, a thing of the past now in terms of you know, safety grounds. But that was, I loved that prototype challenge class, Jeremy, when it was around. I thought it yeah, was fantastic. It was great. Yeah, it did rise to good racing. And you know, even with that stoppage there, that number 54 car has able, been able to continue in, in uh, second place. Seb Prio is now back on the lead lap in um, LMP3 as well. So we've got number 74 car leads that class, number 54 and the number 33 all on the lead lap. The number 13 car for AWA, I don't think we talked about them for, for a long, long time. They, that car is currently uh, three laps behind the other trio with the number 26 car. It seems to be it had all sorts of dramas during this day. It's on the same lap as the number 13. So that's not out of the running by any means either. That's one of the uh, Mueller Motorsports America cars, car number 26. Thanks to you all for uh, your wonderful tweets coming in to let us know and uh, uh, at Specutainment, at RSL Studio and at IMSA Radio. Now, Shay, Adam, take a deep breath because you've got some friends coming to see you. <laughs> a lot of friends. I love when this happens. Already we've got the entirety of the DPI field coming in. The 0-2 for Cadillac Racing is in the pit lane and that is Alex Lynn staying aboard fuel only. The best of the DPI cars should be the five Mustang sampling Cadillac because they were the most recent in. The second car to move was the JDC, but the first car to beat them both out was the 0-2. Nearly contact between the 0-1 Cadillac and the 48 Ally Racing Cadillac. Last car to leave its box, though. Interestingly enough, the first box on the pit lane, that Ally Cadillac. Thank you, Shay. So the DPI is all now waiting at the end of pit lane. That light is red. You do not want to go through that red light because well, where I come from in the United Kingdom, that uh, if you get caught, it's three points and a, and a juicy fine. Here, it's uh, a 60-second stop and hold penalty, so you really don't want to do that. Um, so at the moment, Alex Lynn 
waiting patiently at the end and green light. So off the off the DPI's go and back into the safety car train pit stop as well for the era motorsport number 18. Oh, well spotted, well spotted, Shay. So the th 31 Whalen, uh, 31 Whalen Engineering Cadillac is doing a brake change. Well spotted by our pit lane reporter Shay Adam. So that was people Durrani who brought that car into pit lane, and this is interesting brake change just under a third of the way into the race, Jeremy. Is that reason for concern? No, no, uh, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's it's marginal as to whether they need to change the brakes. With if they've got a full course caution, uh, they can do it uh, without losing a lap around. It takes a couple of minutes. Uh, the uh, the uh, safety car speed is around about three three and a half minutes, or a bit more than that. So there's plenty of time to get a brake change done. Now I was talking to various teams before the start of the race, uh, and they thought yeah, anything after well, any time during the race really. Uh, should be should be fine and we're now how long into the race we're nine hours and uh, eight hours and, and uh, 30 minutes into the race uh, so we're you know we're a third of the way through it and uh, I think that's uh, a good move to get that change there should be able to good uh, should be good to go from here to the end I think wow that's incredible that is absolutely extraordinary the number 31 wheel and engineering crew give yourself a big pat in the back chaps uh, and ladies, because that was so with all these leaders uh, coming changing in, a, a set of brake oh, rotors. Me. Sorry, Jeremy. I <laughs> no, seen... it's my fault. Uh, <laughs> with, with all the other leaders coming in, there, the number 10 car did not come in, but all the other ones did, uh, and that is going to give the number 10 car an opportunity to get back on the lead lap with everybody else. Because uh, when uh, the other cars pitted, the number 10 car went past, and then before we get ready for the restart. Those cars trapped between the safety car and the class leader, or in this case, the race leader, will be able to cycle on around and pick, take up positions at the back of the pack. So, yeah, Wayne Taylor racing back in the game. I mean, I remember two years ago when they won this race with their Cadillac then, of course, now in the Acura. Um, uh, well, I admit, poor old, I'm sorry, Ryan. Ryan Briscoe ran through the, the, the red light with about uh, four hours to go, having been in such a strong position, but they fought back and they still won the race. Now, GTD Pro drivers now into pit lane. She had them. I'm standing down waiting for the Lexus to come in, but I don't think the 14, to know it's not going to pit. Going to stay out and regain the lap that lost by doing the improper pass around. We do have the Aston Martin into the pit lane remaining for Hard of Racing. That is the 27. Fuel and tires going on there, and there was a driver change. I did not see who got in. Um, I would imagine it's time for Ron DeAngelis to get back in, though, to that car. The service is done, and the car is down and away. Okay, oh, it's a big slippy slidey burnout for the number 62. Rizzi Ferrari gets going again. And now the FAF Motorsport number nine Porsche gets going as well. Like, likewise, the 15 uh, WeatherTech car. Shay, what has happened to the three Corvette? Uh, not good news. The engine cover is off. They have changed the four Michelin tires. They left the right rear off while they investigate that they're in the engine compartment of this car very similar i'm um, having a bit of deja vu from when the four corvette came in a bit earlier on um we've also got the 25 no yes 25 bmw into the pits as well this is the red one there are four mechanics working around the back of this car as well i wonder if there was some contact between people as they were constantina up to try and get into the pit lane i did hear a little bit of contact but i thought that was between two gtd mercedes Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So, oh, this is something we're not used to seeing. We might sometimes might see one Corvette hitting issues, but very rarely, very rarely do we see two. They're such reliable cars. They're such a polished crew. Really, the gold standard in sports car racing, this Corvette racing crew have been competing here uh, in a top level American sports car racing since the late 1990s. In fact, their first, uh, their first race uh, as, as Corvette Racing was back here, back in 1999, with Ron Fellows, Chris Neifel, and a certain John Paul Jr., the late, great John Paul Jr. Of course, we saw the JLP 935 here uh, displayed before the race. 
Still yet to get a copy of John Paul Jr.'s book, Jeremy. Have you read it? No, I haven't. Uh, I've really. heard it's very good. I'm sure it is. Uh, yeah. Um, so, the process of the yellow, uh, full course yellow continues. And good news for Corvette fans, the number three is back on the way. So back on the move, number three, Corvette Racing GTD Pro is back moving again. But I think it is now a lap down mm -hmm. to the other contenders. Now, c c question, Jeremy, do you think that what has been learned by the problems that have hit the number four, the team car, the number four Corvette, do you think they've maybe spotted something that they can maybe preemptively change on the three car to avoid it happening again? Yeah. Oh, got Shea, Shea Adam has something on that. Shea, down to you. It's the alternator. They are going out of the pits to go back to the garage. Uh, that will be the three car back in the garage for a little while. Thank you, Shea. Thanks for getting that so quickly. So there you have it then, an alternator issue for the number three Corvette. So we expect them to come back into pit lane for more work. It is, uh, Jeremy, it was looking so promising for Corvette. They've had a, they, well, it's been looking promising from the green flag up till now. It's been a difficult preparation time in terms of pace for the Corvette outfit. But Not arguable. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, no, I, I, I take that point. But since the green flags they've, has come out, they've been really quick. Yeah. But uh, this is uh, this is not not good news for them. No, that's greatly disappointing for them for sure. Uh, there's uh, there's in some ways in some ways more complexity on the uh, GGD version of the uh, Corvette C8 are certainly in terms of what they've been used to running at least over the last few years but I'm sure they wouldn't have expected to encounter these sort of difficulties uh, before halfway through the race now with both cars uh, in the pits and uh, you know the number four car is still in the garage area and number three car is certainly going to lose one presumes several laps at best so uh, the problems for the number three car. Shea, you are more, more takers for service here. All these cars who were trying to get their lap back, uh, including that number 10, Konica Benelta yeah. Acura. That was fuel only, I think. I'm walking down to uh, find out from the crew, actually, just what the service was. But we have both of the WeatherTech racing cars in. Porsche is getting fuel and tires. The Mercedes, which is car number 97, the Porsche 79. Mercedes is fuel only, so no additional tires going on that car at the moment, which means that, well, at least initially, the Mercedes should have the advantage over the Porsche. Mercedes is cleared to leave. The Porsche is still in its pit box, and it's slightly hampered the exit of Daniel Jungdell, but he manages to get going. And the train of cars is just now moving at the pit exit, so really no harm, no foul. So unfortunately, and bad news for Corvette Racing fans, the number three yellow Corvette has now gone back behind the wall with Antonio Garcia taking it in there. Now, is, you know, just looking to see, is the, and the four car also there behind the wall, so the, the Corvette Racing Garage is going to be very, very busy uh, at the moment with that crew, the Pratt & Miller run crew, uh, working hard. Jeremy? In LMP2, uh, there are three of the, there were four cars that got the, the wave around that time. Number 52, number 29 and the number 11 all came onto pit lane just now. The number 20 car, I don't think did but uh, it's back on the lead lap as well. So we've now got the number 69 car leading uh, from the number eight car and now back on the lead lap also on number 20, 29, 52 and 11. So that's going to be quite a contest here. It's got six cars in LMP2 back on the lead lap. Now, Shea Adam is down with someone who made up one of my favourite sports car racing combinations alongside Colin McRae and Rickard Rydell in a Ferrari. He's driving an Aston Martin today, as he always does. Shea is down with Darren Turner. Darren, it's a little bit chaotic out there. Uh, talk about dealing with the traffic and the dropping conditions. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's chaotic, but it's the tyre temps that are making it really difficult for everyone, especially on the outlaps. Normally you think oh, the tyres would come in like two laps and then you can get going, but uh, with this uh, temperature that we're seeing this uh, this weekend, it's, it's more like four or five laps and uh, the outlap is a bit crazy to be, you know, there's so many little um, moments out there on that first couple of laps, but yeah, it's, um, it's a normal Daytona, just a few more cars out there and uh, the normal carnage that you get in, in the night. So 
yeah, a lot of fun, um, some frustrations, but the Aston Martin's going really well. Really pleased with how the pit stops are working out with the Heart Racing team, and um, now the, the boss man Ian James is in the car, so let's see, see what he can do over the next couple of hours. Is it a bit like driving a snowmobile out there, that you turn the steering wheel and nothing happens, and you just keep under steering straight on? I don't know, I've never been on a snowmobile, but I guess I guess uh, I need to put that on my little list of things to do in the future, but it's a bit like a shopping trolley. Um, you know, it's, it, it, even moving around, on when you get onto the banking for the first time, the car is shuddering left and right, which is a real, a really unnatural feeling because it feels like something's broken, but by the time you've done a lap, that bit goes away, but you just get the the, uh, the chatter from the, the cold tyres for the first couple of laps. Well, we'll have to get you out to Utah and fix that whole not snowmobiling thing. But the saying is two hearts are better than one. Uh, only one car left running for the heart of racing, but I see no lack of crew in here. Has everybody doubled up the effort to get the 27 to the checker? Yeah, I mean, it was a real shame for, for the 23 car to go out so early. Ross did a great job in the first stint, and Alex was going strong in the second stint. Um, and just wrong place, wrong time, and then to, to be collected, I think, by an LMP3 when he was sort of spun round. So, yeah, really uh, devastating blow for the team early in the race. But now, yeah, you're right. You know, there's a lot of personnel here. Um, everyone's on, on side to try and make sure we get the 27 to a good result. And I think we're, we're sort of running in the top eight constantly. So if we can sort of stay there through the night, see what it's like in the morning, and, uh, yeah, and I'm sure the fun will really start. Good luck and get warmed up. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you, Shay. That's Darren Turner there for the number 27 Heart of Racing, Aston Martin. I would put my mortgage on the fact that Sarah Rigby will be watching, cheering that crew on. Um, so, hello to you, Sarah, if you are. Uh, Mark Whiteleg has uh, sent us a tweet in on at Specutainment. Shout out to Ben Barnacle, who, of course, is driving the Pro Class uh, GTD Pro Lexus RCF number 14. And he says, big up North Derbyshire, back to green flag racing here at Daytona. And Alex Lynn leads the way down into turn one, but it's a very, very tight squeeze. They almost touch. Tom Vlomquist looking to go around the outside there. But Lynn says, not on your life. That was so, so tight there between the Cadillac and the Acura. As they head around the International Horseshoe and then back on the power. The field completely bunched up here. Well, almost a few stragglers at the back, um, but they will soon catch up as Alex Lynn keeping those tyres in to their operating window and Ricky Taylor in at the number 10 Acura now back on the lead lap, Jeremy. Yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, with that late pit stop there for the uh, number 31 Cadillac, they came in for a splash. Uh, and maybe to check that all was okay with the brakes there, just uh, before we went back to green, that wasn't able to, to get up to position with the other prototype car. So he's about a half a minute behind at the moment, that's Pivo Durrani. But uh, all, yes, all the seven cars back on the lead lap in DPI. I think that's going to rumble on all the way to the flag. Now, oh, if it doesn't rain, it pours. Poor old number 54, Core Auto Sport. And LMP3, of course, had a little bit of an issue earlier on with John Bennett at the wheel. They actually are classified as in the lead at the moment in LMP3, but they've been given a drive-through penalty for a pit lane speed violation. Also, penalties for running the light at pit exit. Now, this is serious, Jeremy. Carf, and this, this, is, this means a lot in GTD. Our leader in GTD, the windward Mercedes number 57, stop plus 60 seconds. Second place in GTD, the number 16 right Porsche, stop plus 60 seconds. Game changer in that class. Yeah, that's certainly uh, a, a big blow for them. Uh, 60 seconds plus a stop. It takes about 40 seconds to drive down the pit lane, uh, plus that 60 seconds. You could just about do that without losing a lap, but it's very, very close. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be very tight for for those cars. Um, well, that, that what that would mean is, after all that, uh, the number 32 Mercedes would move up into the lead. And Michael Dynan in the 96 Turner Motorsport BMW, they have, had, they have really had a rotten week and will run up to this race really struggling with the new car uh, and all, all of a sudden Turner Motorsport, that just shows you what a quality outfit they are, Jeremy. They are right in the fight in GTD. Yeah. Will that Turner, of course, true. team owner, he'll be very, very happy uh, with that one. Uh, with the 
and not running in the, the uh, traditional Turner colours, the yellow and blue, running in the white, and blue, white blue and red of Liquid Molly as the DPIs charge round the speedway down to the start-finish line. And, gee whiz, Alex Lynn in the 0-2, he is checked out. He says, see you later, chaps, I'm off. And he's being chased down now by the two Acuras. So maybe, Jeremy, after a little bit of time behind the safety car, that's enough to get the Acuras to the point where they're quick, uh, rather than starting from a complete cold start from the pits. That's a great uh, restart lap by, by Ricky Taylor. Mm. Uh, he, he, he crossed the line in sixth position at the end, of, uh, well, at, at, at the restart. He's now up into third place in at number 10, uh, Acura 4. Uh, the Konica Minolta racing team. So he has absolutely charged on that outlap and is now r placed right behind Tom Blomqvist. He knows what these Acuras look like. Ricky Taylor, he's been driving them for three years now, so uh, and he also knows how fast they are. Uh, he's got to Tom Blomqvist ahead of him and then just ahead of him, Alex Lynn. So two uh, debutants here under Rolex uh, 24 lead this race, Alex Lynn and Tom Blomqvist. Ricky Taylor is lurking there in third place. He is not as a debutant. A, no, he is not indeed <laughs> as a uh, two-time winner of this race. Fantastic stuff. Well, of course, uh, of course, uh, Jeremy, you were you were having a chat with team owner Wayne Taylor about his very exciting upcoming program with Acura. Of course, with Cadillac uh, for so long, with General Motors for so long, it was I think a surprise to a few when he uh, paired up with Acura. But what he's got ahead of him. In LMDH, very exciting indeed. Yeah, very exciting indeed. And uh, that he was telling me that uh, the um, they're going to start doing some dyno rig testing in, in April, I think, and then the first track test for that new car to come on, on stream next year will take place in, in mid-June. And then there's going to be an extensive test program to get ready for the 2023 season. Super stuff and could not happen to a nicer bunch of folks. Uh, I remember meeting uh, Krista Riley a couple of years ago uh, here at the race. He gave us a very good welcome there at that outfit. And they have just got such a good record at this race in particular. And proved that they can do it with different manufacturers as well. They've won it with Cadillac and, of course, winning it last year with the Acura DPI uh, as well. But Alex Lynn, one th gee, 134.5 on the last lap around six tenths of a second quicker than the number 60 Meyer Shank racing Acura of Tom Blomqvist with Ricky Taylor in a hot pursuit right in the draft. So after despite that two lap loss for Wayne Taylor racing after that puncture with Will Stevens on board, they've just kept their kept their cool and slowly worked their way back up into contention. LMP2, meanwhile, also a charge there. It's Dylan Murray, who is uh, at the wheel currently of the racing team Netherlands. Jumbo, car number 29. He took the restart in fourth position. He's now leading, and he's past Lucas Giotto, who's got a huge amount of experience uh, in primarily in open-wheel cars in Europe. Very talented young Italian. Uh, Scott Huffaker is running in third position in the number 52, the PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry. Behind him is Dennis Anderson in the uh, high-class racing uh, entry as well. Then John Ferrano, who's running in fifth position in car number eight, uh, and closing down on them, having made that pit stop uh, late in the sequence after getting back on the lead lap in LMP2 is car number 11, the second of the PR1 Matheson cars, Harry Ticknell at the wheel there. Sebastian Prio leads in LMP3 in the number 33 machine, so fighting back quickly after those, uh, after incurring a penalty not all that long ago. He's recovered so fast. And now, uh, as I was talking about that, the uh, the lead in LMP has, to change, has changed again. Lucas Giotto now ahead of Dylan Murray by 0 0.051 as they came through it around the tri oval to complete their 268th lap. It's tight, it's tight at the front, it's also tight at the front. In GTD Pro, Lawrence Van Tor leads for KCMG Porsche in the blue, white and black machine. 
Alonso in that pit cycle have got past the Rizzi Competizione Ferrari and lead now by 5.1 seconds. So Lawrence is in his uh, Lawrence is in excitable mood when he switch on, switches on that it, just that extra gear. My goodness me, is he a special driver? And he's uh, opening up a gap to the Rizzi Competizione Ferrari at the moment. Of course, Lawrence. The reigning GTD champion won it with uh, Zachary Robichon in the FAF Motorsport team last year, and of course, winner of the GTLM championship back in 2019 as well uh, in the, the factory uh, Porsche team. In the last year of the RSR 17, that high pitch screeching machine. But coming back to LMP3, Sebastian Prio leads by 4.2 seconds from Michael Cooper, the 33 Sean Creech Motorsport machine, and uh, he's got a he's got a quite experienced teammate, uh, Jeremy, and uh, a certain Joe Barbosa, four-time winner of this uh, yeah. of this event. Yeah, that's right. There's uh, there's plenty of talent uh, in uh, in this race, uh, that's for sure. Uh, so Luca Giotto he leads by about a tenth of a second on that last lap in the number 69 car for G-Drive Racing, uh, ahead of Dylan Murray, the youngster making his debut in the uh, LMP2 category. He drove here in LMP3 last year. Uh, talking of LMP3, Seb Prio is now leading that class since the restart. He's managed to uh, uh, it, well, he's, he's, he's take the lead after the number 54 car came onto the pit lane. So that has just uh, uh, taken another pit stop. John Bennett still at the wheel of car number 54 for Core Autosport. Seb Prio into the lead for Sean Creech Motorsports in that number 33 car, uh, ahead of Michael Cooper in number 74 uh, Riley Motorsports entry by about five seconds. So the battle rages on for the lead in GTD. Scott Andrews in the number 32 uh, Mercedes uh, holding Andrew off second. the number 70 of Jordan Pepper. That's a Gilbert Court of Motorsport uh, outfit that lead in GTD. It's been a uh, it's been a certainly a busy news week for that that outfit. They've had changes in driver lineup, but uh, the moment they lead with Jordan Pepper, the two handicap golfer, that was quite a revelation uh, when we spoke to Jules Goon on earlier on. Of course, Jordan, a former uh, Bentley factory driver, so a former Bentley boy. Did you see it as oh. also today that the uh, the M Sport guys are putting together an LMP2 program? I, that did raise my eyebrows when I read that. <laughs> I thought, wow, OK. Just shows you the, that uh, sports car racing is uh, definitely in vogue at the moment as, as well. I mean, that was a wonderful program, M Sport. The, of course, the team that run the, the, the uh, run Fords Ford in the Pillars, World Rally yeah. Championship. And, of course, winners of the Monte Carlo Rally last weekend with uh, a certain Sebastian Loeb. Jeremy? Yeah, no, I, I, the, the, there was an onboard shot there with the, the McLaren of Jordan Pepper. Uh, closing rapidly onto the tail of the Mercedes of Scott Andrews. That is, as you just talking about, the lead, battle for the lead in GTD. Uh, a little bit further back, uh, Ryan Hardwick, he's a lap down under pressure here from in the number 16 Wright Motorsports car. Not sure which car is behind it's him. It's a Porsche. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> to pick out I think it's probably not on, on the, the lead car? lap. Car. Yeah, OK, fine. Uh, which is running Turn third. Turn one incident. Oh. Okay, so we have an incident down at Oops. turn one. I think it's the Turner BMW. If my eyes don't deceive me. So there's uh, the liquid molly we car. Think yeah, that it's been quite a significant incident that uh, has hit the hit the pit. Well, hit the uh, barrier going oh, over oh, the oh. start finish line, and straight away we have a yellow flag, oh, local yellow flag for now. I would be very surprised if this isn't a full course yellow. But uh, Peter, it's been such a big incident that the. Uh, Screen tear offs are flapping in the breeze of the Liquid Molly 96 car. It's a spin turn. That car's not damaged, but it's gone sideways for a very, very long time. And fair play. Oh, have we just gone yellow? Ah, yeah, we but... had just as it pulled away. I was just about to say, well done to, to race control. Yeah, that's a dodgy oh, place there's... to be sitting at right there. But there's a, a lot of debris that we, I think will need to be cleared up just well, beyond another the car involved then? start finish well, line. He, he was dicing nah. with uh, with Ian James uh, that the, the, the pair 
uh, were pretty much together as they came across the race line. They were separated by only two tenths of a second with Ian James just ahead of Michael Dunn. I don't know whether any other cars were in that mix as well because I didn't notice it uh, offhand. But uh, so this is our seventh full course caution. So we'll, we'll uh, for those who are watching on IMSA TV, I'm sure we'll we'll get a look. I'm sure at some point, but. Uh, the, yeah, a little bit of debris to be cleared up at the tri-oval area, about 100 metres from the start-finish line, and the field come through. Need to be careful not to pick up any shards of debris. Watch for those punctures. We've seen a few it's, of them so far. It's fewer than 15 minutes since the yeah. last yes. yellow, so it'll be a short one. Yeah, in which case the, the pits will not be open. Correct. For the usual pit stop sequences. Uh, meanwhile, just uh, that uh, the number 10 car, Ricky Taylor, he'd continued that charge because a couple of laps ago, kind of while that was unfolding, he'd managed to sneak past Tom Blomquist. So that number 10 car looking for the uh, fourth win in a row for that organization, two different cars, is in second place now. Alex Lynn leads then for the number zero two car for Cadillac Racing of Chip Ganassi. In second place, Ricky Taylor for uh, Conica Minolta and Wayne Taylor. Tom Blomquist now down to third position, car number 60. Then there's number five, the number zero one, and the number 48 have a good battle amongst themselves in this caution. So it is good news for Pipo Durrani, who's out of sequence with the others, having made that late pit stop at the last caution period. So this will enable him to haul up onto the tail of those other contenders in DPI. Uh, and so. that car's gone straight behind the wall, according to share Adam just a couple of bits of housekeeping whilst we are in this full course yellow the damage on the number four Corvette we mentioned how serious that was earlier on uh, that car still behind the wall still behind the wall uh, bent and it was the starter motor uh, that was cracked. So that had been a, a, a serious shunt from behind to cause all that damage. We saw the exhaust being taken off. The goal is to get that car back out and to try and help the three in some way, shape or form. From Gradient uh, till Bechtelsheimer, P6 in GTD. And if he had managed to get his full stint in at this point, he would have completed his drive time. That might have to change. We talked in the uh, countdown, the Michelin countdown to green and our Porsche keys to the race about being flexible on your strategy. And with 15 hours, uh, a minute and 30 seconds to go, there's still plenty of time to change things around. I want to say hi to Nick Trott, who's suffering from COVID and uh, is he is listening in. Is that Nick Trott, formerly of Evo Magazine and Motorsport Magazine? Nick yes, Trott. indeed. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, it, it's well known that IMSA Racing can cure anything. Very true. Yeah, Very Th true. that statement may not have been cleared by uh, any major medical organisation, but we're claiming it anyway. I think it's, it, it's fair to say. And also, happy birthday as well uh, to uh, uh, Doyen of... Uh, motorsport in the UK uh, and that would be Sam Hignett who is uh, with a number of friends staying up late to watch this tonight I can only imagine what kind of um, state you're all in at the moment at uh, what time is it in the morning I don't even want to know in the 20 to 4 oh dear yeah, well, they were still up not very long ago when that came in uh, to at IMSA Radio. So 15 hours still to go. It's IMSA Radio live from the Daytona International Speedway on RS2 on the uh, on the uh, Sirius XM network on channel 202. And on IMSA TV, IMSA .TV and we've got uh, sound and vision linked together in perfect synchronicity uh, for those of you in territories that don't have network TV coverage, the UK, most of Europe, and also to Sky in New Zealand as well. If uh, you're watching us there, welcome along to this fantastic race so far with Jeremy Shaw, Peter Mackay, and John Hindorf in the Haggerty Global Broadcast booth. 
and Shea Adam down in the pit lane. And another hour of racing, well, behind the safety car at the moment, starts right now. It's Rob Lomas, our producer up in our London studio. Thanks to our production team in Charlotte for the pictures that are going out to the world. And of course, to our IMSA technical crew who have been such a boon to us in the last couple of years and continue to be so. Thanks, Tyler Norling and the crew. Oh, there was a little push from behind that pushed the uh, pushed the Turner BMW onto the infield grass and it was such a violent sideways movement that the uh, that the tear off strips were pulled off there's a little bit of damage on the left front of that car but Peter the, I think there was a wee bit of a push there was a little bit of a push going down into turn one it seemed that, that way to me yeah, it looked like there was contact there between the, the with the 47 uh, Chetelar Racing Ferrari, which has been, well, certainly had an eventful day, to put it one way, has been back and forth behind the wall. That's uh, Giorgio Serangiotto uh, driving that car, and yeah, just looked to have clipped the back of Michael Dynan, and uh, it's such a shame for the the Turner Racing crew because they were the Turner Motorsport crew because they were they were fighting like lions got up into the, the podium fight and uh, yeah it, that could have been a heck of a lot worse but Michael Dynan did a super job to keep that car out of the um, out of the wall because at the point where there was there appeared to have been contact that's pretty much the fastest point anywhere on the circuit where you're wanting to you're just about to hit the brakes and go from sixth gear to first or second gear and and then to all of a sudden get a shove, that's, oh, that's We're well, on the ragged edge of adhesion anyway. You're about yeah. to come down on the transition from the, the front straight. And now, listen, I know that it's not uh, necessarily the greatest banking here, but there is a transition mm. down onto the turn one apron, if you will, parallel to the pit lane exit. But you've been flat out from the exit of the Le Mans chicane on the back straight. So, you know, what's that? That's a third of a lap. It, 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 you know, it's getting on, getting on for a mile around there that you've been flat out. Uh, absolutely fl it's And it's not a slow exit now from, from the old bus stop, Shakir. Uh, and they were just about to get into the braking area. Maybe just on the braking area. It was very close to that. But fortunately, the car went left, Peter, and down onto the beautifully tended grass. Uh, on the inside, which says uh, the Great American Race on it. And if that had turned right, that would have been a different incident altogether. We saw Celine Roland after the, after the checkered flag in the Intermittent Master MX-5 race uh, getting turned up into the wall. And that was a serious uh, incident. Michael Carter went up into the wall as well, uh, a little bit further back down the straight, when he just touched a, a wet white line in the second race. So my goodness me, that could have been a very, very different accident uh, had that gone to the right and not the left. So looking at this is interesting, and this is I think this is going to be a, a, a talking point, particularly in the Michelin Endurance Cup races here in the IMSA WeatherTech Championship and especially so in this bumper field in the Rolex 24 Daytona. Lawrence Fantor here leads in the GTD Pro category. However, he has a few GTD cars in between him. Now, as far as I'm aware, they don't separate to go from GTD uh, altogether and GTD Pro altogether. He's going to have that as effectively a buffer back to uh, the 62 Rizzi Competizione Ferrari of Daniel Serra. I think that that, tra and when we get to the last couple of hours of the race, when we're sprinting to the flag, uh, that I think that, that could be a pivotal outcome, particularly in the GTD Pro uh, category. But hopefully it won't be long before we get back racing here at the 60th running of the Rolex 24 hour at Daytona. So good to have six wonderful Grand Marshals here with us earlier on. Of course, you've had a, all had success at this race, all in their own way. Mario Andretti, 
Hurley Haywood, Jack Rouse, Scott Pruitt, Wayne Taylor. Quite extraordinary bunch to have leading us into this race. And the, uh, the track crews have certainly been kept busy uh, over the last few hours with the uh, occasional interventions for full course yellows, but as always, they are so efficient with how they do things. And of course, as John mentioned, they, a short yellow. So uh, because it happened 15 minutes after the last one, we, they, we don't go through the pit sequence. So hopefully that means that we will get back racing pretty soon. Track looked relatively clear. So hopefully we'll see the lights going off on the uh, Sao Paulo yellow BMW M4 at the moment. Lights are still on at the moment, but we'll keep a close eye on that. Of course, BMW here with a wonderful collection of their uh, M machines. 50 years of BMW M, can you believe that? And uh, my favourite of the bunch, if, uh, if I could have one, is the, the Z3M, the bread van uh, that, they, <laughs> that, they, uh, that they had on show. A lovely blue one. I'm not sure exactly what the shade of blue it was, but uh, very nice indeed. And John, you've been enjoying your blast about in your uh, X4M competition. Don't forget the competition bit. The car, of course. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like Nick Damon with his TR4A IRS, because that is the important bit on the end in in fairness no it's uh it's 50 odd horse but no more than that 60 odd horsepower is the competition bit on that car and uh straight six twin turbo bmw do love a straight six don't they mm. and and i have to say i've had a couple of straight sixes down through the years mostly jaguars of course uh, they always like the straight six and you can trace that back to the mom winning cars uh, that that old straight six and uh, there's something very silky smooth about the straight six engine. A little smile from Jeremy Shaw as uh, he's a Healy Martin. With a, how, listen, we've had two years where nobody could do anything, anything. So your Healy is perfect now and ready, to, roaring to go anywhere, isn't it? Uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Not far away. It's, it's actually on the agenda for next week. So, oh really? But it's been on the agenda for last quite a few weeks. So, straight That's six, though, Jeremy. Straight six. Straight six. There's is something very, glorious. very, very glorious. lovely about the straight six. Uh, I know that you'd got a pretty close to getting back to on the road before the the, the COVID. Hit. It was on the road. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's good news. Yep. D Nick Damon's uh, TR4. A I R S is about to go for a bit of paint. He's been doing some bits and pieces, right. so he's, the Wedgwood Blue is going to be uh, going to be brought back up to full spec. The engine upgrades he, he wanted doing has been doing. Um, I've I've done absolutely nothing to my cars while I've well it paid off, except drive them actually. And in, because I've been at home more, I've probably done more driving in the classics than than usual. The problem is that my daily driver, a bit like you, Jeremy, is it, what year is what year is your 3000? Your your daily driver. You've still got the uh, you've still got the Dodge, yeah? It's 94. Yeah, it's Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi, yeah. Yeah, Mitsubishi. Sorry, yes. I, I, my, I've got a 968 Porsche, which is a nine, uh, which is a 94 uh, as well. So I, I, my yeah. daily is a bit of a classic in its own right. So the, the 993, um, I really should have had some work done whilst everything was slowing down, but we, we didn't. What I hadn't noticed was that number 81 LMP2 car, that's a Dragon Speed USA uh, entry. Uh, Colton Herter has been at that wheel, the wheel of that car lately. He's got himself back on the lead lap. I think he must have made that up, I think, on, on sheer pace. I think he must have passed the leaders. They were having that fabulous battle, number 29 and the 69, battling away for the lead. I think whole, in all of that, I think perhaps Colton Hurd has got ahead of him because that car is shown now as back on the lead lap in LMP2. So we've now got the top uh, seven cars in LMP2 on the, on the lead lap. We're going to go back to green, aren't we? So the BMW M4 pulls away and we're about to go back racing here for the 60th running of the Rolex 24 hour at Daytona. It will be Alex Lynn who leads us back to green flag running, just going straight into accelerate brake, accelerate brake, trying to generate some vital temperature for that run down to turn one. The green flag being prepared at the flag stand. Off we go. 
We're green again. And it's actually Ricky Taylor, actually, who leads us away. My apologies. So Ricky Taylor leads Tom Blomquist as Alex Lynn dives for the pit lane uh, in the 0-2 Cadillac. So a number of pit callers after that caution period. So Ricky Taylor leads away from Tom Blomquist coming around the International Horseshoe. So after being two laps behind, Wayne Taylor Racing are back in the game here at Daytona as the GT runners pile down towards the International Horseshoe now in a potpourri of colour and lights. And they all get through neat and tidy. Brilliant coexistence there. And a number of callers on pit lane, Shay. Yes, they are mostly from the LMP2 category. We've got the 20 high-class racing car in. This is a driver change as well as four tires and fuel and the 22 United Autosport car also in. That looked like there was no driver change, just fuel and tires. Bit of a slow driver change for this 20 car. As away goes Fabio Schur, I think it was Nico Mueller who got out of the car. Also into the pit lane from the LMP2 category was the 18 era motorsport car. Looked like Brian Yell's helmet behind the wheel there. The nose has come off of the United car. They are bringing a new one over the wall. So they are losing a lot of time in the duration of this stop. But I guess they're already a little bit out of the running. She is the zero two car taking a little bit longer than normal. Uh, yes, yes, it did. Um, I didn't see why they just put one tire back up over the wall and the counter was not actually going for its duration of pit stop time. But the zero two, that's the sound of it losing a lap. Oh, oh, yes, that is absolutely correct. Well spotted, Shay. So Ricky Taylor now already making his way down towards International Horseshoe and the 0-2 Cadillac making its way. So I don't think the Cadillac crew were ready for that car. They seem to be scrambling around to reach the Michelin tires and wheels. So ooh, the 0-2 car has been looking so strong over the last couple of hours has got work to do. So the 14 hours and 47 minutes to go is Ricky Taylor at the lead for Wayne Taylor Racing, Acura, Tom Blomquist behind Tristan Vautier in the number five Mustang sampling Cadillac. Of course, that's the car that Ben Keating drove so well earlier, and he's completed his uh, minimum driver time. So he has no more obligations in that car, but can obviously get in again if he wishes. And again, the number three Corvette comes back into pit lane once again. And... I think, yes, I was about to say it didn't stop in his pit box. So, oh, the woes continue for the Corvette squad. A weekend to forget here at the Rolex 24 at Daytona. Now, coming back to the restart, Alex Lynn did lead the way, but of course dived straight to pit He's lane as well. He's not supposed to be doing that. Ah, so I think, uh, so Jeremy, what's, what's going on here and what's gone wrong? Well, I think what happened there, Alex Lynn was speedy up slowing down speedy up slowing down and he kind of brake checked i think ricky taylor there uh, and i think he got hit from behind and i think there's a problem possibly a puncture on that number zero two car he brought it straight into the pit lane now whatever he was doing you could see they, they were jockeying back and forth there i think there's a bit of contact between the two of them so i'm sure race control will be looking at that one uh, you are supposed to and indeed must maintain a steady speed behind the safety car and that route continues once the safety car pulls away and then you accelerate smoothly uh, just to note on that corvette uh, i've gone back through the race control channel it was working on the car while they were being refueled on the corvette that's what uh, caused them the uh, penalty right, it's, it's quite a few laps behind now yes. so 10 yeah. 12 laps off the pace so not well, really it's relevant a bit but it's a bit uncorvette like though, Jeremy. True, if if, true. if we're, we're honest, they, they don't like that sort of thing. True that. And just to note on that uh, M Sport story that we uh, mentioned uh, earlier on, um, something we've been sitting on for a while since I. I've known Matt Wilson for a very, very long time. Matt Wilson, he's, I've known Matt Wilson since um, he was a fetus, actually. Uh, he's here this weekend as part of the Ford performance. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 announcement uh, but if you go to uh, dailysportscar.com uh, Graham I think uh, caught up with uh, with Matt earlier on they, they've been looking at 
expanding for quite a long time. They've got a test track and everything up at uh, M Sport. Very good one, actually, built by the same people who built the uh, Dubai Autodrome. And uh, I, I know that Malcolm has uh, has a couple of ideas about where he wants to be after that uh, Bentley program that they they ran so successfully. Uh, and uh, P2 uh, is a stepping stone to it, shall we say. And uh, I know Matt's been talking to Goodis, uh, so it might be worth a, a look to get some of that. I've, I've, it's the era chassis that they're going to be using uh, later on uh, this year. Well, it is a stepping stone to something else, I think it's fair to say. Fill in the blanks yourself. Yes, absolutely. I think there's enough gaps there. So a drive-through penalty for the 0-2. That is the, the Ganassi uh, run Cadillac of Alex Lynn for not maintaining pace on restart. Drive-through penalty. Shay, what have you got in this one? Yeah, I want to check with Brad Goldberg, who's actually sneakily working on that car this weekend. You might remember that name from working on the 67 Ford GT back in himself alongside Richard Westbrook and uh, Ryan Briscoe. He said that they were not ready for the pit stop. They were not expecting him to come down, but the contact between himself and Ricky Taylor caused the flat tire. So it took a little bit of extra time to try and get everything sorted and make sure that they did it properly. But he said, don't worry, we'll be back and I believe that they Lap off the pace, aren't they? They're going to have to make a drive-through penalty, which I think has just been served. Is it uh, now? And that was yeah. for not maintaining speed to go to the green flag, exactly, exactly as you described. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and you know, Jeremy, that, it's fundamental, isn't it, here? That, uh, again, we, I'm going to go back to our Porsche keys to the race. I wrote them down earlier on when we talked to them uh, about them. And these little things add up all right we've got 14 and three quarter hours to go but if you keep doing this you're going to give yourself a harder time as you come on a drive through you're not going to drop off the lead lap two drive throughs you will you run a light in the end of pit lane stop plus 60. you mess up on the weight by rules stop plus 330 yeah that's going to hurt you and yeah. at the end end of the day, these th these are the things you've got to minimise in a competitive field in every category, Jeremy. Indeed, so. Uh, and uh, the, uh, you know, 50, 60 laps ago, the number 10 car was two laps off the ultimate pace. Now it's in the lead of the race. Ricky Taylor also has just set his car's fastest lap of the race, a 134.373. That's a pretty torrid pace at this stage in the proceedings. So Ricky Taylor is clearly relishing the handling of that number 10 uh, Acura. And we're now going to Acura 1-2 at the front of the field. For most of the race, we've seen the uh, Cadillacs in control, not at the moment. Well, Ricky Taylor, the smiling assassin. <laughs> um, wonderful stuff there from him. Uh, GTD Pro Lawrence Bantor still holds the edge, but Daniel Serra uh, is just, oh, he's just hovering three and a half seconds further back. But Bantor holding the edge for now, getting word from within the paddock that people think that maybe the 62 Ferrari's got. Uh, is pretty comfortable there at the moment. It's got really good pace underneath that car. We'll shall see when it comes to the, the checkered flag in 14 hours and 40 minutes time. Uh, big thank you to our pit lane reporter, Shay Adam, always on the ball. Whatever you, you want to ask her, she's always one step ahead of you. So Shay Adam heading off for well-earned rest. She'll be doing a driver change as well over to the evergreen Andrew Marriott, who's uh, uh, ready to go, rearing to go in the pit lane to bring us f over the next few hours, which I'm sure will be a key part of the race, Jeremy. Yeah, it always this time of night is a, it's a great, uh, great part uh, of this race. In, in LMP2, Dylan Murray still leads then for Racing Team Netherlands. What a job he is doing at the wheel of uh, that number 29 car leading this race, a young uh, Georgian son of David Murray had a lot of success in all sorts of different cars over the years. Scott Huffaker in second position now in the uh, pole winning number 52 car for PR1 Matheson Motorsports and we talked, you remember a few minutes ago we talked about Harry Ticknell on a bit of a charge he's up into third place right behind his teammate in car number 11 now third and those well the top 
five cars, also including Luca Giotto in number 69 for G-Drive Racing and Colton Herta in number 81, all within six seconds of the lead in LMP2. Fantastic stuff in LMP2 at the moment, and uh, great to see racing team Nederland, of course, a team that have been in the World Endurance Championship for many years and really uh, growing their presence over here in the United States in the IMSA WeatherTech Championship. Of course, the team owner, Fritz van Aert, owner of the, uh, the uh, Jumbo or Jumbo uh, supermarket chain in uh, amongst many other businesses in the Netherlands and uh, Fritz and not over only here and uh, yes and uh, of course Fritz is uh, uh, not only has he obviously been very active himself with the team but he has backed a lot of young Dutch drivers who have all gone on to uh, to perform at the very highest level Max Verstappen being one Renes VK being another so uh, he's he's done his bit for Dutch motorsport uh, very much so and, and that, uh, that team committed to running the Michelin Endurance Cup over here this season and talking to Fritz this morning he was saying he'd love to do the whole cha the whole championship if he, if he could but his bis business commitments primarily in uh, the, in the Netherlands as you say but also expanding into the United States particularly with his La Place restaurant chain which is now growing it by leaps and bounds and opened up in Los Angeles and and uh, San Francisco and New York recently they're going to be expanding that chain rapidly in the United States he loves his racing in the States and he is so excited about this season and who knows what might, might, might happen down the road for that racing team Netherlands fantastic I, I, I think well I, I've, uh, I've done, done a lot of traveling to the Netherlands and I've had uh, more meals in La Place restaurants than I can imagine, and very, very good food, actually, I have to say. So Fritz knows his way So we have, we have a restaurant critique here of, oh, yes. of La Place, have we? Yes. Right, OK. I, I would give it... I haven't figured out what the scale will be, but, yeah, very pleasant. Very nice. And the fact Pit that the support for leaders. Sport, you've got to go for it. Sorry, Jeremy, go yeah, ahead. No, both, both the Acuras and into the pit lane now with the 288 laps completed. Yeah, who's going to be quickest on the, the pit wall here? And I'm sure Andrew Marriott will be scuttling down to see what's what with these the 81 Dragon Speed car, the 69 G Drive LMP2, and the 29 Racing Team Nederland car, which wins the race on pit road by, by a decent distance. Well, there's tyres out for the can be seen from space number 81 dragon speed car see that in fact actually i see the rocket lodge for has been put back until uh, tomorrow the number four corvette good news for fans of the corvettes the number four corvette is finally out from behind the wall as we've we, dick of we have a for that Peter. full course yellow uh we, we do. do what's going on here it, it was the 59 John Miller GTD car that had had a problem, but if, typically, of course, the moment that it got going, uh, the moment that uh, the yellows oh came no. out, he stopped, stopped going. At just at the edge of onto the entry from the infield onto the speedway. Now I don't know if John Miller has drive on that 59 McLaren oh, has he gone straight on oh, from turn one he's at turn six done. seven now oh, could have done he's out of sort of out of arms where in in the fact that he's to drive his right coming onto the speed where there Peter and he's still got lights on the number panels are flashing at the moment so that suggests to me he's trying to recycle everything yeah, I think I actually think this is a good call from race control because if the car does not seem to have drive, he's got plenty of room around there to go if he does have drive, but if he doesn't have drive, he's in a really dangerous position there as well. We've seen, of course, uh, uh, the, the thing, of course, point. what happened with, with the Jetelar Ferrari and the Turner BMW, it, 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 you know, these, it can go wrong quite quickly there at that speed. So a uh, great call from the race control uh, team there uh, as well yeah. so full course to, yellow to our left actually not the, 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 the what we should really call mission control because they've got so much going on there and they're watching so much at the moment and well and also John is that why the two accurates came onto the pit lane when they did did they anticipate that full course oh. caution possibly oh. possibly that is a good call Jeremy Shaw so another short yellow 
as it's only been moments since we went back to green. Well, yes, but this won't, because the last one was a short short yellow, this uh, one yes, won't the, the be. So uh, everybody will have an opportunity now to come onto pit lane. So Man, that was, was a great call by that two, those two Acura teams. They, uh, they, they can stay out or they might just come in and just put in a, a, you know, just a few gallons of fuel. So they are on the same uh, fuel tank level as all the other contenders. But of course, the other guys will need quite a bit more fuel. 12.11 for the last green flag sector and 12.35 for this one, almost exactly the same at the front of the field. If I can just go back to the other screen. Uh, it looks like, well, yes, you're right, Jeremy, because there's a few people who are at the front of the field who are right at the end of their stints, aren't they? Although there's been a, a wee bit of, what, five, six laps already of yellow flag so they're not in danger of running out out there but certainly they will want to come in that's going to put the conning and minolta acura and the mershank racing with kerbaga genuine acura the 10 and the 60 currently in fifth and sixth that's going to put them in a great position here yeah well yeah they'll 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 go back to the front which is where they were uh, you know when they came in to make these pit stops to uh, kind of precipitate this round of pit stop and by anticip perhaps anticipating the yellow. Uh, we'll find out, but I, I would imagine that would probably be the case. Both Corvettes now back from out the wall, from behind the wall and circulating. So although there are many laps down, the this will actually be, I know it's difficult for the team and the drivers, they come here to win and nothing else, but 14 and a half hours of track time, uh, I think is going to put the uh, they'll, they'll go around and they'll get as much information as they can. So the uh, Sao Paulo yellow BMW M4 safety car has gathered the field up once again with the number five Mustang sampling Cadillac at the front of the queue. Tristan Vautier driving that machine with his fellow Cadillac colleagues of Pipo Durrani in the 31 Whelan car, Alex Palau in the 01 uh, Cadillac um, Academy and the uh, 48 Ally Cadillac of Jose Maria Lopez. Then it's the two Acuras, Alexander Rossi and Tom Blomquist. So it's Alexander Rossi taking over from Ricky Taylor just in that little opportune uh, moment uh, as, as well. So as the con temperature continues to just gently drop, uh, this is where we're getting into really quite difficult part of the race. We're about, still about eight hours from sunrise. Uh, and I bet for the drivers that can't come, can't come quick enough. I don't know, because there are people who like driving. It's, first of all, it's not dark here. It's True. not, it's not Le Mans dark, for sure. <laughs> uh, and Le Mans wise. isn't Le Mans dark. Yeah, yes, this is, uh, we're down to something similar to what we had at Petit Le Mans, at Matul Petit Le Mans at Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta. Got Chile there uh, as well. And there are drivers who have told me at certain racetracks around the world, not to be the Nürburgring Nordschleife, they prefer driving it in the dark because it's almost like in the old days when you turned off the detail on your very clunky PC, so you could concentrate on the track on whatever sim you were driving. <laughs> you, 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 there are less distractions in the dark when it's dark, and it's not super dark here for sure, but there is something quite elegant about driving in the dark, about racing in the dark. Yeah. I like it, I do. Yeah. There is. Uh, funnily enough, you mentioned it, turning the detail off, and I, uh, I, 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 I love, um, I love uh, a, a simulator motorsport and on iRacing, but I used to actually run it on my laptop. Oh, the only thing it was, yes, you did have to turn a lot of the detail down, but it did. It, you did get, you know, for me being Scottish, I do like a deal. It did get a two, a bit of a two for one combi. It was a laptop and a waffle iron because the thing was, it was running like plastic so was just hot. melting away because it's thinking, oh, don't make me do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they, now. While we're under under the full course yellow, of course, last week uh, they had a virtual version uh, of 24 Did hours you see the numbers? record attendance. Now, new president of the FIA, Mohammed bin Salem, he's wanting to get more 
license holders, not, not necessarily big massive factory programs, more license holders mm -hmm. in motorsport, I think the, the virtual medium is a great way to do that and get people bitten totally by the agree. bug. And, and off you go. Ooh, Ooh. What a big lot oh, of my. coming into the pit lane as the pits have been open for the prototypes. There was all wasn't it? People late on the brakes. We've seen a couple of those in this year. Adam is down in, excuse Andrew. me, uh, Andrew Marion is down in the pit lane with all the prototypes towards the pitting end. Andrew, what do you have? Yeah, I'm just, uh, we're just uh, trying to seek out Ricky Taylor. Next here, I'm just uh, seeing the wheel and car there fueling up. And I'm going to get uh, around, just around the back here, and I can catch up with that, John, a, a bit closer. Looks like full service for all of those, Peter. Yes, it does indeed. Yeah, the 31 uh, Cadillac getting, uh, the wheel and car getting uh, new tyres. The 02 Cadillac as well. Uh, the, that's the Ganassi run car. New tyres and some fuel. Red light They'll at the end of pit lane. So that's the number 60 uh, Meyer Shank Racing Acura is held at the end of pit lane at the moment, just sitting there pa patiently or maybe not so patiently, <laughs> waiting to go. The red, still red, still red. Come on, he'll be, he'll be just saying, come on, come on, let's go. And in that queue, the number 96 Turner BMW is back behind oh. the wall as well as the oh. green light goes on. Okay, so here comes the number 96 Taco Machine, Turner Motorsport. This team have got such a lot of heart. Uh, Long-standing members of this paddock, and they will just carry on. And they're back going again. They've done a brake change back behind the wall. They've put a new fender on as well. So they are that uh, number 96 BMW is ready for action. So the number 10 car, Alexander Rossi, uh, has just taken the wheel of uh, that car during the uh, uh, previous stop. Yeah, so he will, he did not stop this run. The number 60 car that also came in right before the caution period, he did come in, Tom Blomquist, for a quick splash of fuel. And even though he was at the back of the pack, he's still able to leapfrog the other contenders and move up into second place. Pippo! Just out of the car, just got his crash helmet off. It's furious, it's frantic out there. I mean, it's just so close amongst the lead five or six cars. Yeah, it is, but uh, you know, that's why it, it makes it so good if you win. Very, uh, very strong field, fantastic uh, grid, and uh, it's still 14 hours to go. So for now, just hitting our marks, making sure we can get to the end. But so far, everything okay. Thank you. How was the track feeling, uh, Pippo, with it going colder? Is it, is it feeling a, li a little more slippy? Yeah, it's cold, but I mean, it's the same for everyone. Track's actually quite good right now. Car's re uh, reacting well, so uh, looking forward to coming back in a few hours. Yeah, go get some sleep. Thank you, Pippo. Just go back to that. I Sorry, Jeremy, well, Just very quickly, the, the number two, oh, zero 02 car that had been a lap down, because the number 10 car didn't come into the pit lane, mm. I think the number zero 02 was behind it, uh, so wasn't going to get its lap back, so it did come into the pits and has taken on uh, a full tank of fuel. Uh, so that number zero two car remains one lap down. And we, we talk about flexible strategy in the Porsche case, the race, Jeremy. You've got to be, it's not just your own strategy. You've got to be aware of what other people are doing so that you can react to that. GTs coming in, they'll drive past Andrew. So we'll pick these off for the most part with the binoculars. I think the uh, closest one to oh. Andrew will be the number two KCMG Porsche, but everybody coming into the pit lane, Peter. Yes, the number nine FAF Porsche as well, doing a driver change as well. Looks like the 62 Rizzi Ferrari is also uh, doing full service with a driver change as well. Uh, the WeatherTech Mercedes, I can't quite tell if it's the 15 or the 97. Uh, that's a binocular job, that one. It is but the 15. It is the 15. That's the car that Austin sundrick has been driving very well today. See, I can stand behind you and do that, which is really <laughs> quite cool. You sound more clever. In the <laughs> top end of the pit lane, TGM are getting a new set of tyres on their Porsche, as are the number 70 McLaren, the number 21. Oh, that looks like... That was fuel only, and a little bit of uh, windscreen wipe. The AMG number 32 goes out. That was 
A very quick stop. Windward out as well in the 57. No red light there, of course, for that uh, set of stops as they cycle through back out onto the track. And you'll see the guys coming out the pits on the timing screen, Peter. Yeah, the number 27, uh, Heart of Racing, Aston Martin, come in for a full service as well, uh, fuel yeah. and tyres. 96 BMW back in again. Uh, that's that's not good news. One that's of the mechanics laps, having a look underneath the BMW. Already now. It's already 10 laps off uh, off the pace with that with the spin earlier on. Uh, so all, all of the top six cars in GTD did come onto the pit lane. Uh, they came in in the order number 70, uh, 32, 57, 21, 66, and 27. We'll see how they lead. Leave also all of the the top uh, six cars in GTD Pro came in for a pit stop in the order 2, 62, 9, 15, 97 and 14 back on the lead lap. Uh, they are all on the lead lap, they all made a pit stop. The only car that didn't in a GTD Pro car is a seventh place car, which is which is Mirko Bertolotti now at the wheel number 63, uh, Lamborghini, uh, and because he stayed out, He's going to, most likely going to get his lap back uh, to the, that will make it seven cars on the lead lap in GTLM. Give you some of the driver changes. It was Tristan Nunes who jumped in to the 31. Uh, we had uh, Earl Bamber jumping in for Alex Lynn in the 02. Ferdy Habsburg is in the number eight. And Andrew is down at KCMG, the number two Porsche pit. Yeah, certainly, I'm always going to just out of the car. That was that session. It's getting colder, of course, out there, but you've still got plenty of grip. Um, to be honest, it's difficult to, to understand because it's indeed very difficult to get grip. The grip's super low. Uh, you get it, it goes. Uh, I was honestly struggling a little bit to understand it. Uh, near the end, it got better, but yeah, I mean, we can see the tire temperatures and they're not rising very high, so. It's a reasonably hard tire which we drive on, so it for sure explains why it's not easy out there. But uh, I guess it's the same uh, same for everybody. It's not going to get any better the next few hours. It's a mega battle, though, isn't it? All the way down the field, and particularly in your GTG class, it's fantastic. Well, I only saw them uh, the Ferrari, and then I didn't saw anyone anymore. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we're all trying to, to follow our strategies and. Uh, and everybody seems to like look a bit, still a bit at each other. Uh, there's still a long way to go, but uh, so far, so good for us. Long way to go. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Andrew. A couple of other driver changes. Seb Prio out of the Sean Creech Motorsport. It's Matthew Jacobson who's in there. I think I mentioned John Ferrano out of the tower car and Fernie Habsburg. Uh, in to that car. Uh, it was Bill Orblum, by the way, that took out the 96 when it uh, came uh, back from uh, behind the wall. And I think that is it. Uh, interestingly, some of the uh, GTD Pro cars coming in uh, after the lap, after the, the pit lane was opened for them. Uh, the number nine Faf car, the 62 Ferrari of Risi, the number two. Uh, Lawrence Vanter car no, back they, into the pits. No, they all came in on the same lap, John. I think, didn't they? Are, yes. they, are they not back in now? I'm, I'm just seeing it on the on the timing screen. Is the is the screen a bit slow? Is that what yeah, the problem is? I think it might be, John. Yes, they, 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 all that leading bunch of of cars that have not really left each other out of their sight. Faf, uh, KCMG, both Porsches and uh, the 62 Ferrari, they have not, they, they really have been mirroring each other all race. Okay. A, a whole range of, of course, we just heard uh, with Andrew, with uh, Lawrence Vantor there, he's handed back to Patrick Pele, who started the car and very well. Felipe Nazar is back in with the FAF machine, um, taking over from Mature Chamonix. Alessandro Pierre Guidi, uh, the world to world endurance champion, uh, is back in in third. Uh, position and uh, Dirk Mueller now at the wheel of the 15 WeatherTech Mercedes and Daniel Juncadella staying with the 97 uh, Mercedes and GTD Pro. But this is it. <laughs> GTD Pro, it's just it's like a GTLM throwback, isn't that a funny thing? <laughs> We're just seeing this constant dogfight, multi manufacturer dogfight all the way through. We're nearly 10 hours in and it rages on. 
Yeah, a couple of cars. So the number 16 Wright Motorsports Porsche and the number 42 NTE Sport Lamborghini both got a lap uh, back during that caution period uh, and are now uh, back in, in the hunt there. Looks like there might have been a long stop there for uh, Brendan Ereeb in the Inception McLaren that uh, that was leading the class prior to this pit stop. So I'm not quite sure what, what happened to that car because it was leading and it's now in eighth position and I think it's shown a lap down. I just want to develop something that we were talking about there with the, the iRacing version of this race that ran last week in. The 18... A uh, thousand. Then the 18,000 drivers involved and 22,000 members. Of course, some of them were spotting and team managing uh, for that. A huge public experience event. And, and I think of that in the same way as I think of um, how cycling is developed with uh, public participation events and whether it's Tour of Britain or parts of the Tour de France route, nobody's suggesting that they're going to take part in the elite race, but it, it gets the interest in the event. Uh, IMSA have done it with uh, Pro Series, but alongside that, of course, they've got the Public Series uh, as well. The iRacing World Series type events and the VCO promoted events are, are bringing tens of thousands of people into a motorsport forum that perhaps might not have been that interested but i guarantee you that a large percentage of those people who raced last weekend will be watching and listening this weekend they will absolutely and, and it is that that's the that's the thing there's two huge benefits here one is participating and feeling the joy of motorsport as looks like we are no, we've got a few cars, sorry, I thought we were going to agree there, but no. We've got the joy of participation in motorsport, but also, like you say, that promotion of series, because you'll have sim racers who know sim racing inside out, but they go, oh, what, what sims are? I'll go and check that out. And they realise, they switch on to what we're being treated to mm. today, and they go, oh, oh okay. it's real. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Oh, yeah, yeah that's that. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep watching that. And uh, that's what it's about. And it's that cross-pollination that's so important. I, I, I remember talking to people over here in the States when I came over at, uh, originally, and when uh, Gran Turismo, first of all, the, the, the platform, the, the console games were uh, pushing the Nürburgring. Mm. And people said to me, oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, I, I do the commentary on that. I've driven around that. It, what, you mean it's real? <laughs> that's not just some fiendish invention of somebody's <laughs> of a programmer's mind. No, it's real. And, and, you know, you only have to look at the Nürburgring 24 and the VLN, the, the, uh, the, the German... Uh, endurance series the uh, nls as it's now now called and i think it's that inclusive nature mm. that particularly with endurance racing fits fits very well and, and i'm going to say this and uh, and I'm, I'm not going to name any names but any series that isn't doing those big events I've, i think frankly is missing out and i think they're missing a, 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 an almost a free marketing trick to be quite honest quite absolutely well we're about to go back racing again alexander rossi is going to lead us into more action here at the 60th running of the rolex 24 at daytona wayne taylor racing lead here with 14 hours and 15 minutes to go it's an accurate one two as things stands but they're going to change more and more and more jeremy where are we doing through to on lead changes now because we must be well into double figures now oh yeah 22 oh. Oh, my. lead changes uh, oh so, uh, 22 lead changes 25. and we've got a big big story here the 31 whale and cadillac is off that's the only car that, of the top oh. seven that hasn't led the motor race. Six, all the other six oh. have done, and that was off in the boonies. There was a huge plume of dust as it tried to get back uh, on. That was at turn two. 
but it's back on the track and it is moving again, Peter. It is, yeah, absolutely. It look, doesn't look like there's been much, it didn't look like there was any contact or anything like that that's held the car up, so back moving again, but that will take a bit to recover from as the Acuras are already absolutely nose to tail on the banking as they head up towards the Le Mans chicane. And here comes Blomqvist, he's going to have a look on Ricky Taylor and he goes through on the brakes. What a move there from Tom Blomqvist. You do not pull one over Ricky Taylor in a hurry, but that means that Meyer Shank racing lead here at the 60th running of the Rolex 24. But right there behind it's Tristan Vautier in third in the Cadillac, stalking the two Acuras. So a wee spin by Tristan Nunes has uh, dropped him uh, a couple of places. As I say, that's the only car that has not led in the top seven. All the other six have. Now, did he jump or was he pushed? He jumped. That, there was no contact there and a fantastic piece of avoidance by Dylan Murray yeah. in the seventh position, number 29, racing team Nederland Oringa, who had to take oh. to the... Oh, now, did he run into the car in front? And, and then had to lift off, and it was that severe lift off oversteer on cold tyres. The latter, it, I think. It can happen, <laughs> can't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it did look just like a cold tyre issue there as well. And, wow, that, yeah, Tristan Nunez just catching him out there. Um, so, but lucky not to get collected. I'd say very good avoidance there from the 20, 29 Racing Team Netherland car of Dylan Murray uh, as. Blomquist is starting to chase away now as Vautier in the number five Cadillac tracing down the number 10 of Ricky Taylor. But whoa, Dylan Murray in that racing team Netherland car was the leader in LMP2, yeah. but has dropped a few spots because of that uh, little uh, off track excursion. Yeah, back to seventh place uh, yeah. uh, and the tail end of the lead lap. He was leading and down to seventh just in the, uh, in the blink of an eye there for Dylan Murray. Uh, uh, unfortunate for him just to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was taking avoiding action, I think, wasn't he? Uh, also, Tom Blomquist then has got past Alexander Rossi and into the lead of this race now again for that Meyer Shank uh, Acura team. So, DPI is chased down towards turn one again, hard on the brakes. There is just nothing to separate this group. All seven cars, sorry, all six cars on the lead lap. The seventh car is the 0 2 machine, which has had a driver change. That's the, the Ganassi uh, run Cadillac. The Cadillac accessories machine of Earl Bamber now is taken over from Alex Lynn. So Earl will be settling in to try and get that car back onto the lead lap and back in the fight. In GTD Pro, it is the KCMG Porsche. Patrick Pile, who leads by about three or four car lengths from the FAF Motorsport Porsche, just as I literally, as those words come out of my mouth, Alessandro Pierre Guidi goes past Felipe nice. Nasser with ease in that 62 Rizzi Competizione Ferrari. And Alessandro Pierre Guidi, we know how fast he is. He pulled off, for me, the move of the season at the Spa 24 hours at Blanchimo around the outside of Dries Van Tor. Uh, in the wet, um, it was an, an incredible move. So he's up to second now as well, but Patrick Pile, uh, the happiest, I think the happiest man in the paddock, he's always smiling is Patrick, and he will be keeping a close eye of that 62 car, but still GTD Pro raging on in GTD. Simon Mann leads in the number 21 AF Corsa Ferrari, leading by 1.3 seconds from Mike Skeen in the 32 oh. uh, Gilbert Mercedes. I, I know, Jeremy, you don't keep track of, uh, of all the lead change in the classes, but it seems in GTT <laughs> that everybody has led it at does. some yes. stage <laughs> yeah. at the moment. I think in G so, uh, GTD Pro, I'm not sure about, but GTD, I think I've seen every manufacturer up there and most of most of the entry at various stages and Simon Mann now uh, in the, the head of the field with the 21 which has been banged around it's been pushed down the field but it now leads from that Gilbert Cawthorff Montesport Mercedes Ben Russell Ward uh, back up to third again for Winwood Racing uh, uh, Kiffin uh, Simpson the man from the from Grand Cayman leads 
in, uh, he's in fourth rather in the 66 car. Zach Robichon for Wright Motorsports and Ian James, Hartner Racing's sole remaining Aston Martin after the demise uh, of their pro car. That car, the 27, sits in sixth position. Good to see Jaden Conright as well, Jeremy, out there yes. in the uh, NTE SSR Lamborghini Huracan. Uh, the number 42, seventh position. He's only a second away from uh, Ian James. Hang on, I've just... Yeah, looked. he's just got... His, he's just gone past him, actually. He's just, yeah, he, you know, having just got back onto the lead lap uh, uh, during that caution period for the NTE Sports team. That's a really fine effort by that little, t that little team, Paul Matters team there, uh, having switched to a Lamborghini for this season. And, yeah, and uh, very and much in the th thick of it. Yeah, and a position made up by Jaden, who's the uh, first recipient of the uh, Diversity Award from IMSA. We had him in the booth yeah. earlier in the, the weekend during the Mr. Pilot Challenge for the uh, BMW M Endurance Challenge. Uh, a very grounded young man, sensible individual, wants to make a name for himself and make a career for himself, Jeremy. And if he uh, drives like this, he, he's going to do exactly he that. He certainly is. Great opportunity, I think, for him. Well, no, no question. A great opportunity for him to win that uh, diversity scholarship program from IMSA. Uh, he's going to be... Uh, it's not a full-time program just yet, but he's certainly hoping that that's what it's going to turn into. And he's uh, teamed up right there with uh, Don Yount and uh, the other contenders in uh, that uh, number yeah. 42 car. I think this the number 54 crew, the Core Autosport LMP2 crew, will be keeping a very, very close eye on their machine because there's still sparks flying from the rear right-hand side of that car. Of course, we saw it uh, picking up damage an hour or two ago, and they just managed to avoid a, a brush with that, but uh, hopefully they'll be able to carry on. So I head down to Vassa Sullivan Racing, where Andrew can give us an update. And now, John, it's just really a shout-out for Townsend Bella, old mate, former IndyCar driver. Not only is he driving for the Vassa Sullivan team, he's also doing double duty. Plus, he's commentating as well with Lee Diffie and the gang for NBC. And I reckon that's a pretty cool deal. I wish he'd make his mind up and do one thing or the other. Come yeah. on, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? I, I want to know what his lines are for the... Uh, his racing lines are for the, the buggy drive from the grandstand here on the outside of the circuit to the infield where he's got to go and get his, le his, his leathers, that's a bike, I think. <laughs> get, his, get his, his racing overalls on. I, I, I want to know how what his shortcut is. Always amazes me there's not a bridge or a tunnel here it's a bit well, there's tunnels, tunnels. Yeah, there's tunnels yeah, not, in any, not in any place that's useful for us to use them <laughs> Jeremy yeah, to get right. to the inside and we've, we've, we've gone through one golf buggy already uh, oh yeah you've broken it that was cart breaking uh, over I, here I, oh. I, I, I did blow up the golf buggy yes um, Yes. This is the man who plays more golf than all of us put together, by the way. Yep. Bro managed to break his leg on a golf course. Yep. And he's still got the <laughs> limp to prove it. <laughs> and he's broken a golf buggy, because what? You didn't know how to use it? No, well, no, no. I think it was the golf buggy gods getting me back for all the times I've mistreated them in the, in the past. Um, less said about that. And in fairness, on, the golf buggy here. providers here were really quick at getting you oh. a new one, but they give you an absolute... Well, slow one, uh, well, just, to, just to prove to you that you can't abuse the equipment. Well, I, I feel like it's like no, you're not, you're not going to run an LMP2. You're going to, you're going to start, <laughs> it, you're going to start in Master Cup, and you're going to work your way up, and you're going to learn your craft properly. Um, that was no, uh, you're not getting new tyres either, by the way. No, 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 no. You'll learn how to drive on the old ones. Yes. Well, I have to say a big shout out to uh, to Dave, who came to my rescue very quickly and uh, brought me a, a, a shiny new golf buggy and took away my poor broken down one. So thank you, Dave, if you're listening around the circuit. Very much appreciated. It was incredibly quick. Number two, KCMG Porsche. What a great run this has been for this squad from Hong Kong. They've put a huge amount of, uh, of preparation in for this race. They've actually rented a shop on the other side of the, the airport to prepare. They brought the car out before Christmas and the team have worked there. They've worked so hard to get this car ready and they're 
well, the, the results are, are we're seeing right now. They lead the class. Yeah, and uh, fastest qualifier as well was Alessandro Imperatore in that car. The team uh, is uh, is. Uh, owned in Hong Kong, based at Nürburgring, or just down the road from the Nürburgring in, uh, in, uh, in Germany. And this is their first overseas foray for that, this particular part of the, of the organization. They also run cars in Super Formula in Japan, and you name it, they, they seem to run it. Mm. Uh, but very ambitious is the KCFG yeah, team. Totally Paul Lip is the team principal there from Hong Kong, and great to see that team here are doing just a fabulous job. I mean, the, the interesting thing, thing is with that team for me, uh, the, the biggest drama this week so far, uh, talking about house the other day, was that they didn't have enough warm clothing. They weren't expecting uh, Daytona International Speedway to resemble the Nürburgring in terms of its weather. So we sent out an expeditionary force a couple of days ago to get some Nürburgring-type clothing, i.e. warm. Well, if you haven't got any warm clothing, just bring ordinary clothing and stick it in the oven. That's it. <laughs> or, or, or put lots of it on at once. That, uh, I think that was a goon show uh, yeah. gag, actually, <laughs> rather than a Barry Cryer ga gag, who sadly uh, died this week. Big part of my radio listing. Sorry, I haven't a clue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Classic British radio commentary. Uh, Dwight Merriman has jumped into the era number 18 to replace Kyle Tilley. And Guy Smith, 2003 Le Mans winner with Bentley, has replaced Will Owen in the United Autosports number 22. New best LMP3 time, and that's, I think, the second lap running for Malty Jakobsen, Jeremy, in that number 33. The Sean Creech Motorsport, 142.808 and then 142.779. So it's a good time to be setting times at the moment, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And uh, yeah, that uh, team has had a really good run. The uh, separate Prio showed some good uh, pace yeah. uh, a, a while ago. Now the, the young Dane uh, doing the same at the wheel of that car. I think that is that the fastest lap of the race in LMP3. I have to do some digging. Was that to my chart here? Uh, yes, it is. 142.779 is the fastest LMP3 of the race. In fact, he's two. His last two, 42.8 was the fastest, and he's just gone a, a tenth or so quicker, half a tenth quicker. 142.779. Yeah. So How does that compa compare with... Uh, oh, oh, yes, we did have LMP3 here last yeah. year, didn't we? Yeah, the fastest, the, the lap record from last year was a 43.3, 43.389. Right, What's he done? 42.779. Half, so yeah, yeah. half a second. Half a second. 43.389 for uh, Lawrence Hoare in the uh, Mulner. Uh, oops, there's a problem for the BMW number 25. Yeah, that's well, that's, that's the one the much delayed. Yeah. Well, they're well, not quite as delayed as the 24. Sadly, it's, it's been a, de who's had a worse day um, for the Eight, eighth position in GTD. Pro, I, I'm, I'm intrigued um, at the issues that we've had for GTD Pro versions of cars that have been run by standard GTD teams. Uh, does that just mean the drivers are pushing them too hard and breaking them? Uh, uh, possibly, but I think it's maybe more a matter of consequence. I think. Uh, you know, the, in GTD at the moment, the, the, the there is seven GTD cars before you get to the, the first GTD. Sorry, I'll start again. There's seven GTD Pro cars before you get to the GTD leader. So I, I, I think it's uh, um, I think it's more co coincidence than, than anything else. But uh, I, I think we've got a great balance. I really do. Uh, of manufacturers in both GTD Pro and GTD. Really it's not been a, 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 that issue at the turn at the, at the Le Mans chicane started at turn five. So I think Conor de Filippi has come round and I'm betting he'll come into the pits. Yes, he is in the pits now because he was off course at the Western Horseshoe. And I think he just deliberately missed the chicane in order to stay out of people's way. They've gone straight to the right front again. I think that's the second time, maybe the third time that they've had an issue with uh, the right front. And what are they going to do just right side tyres? I don't know, they're going to do a full four tyre stop here. They just hadn't got the tyres out. So maybe, well, they're brand new. Stick the tyres down there, Peter. And they're having a look at the rear wing. 
rear wing angle was changed for them, Jeremy, wasn't it? It was flattened out. Um, for well, the minimum uh, yeah. angle, yeah. yeah. They can run more angle, of course, if they want to. Right, OK. The, uh, at the moment, the mechanics are clearing out quite a lot of debris at the front of the, the grille of the BMW M4, the very distinctive grille of the BMW M4, and the mechanics launching it over the, <laughs> over the pit wall uh, to uh, a, a reliable is team member Mr. who's there waiting to catch it. Is that Mr. Peter Mackay of the diplomatic service? Yes, right. it does. OK, yeah. thank you. Just yeah, the, the, the battling LMP2 is absolutely epic at the moment. The number 20 cars, Fabio Shearer, uh, the high class race is now into the lead of that class from Luca Giotto. They seem to be changing regularly, these guys. The uh, all of a sudden number 29 car that was leading, very impressive for Dylan Murray, is down to sixth position. Um, lost a little bit of ground, uh, quite sure how. Seven, 79, Jeremy, the Matteo Caroli WeatherTech Racing Porsche passing under a yellow gets a drive through for that he'll have to come in and andrew is down at the 44 magnus racing pit yeah you know john this team uh, are a bunch of jokers really i think led by john potter in the are nicest they, possible way yeah they always come up with some different posters and, and clever videos and the latest one is called magnus racing and the holy rolex and it's the most wonderful uh, poster including of course a Aston Martin now for that team who's on Porsches in the past and that will mean it's also just uh, walking more or less the uh, length of the pits um, there's not a driver to be found John they've all disappeared I, I rushed up to try and get hold of Seb Prio uh, and he'd only been out of the car about three minutes and he's gone and uh, also I said uh, I had a first here when I saw that hot dog machine I have never seen so many blankets in a pit lane in my life. Nearly everybody's got blankets. I think my first, thank you, Andrew. I think my first trip here, um, long, be yeah, long before we covered it, uh, Dario Franchitti was driving, and I was in the back of, of the garage, and I was spoken to from what appeared to be a pile of coats. <laughs> And, and under the pile of coats was Ashley, uh, Ashley Stewart, his, uh, his then wife. She said, I could hear, hello, John. And I'm thinking, where's that coming from? And she was literally covered <laughs> in, a, in a pile of coats, like everybody had gone to a party and just dumped the coats. It was pretty chilly th that year, I seem to remember. We're down to four degrees Celsius in the air. That's eight degrees uh, in, on the track. Uh, at the moment and uh, as far as what that is in Fahrenheit uh, I've got that somewhere standby caller there we are uh, it is a chilly 46 Fahrenheit on the track and 39 in the air Pete has just gone yeah. Oosh. Oh, it's not very in nice. the ambient was what, John? Uh, um, ambient uh, in the air is uh, 39 or 4 degrees Celsius. It's lovely, man. Get out there in your shorts. <clears throat> or maybe not. Good to see Ferdy Habsberg uh, at the wheel of the number eight tower motorsport machine. Good course, season for him last year, oh, wasn't it? Fantastic. With WRT. Yeah, yeah, winning Le Mans. Uh, and uh, we, we had, I remember we had this discussion on our Le Mans broadcast. Uh, uh, driver, drivers from nobility who have won Le Mans, of course, Johnny Dumfries was one. Uh, Husch von Hanstein was another. Um, Good answer. Uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, I knew Andrew would have an answer. The good Baron. The, uh, just uh, looking at the time in, in GTG Pro, we talked about number two car leading. That was Patrick Peter. Was that Patrick Peter at the time? Yeah, okay. He's been overtaken now by Al Alessandro Piagidi in the recent Cup of the Sierra Ferrari. So it's number 62 car that leads in GTD Pro at the moment by about four seconds. It's about the biggest margin everybody's had for a long, long time in that class. Now over Patrick Pile in number two car. Number nine, Porsche of Philippe Nasser, who's clearly getting a handle on these GTD cars these days, uh, is in the third position ahead 
Alpine, not very much over Dirk Müller and Daniel Junkadele in the two Mercedes cars, number 15 and 97. Both of those two run by the Proton WeatherTech team. We've managed to go through another race out by five minutes. We're under 14 hours. It's RS2, IMSA Radio, live from trackside. Uh, Sirius XM 2 or 2 if you are so equipped in North America. No breaks through to the end of the race. If you're in a territory that doesn't have a network TV deal, then you can also pick up live video, the international TV feed with the trackside commentary from us here at IMSA Radio on imsaradio.com or on imsa.com. TV. Thanks for your company and another race hour, well, frankly, has already started. The sights and sounds of race cars in nighttime running. I always find, Peter, intriguing. I think it was Ian McCarthy who explained to me why race cars sound different at night. I'd always thought they did, and he explained to me about the density of air, which is why why they do. Yeah, I think maybe you've got, what is it, the magician's best trick is an impressionable audience. Maybe when you've got a bunch of sleepy, slightly inebriated race truck race fans the cars sound fantastic then possibly but uh, maybe tired commentators as well has a similar similar effect i'm not sure but uh, absolutely no i think uh, it, it it's uh, it is wonderful when you uh, stand at the side of the track it's one of the best things in the world three o'clock in the morning stand at the side of the track and you watch this battle raging on as hard as it would do uh, in uh, in the daylight as well now i'm pleased to say i've uh, opened up my can of uh, scottish go faster and juice the iron brew has been opened so was I've it you that, pr that provided the uh, the iron brew for ryan dl was yes. it yeah i yes. thought it would be yes ah. i liked i liked um, kyle tilly's idea of how they would split the can and mix it I did a whole, I did a whole, I, I did a whole uh, sampling campaign in Edinburgh and across Scotland about uh, Iron Brew with uh, with various whiskies oh when, I, when I was working working up there. Just had an off, by the way, for the number 18. They've had an eventful race already, haven't they? That's the uh, Era Motorsport car. That was at the the west end of the infield at the Horseshoe there it has continued so hopefully i say no harm no foul in the wider sense of that uh, not seeing any reports of damage uh, for that car yeah when you you have to see you have to give a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of respect to to dwight merriman of course had a pretty big shunt uh, earlier on in the race, quite early in the race actually, yeah. but, but luckily six. the damage was repairable and unluckily it took a long time to get the car back and get back going again, but it's very easy uh, when you have a big shunt to just think, no, uh, that's enough for today, but Dwight's just got back up on the horse, he's got back behind the, the wheel and clicking in lots of laps and that's exactly what to do and, and good for him. To take uh, another report from the pit lane, Andrew Marriott is down there. Yeah, expecting the 81 Dragon Speed car to come in any moment. And uh, John, just to finish off on the uh, royalty or, or that story, um, if the Austro-Hungarian Empire had come out there 200 years ago, uh, Ferdinand would have been an Archduke. That would have been his title, the Archduke. And uh, I believe he's still known as a, you know, an honorary Archduke. He's a great guy, actually, because he's related by marriage to an old friend, Jamie Campbell Walter. I think J Jamie Campbell Walter is his manager, isn't he? I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, as well, looks after with uh, I think it's Bullet Sport Management is the name of the uh, uh, the company. So in good hands there is is Ferdy, and he's driving very well. He also has a, a fantastic charity uh, initiative called now. Oh, I've done out that just as it's just escaped me uh, as as well. It's effectively to have a positive ecological impact of racing. So they put money back into rainforest in Ecuador. Um, so so we have a problem for the 81. Uh, That's now that the is Dragon the Dragon Space Speed car. car. Devlin De Francesco has brought that car behind the wheel. They put fuel in it. The car yes. is taking the driver tried to leave the pits while the fuel hose was still in. It very quickly reacted and stopped the car again, but it's all a bit of a drama down at Dragon Speed. No fresh tyres on that. We've got the 96. 
Felix uh, Turner BMW which has just overshot its marks here and uh, now it's being pushed back. So uh, continuing dramas for well, basically all the BMWs, I think. Uh, yeah, it's been a difficult day for the Munich factory. Um, and of course, the, the Turner outfit is so loyal to the, to the BMW factory. The, uh, it's drive fast, act faster. That's it, yes. Carbon neutral racing. Uh, when he was racing with the, uh, the Coxes at Algar Pro, they did an awful lot, they, including um, uh, special fibres in their team kit. They took smaller trucks and fewer of them around Europe uh, and the Rainforest Initiative. And he's carrying that on. Uh, through his uh, his new teams, uh, so it's uh, drive fast, act faster, and with the advent, of course, in the WEC uh, this coming season, 2022, of uh, fuel from Total, which is uh, not from uh, oil and hydrocarbons, it's actually made from the waste from wine production somebody said it's wine waste and I said I don't waste any wine <laughs> no never no. Uh, Tim Gray on Midway so, Motorsport said hang on a minute is that like that is that like the woman who at the end of the party goes around all the bloke and tips everything into their glass is that what you're talking mind about sweeper. Apparent, apparently not it's uh, it's actually the waste from pressing the wine in the pit lane now Peter yeah, Alexander Rossi staying aboard the number 10 Wayne Taylor Racing Acura, uh, and they're getting uh, they're getting a fat bit of fuel. And John, you you got a chance to chat to the Wayne Taylor Racing guys a couple of nights ago. Yeah, at the uh, the preview over at uh, One Day Tour, they're just checking the front end of that car. They do the Acuras do like to be right on the rev limiter before mm. they drop the clutch. It's it's not a, a question of building the revs up there. They are on the rev limiter. It's popping and banging like a WRC car before mm. <laughs> three, two, one, go, uh, and then they're straight on the rev limiter as if they're worried about whether it it will stall. Good pit stop though from Wayne Taylor Racing. Meantime, Andrew has got a victim for an interview down in the pit lane. Yeah, I got a victory. He's won Formula 2 races quite recently, uh, Luca Giotto. Luca, oh, I think of you more as a Formula 2 racer. How are you enjoying uh, racing sports cars at Daytona? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great, uh, of course, it's a new thing for me, but uh, so far I'm enjoying it. Uh, I just had my first stint and uh, driving in the night is incredible. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, it's a great race, There's still a long way to go, but uh, yeah, finger crossed, everything will go to plan. Yeah, you're in uh, one of the G-Drive uh, cars, of course, and uh, a big battle going on in LMP2 car. I think you, you, you were leading it for a while. Yeah, we were leading uh, after the, the last restart, and then I got a bit of... Uh, let's say I was not in the right place with the slower cars, and uh, the car behind just... Uh, came back and uh, overtook us, but uh, I mean, we were still there, pace was good, so yeah, we'll see. Are you staying with this team for the season, Luca? Yeah, that's the goal, that's the goal. Thanks very much. Uh, and the pit stop for Alexander Rossi included tear off some of the headlights there, Peter. Yeah, it was. I actually thought it was a little bit of a NASCAR trick with the, the strips at the front of the car, but no, that's it. Just uh, every little detail thought of at Wayne Taylor Racing. Interestingly, Alexander Rossi's first part of his outlap, try basically turning into the International Horseshoe, which is the first kind of major corner you come to. Well, it is the first corner you come to when you come out of the pits. And it was almost like the bit we've all had that experience when you go to turn into a corner on ice and the car just goes straight forward even though your your hands are completely crossed over that was effectively what it looked like there for alexander rossi so the and this is we're not into the coldest part of the night yet that's very true it's not going to be the, the coldest part i think it's about sort of six or seven in the morning which is kind of surprising a little bit but you know the, the in these cold temperatures 
uh, when the drivers leave the pit lane, they have got to be really careful uh, as we, number five cars just come out of the pits uh, not to overuse those tyres or Tristan abuse Vautier. those tyres until they're fully up to temperature, which is exactly what Tristan Vautier has done there by sliding off the road in car number five. On my right, you see Jeremy the Tom Blomqvist in the lead of the race for Mayor Shank Racing should be in this yeah. time or next time, yeah? Yeah. OK, well, it's fine. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of warning going to the other teams because Tristan Bote, he's on. it's like he's on ice there. He's done uh, a really good job on and off the brakes. No ABS, but he's, he's effectively making ABS. It's a, it's a, 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 a braking technique called cadence braking, cadence steer as well. On and off the brake pedal, and you're feeling for when the tyres lock, then come straight off, lock, then come straight off. You can do that with steering as well, put a bit of lock on, oh, I'm getting understeer, push, straighten up and go again. Normally, as you say, Peter, in ice and snow driving, but that's how cold it is uh, at the moment for the guys out there. No tyres, no tyre warmers allowed. Did they have a bit of trouble getting the windscreen? A film off that as they were filming, as they were filling with film. Not sure. Maybe. Uh, maybe they just left it, but yeah, it basically it shows that the, I mean, the Michelin tyre is just a fantastic tyre, all the drivers and teams say so, but we are really put, and actually for Michelin though, <laughs> this tyre is being put into the absolute extreme uh, of, of capability, and that's really uh, a, a big part of, of why a tyre manufacturer will be involved in motorsport, to really test the limits of what a tyre can do. In fact, I've actually just put some new Michelin tyres on our, our little Skoda Fabia, Jeff at home and that they're a winter tire but can perform in the summer so the window of what a tire oh, can oh, do is that cross climate yes, yes oh, it is. cross climate and cross brilliant. climate plus are brilliant yeah alpine are the ones for full snow but cross climate and cross climate plus are absolutely phenomenal i've got cross climate plus plus on our uh, ibiza station wagon uh, quick pit stop full service for mayor shank racing Number 60, uh, that was brought in by Tom Blomqvist. He gives up the lead to Alex Palau. And in the pit lane, John Doonan doing some VIP pit tours at the moment. And Andrew Marriott is stopping him doing his work. Andrew. Well, John was just striding down the pit, so I thought we'd have a quick word with John. Interviewed you so many times when you were at Master, John. But um, you're right in the middle of this, I mean, you're not going to bed. Yeah, Andrew, it's uh, amazing to see what we saw this afternoon with such a massive crowd here for the 60th running of this great Rolex 24. Uh, huge field. Uh, amazing that we had 61 cars take the green flag and darn near all of them still running. The racing and the quality of driving so far has been just tremendous. I think it's a testament to all the teams and drivers up and down the uh, pit lane here and Darn near uh, half, well, well over halfway to go yet. So really excited about the momentum for our sport uh, of endurance sports car racing and can't wait to see what the, uh, the finish looks like in the morning. Yeah, it's just a fantastic competition, isn't it? All the way down the different classes, terrific stuff. Yeah, I think uh, we were super excited about the potential of this GTD Pro and GTD format. It's proven out in the car count and I think Given the fact that the same balance of performance, the same tire uh, across both classes, um, it's proven uh, to make those restarts uh, pretty exciting, huh? Thanks very much, John. Uh, he's, he's off doing more of the VIP stuff. Yeah, actually running pit tours in the uh, late evening hours coming up to the witching hour and we'll head into Sunday morning in well, actually, right now. Uh, so we there's one of our Porsche keys to the races, the, the key points in terms of breaking this race up into manageable chunks. You get to the dark, you get to midnight, you get to dawn, you get to noon, and then it's the run to the finish. When are the next Michelin Endurance Championship, uh, Endurance Cup points uh, awarded, Jeremy? Uh, halfway. Right, OK. So we've got an hour and 40 minutes for halfway, and then it's at 18 hours as well. 
Yes. Yeah, OK. So we've got a qualifying race to go. A sprint to the next round of points for the Michelin. It's a good way to look at it, Pete. Insurance cup. No, that's uh, a good way to look at it, yeah. because, that, you know, that's if that's if that's what you're going for this year, that's what your tactics have to be, isn't it? Well, look at the, the last year's Michelin Endurance Cup champions in the GTD category, the 16 car, Wright Motorsports Porsche. They didn't win any of the big endurance races, but they scored the points when they need to, and they, and they won the championship for, yeah. the, for the endurance races as well. A big lockup for the 68, I think. Uh, I'll go a pro Algarve. racing J drive car. Yes. Um, into that one as the 0-1. Uh, Cadillac of Alex Palau sleeps by as the very hard-working Corvette racing mechanics under the blankets just catching a bit of shut-eye because they've been worked very hard to get those two cars running again and they've got their cosy overalls on. It was Ed Doing Jones. Doing a great job, boys. Ed Jones, by the way, in that number 68 J-Drive car. Andrew is picking off the drivers as they get out of the car before they disappear we've got a small window for this because of the weather andrew is with jose maria lopez i've got got lopez here with me uh, just a, a quick coffee is needed i think after that um i was very happy with my three seats um yeah always hard but yeah um i managed to just stay there in contact i felt comfortable uh, and the good thing is that the car went back just to pace uh, we we had a contact this afternoon and uh, we damaged a lot of the floor so that took us uh, a few seats to get it back uh, finally yeah we managed to change the front end and the rear end and, and now the car is good so yeah it, it's a long way we still have to to deal with everything of course you're a world champion with toyota uh, how does this compare with the WEC event? Uh, it's longer anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's a long night, uh, different car, but I really enjoy it. Uh, I missed uh, a little bit this racing, you know. Uh, it feels like a flat out race all the time, fighting with other cars, which, you know, we still don't have, unfortunately, on the World Championship. But, you know, hopefully next year and this year we will have some manufacturers coming as well and you guys also join in with some cars and uh, I think the World Championship is going to get very excited. Uh, you've just opened uh, a very special tin of something. He's making a very special drink for himself. What's in that? Uh, just a recovery drink. <laughs> yeah. Just a reco yeah. special recovery drink. Oh, I thought he'd have, uh, I thought he'd have some special Argentine mate tea or something. No, no. That's a normal recovery, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Peter Mackay stepping out for some well-earned rest in his uh, he does love a nice SUV does Peter so he's down to his uh, his forerunner uh, which is a four sleeper tonight he's uh, flattened all the all the seats in that one been a nice run this Jeremy in yes. terms of uh, what we're seeing I know we've had a, a rather more yellows than uh, you and I would like to see we like long green flag we've had a, a few of them what uh, 52 laps under yellow uh, eight yellows for over three hours already but it in some ways because of when they've fallen almost doesn't seem to have affected the race too badly three hours yeah, apparently let me just uh, no. check that again or maybe I was reading the wrong line uh, three hours and five minutes, apparently, for the eight. Uh, for the eight. So 21 minutes, 32 minutes, followed rather rapidly by 24 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, 27 minutes, 25 minutes, 16 minutes, and 21 minutes. So there you go. Doesn't it, I know what you mean? And I, and I did this. It doesn't seem like that, and it doesn't really affect the the race too much. It sort of came from in many cases at the end of stints or near the end of stints for people. I was that uh, long one for the big clear up. But what it's done is it's got most of the lead cars in the classes on similar stints and fuel mileage at the moment. At Nimsa Radio, by the way, if you want to get 
uh, to us here in the Haggerty Global Broadcast booth with 13 and a half hours to go. With that uh, pit stop sequence uh, just completed now a couple of laps ago, we've had our 26th lead change, I reckon. Uh, Alexander Rossi back into the lead of the race for the Konica Minolta Acura team. Alex Palo, the reigning NTT IndyCar champion at the wheel now of the second place car, the Cadillac of Cadillac Racing and Chip Ganassi's team, splitting the two Acuras because number 60 car of Elio Castroneves, last year's Indianapolis 500 champion, is in third That's place. That's very cool, isn't it? Yeah. You've got a, you know, a seven, uh, seven championship winning cup driver in this. You've got the IndyCar field, which is deep, and Alexander Rossi as well, obviously not a champion. That's something I know that he wants to, to put right. You've got world champions from the World in, uh, FIA World Endurance Championship, Le Mans winners in class, and overall, yeah. this is, I mean, by any by any criteria, this is a solid, solid field. It, yeah, it's it's it is fantastic. And in to, every to car, have, the drivers are so yeah, good. To, to, yeah, to have uh, those, those two uh, champions at the front, well, you know, Rossi, Polo, and uh, Castro Nevers, all IndyCar champions. Well, no, Rossi hasn't, of course, yet, but the Indy 500 winner he is. Uh, and, of course, uh, Elio Castro Nevers last year won both this race uh, and the Indy 500. And he's now tried to win this race for Maya Shank, having been part of the winning team last year for the Conic and Minolta Acura team. The, the way that uh, this race is panning out, I think we're going to be on the edge of our seats for quite some time. In LMP2, it's high-class racing with Fabio Scherer ahead of Ferdinand Habsburg for Tower Motorsport. They're separated by under 20 seconds. LMP3, Matthew Jacobson for so Sean Creech Motorsport has spout again 30 seconds on Michael Cooper for Riley Motorsport. Number 74 car to the orange and blue car. Last Kern right up there as well in fourth position in the Duke Inn. Just a lap off the lead, unfortunately, for him. GTD Pro, Alessandro Pegidi for Risi. How good is it to see Giuseppe Reese's Ferrari 488 GT3, the Ferrari of Houston car, leading the category from Felipe Naza for FAF Motorsport at, uh, what, 20... No, 10 and a half seconds, and then five seconds further back, KCMG. Good run for them in their first outing here at Daytona in the Porsche. That's... Uh, break off from our rundown. I'll just tell you Nicholas Nielsen is uh, leading GTD for EF Corsa by about eight seconds from the Mercedes of Gilbert Cothoff Motorsport and Mike Skeen. But Andrew's got Tom Blomqvist just out of his racing car, Andrew. Just out of the 60, uh, Mayor Shank car, yes. Uh, found a very good run. It's so tight, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, it's, it's crazy tight out there. Um... You know, the way the yellow's falling and the start of racing, I mean, you're, you're literally nose to tail from start to finish. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not really used to that style of racing. So it's, it's definitely taking a, getting a bit of used to, but uh, I'm having so much fun. You know, the car's, car's not bad, car's quick. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other quick cars out there. You know, the whole DPI class is so close. Everyone's top level drivers and top teams, so. The competition is seriously fierce, so we just have to bring our A-game um, and, and make sure we make no mistakes. There's still a long, long way to go, and anything can happen. Thanks very much. I think it's an accident, so uh, yeah, I'll have to leave it and catch up with you later. High class racing at turn one, and that's a big damage accident. All of the rear end of that car, and it's been one of the stars of the show, really, the red, white, and black machine. They've had issues in the latter part of the race but it's rear suspension damage rear bodywork damage uh, and that car which uh, had been leading lmp2 fabio shera high class racing safety car is scrambled uh, and it's a puncture to the left rear of that car shera whilst in the lead of the race he's trying to get back he's in front of the safety car here so where was 
Scott Huffaker for PR1 Matheson was 10 seconds behind. Now, he's in front of the safety car and he'd hit the wall pretty hard at turn one. There's a set of tires that are placed specifically to try and stop cars going all the way through turn one to turn six and they beef that up in the race. Uh, left front puncture, right rear puncture, bodywork off, throwing all kinds of rubbish onto the circuit. He's gone up onto the high banks at turn seven, which I'm not sure was a good idea. Get it on the apron, that's what he's done now. But this has thrown that category, LMP2, Jeremy, wide open again. Uh, Ferdinand has gone through, Ferdy has gone through and now leads the race. And Scott Huffaker is going to go through. No, it's Devin Di Francesco who's gone through in second. And it'll be Scott Huffaker in third. So Shera has already dropped from the lead to fourth position. Yeah, so Di Francesco has overtaken Huffaker, uh, I think, actually, on that lap. Correct. So uh, that's interesting. Wonder why. Let's have a look here, see if we can see what happens. Just came in way too hot, round the outside, yeah. and hit the tyre barrier. Thank goodness the tyre barrier is there, otherwise he'd rejoin at turn six. Huge yeah. piece of debut, a debris coming off the right rear tyre carcass. Yeah, but it looked like that that tyre tire coming apart was uh, was effect, not cause, didn't it? it? That's what it looked like. Yeah, I, I, hard to say. We yeah, had true. a very similar accident, didn't we, with um, the number 10. Connington Minolka accident. Who was at the wheel of that? It was uh, it was Will, wasn't it? Who was at the, the wheel of that at the time? And he said, "I didn't know what happened. I, I really can't explain it." And, and that car ended up with a, a with a, a flat tire as well. But we thought that was from the flat spot from him getting on the anchors. Oh, that car's really badly done. He's done both ends of that. Yeah. Left cor left rear corner, right front corner. He's got a Broughton tour link on the back, at least one. Uh, he's got more rear steer than uh, a dumper truck at the moment. Not helped by the fact that the left rear tyre carcass is hanging on by its fingernails. All kinds of carbon fibre coming off that comes out of the Le Mans chicane. Front right looks a little better. Oh, that's an Im normally immaculately turned out car, the high class racing in a very fetching red and white colour scheme. Diffuser is up at a jaunty angle, rather f 45 degrees. So he's wiped the front right and he's wiped off the whole of the back of that car. Just lost it under braking coming through into turn one on the transition from the banking to the flats. And with 13 and a half hours to go, we are back into full course yellow for what is our ninth intervention by the BMW M3 competition. We've got the safety crews already down at turn one picking up the bits of bodywork. Make a nice collage on the wall of somebody's den that wouldn't it really? I suspect they'll take that back to the team just in case it's any use. The tyre barriers certainly do their, doing their job. Uh, very clear indication from where we're looking down of four locked Michelins and the car sliding sideways into that barrier. So at the front of the field, Jeremy, again, Alexander Rossi's done round about half his fuel stint. It's about a third of the fuel stint for the Cadillac of Alex Palau. Same sort of amount for Elio Castro Neves in the Mayashank Acura. Little bit more for the ally Cadillac of Mike Rockenfeller. Tristan Fortier, 10 laps, that's halfway through. Nick give or takes in for Tristan Nunez. And Earl Bamba on eight laps. They're all going to come in again, aren't they? The leaders, yeah. I think you kind of have to. If the yeah. leader comes in, you've got to come in. Yeah, I, I would think so. That's a the, very uh, badly damaged car. Yeah, the, the, the last car to pit was a 0 1. Uh, it's currently running in, in second position, so it'll be a little bit less fuel than the other guys. But it, it, that, that one only done four laps since its pit stop. The number 10 car, which leads the race, that'll certainly be in. It's been, Sorry, which uh, car's only done four laps? Uh, 
number zero one. Uh, oh, I've, got him as, now. I've got him as seven. Bizarre. Oh, and I've now got my foot caught. Oh, well, foot. sorry. Well, no, we've had, it's, we've had you know, a lap or two under caution. Ah, so that, yes. yes, fair point. Yes, racing laps, Jeremy. Yes, yeah. you're absolutely right. So, some more for the cracks. Carbon fibre scrap bid. And Andrew is down at high class racing. Uh, doesn't look good there, Andrew. A lot of bodywork damage, but worse than that, there looks to be suspension damage at the rear as well. Yeah, I'm just getting round the back here. They've taken the uh, rear deck off. I'm looking at the right rear suspension. That looks OK, and so does the left rear. They're putting a new nose on it. Maybe this is a bit more cosmetic than we thought, actually, John. Just looking round the car, new front nose is already on. Uh, there's quite a bit of damage uh, down the, the uh, side pod. Uh, they're just putting, looks like they're about to put a new deck on it. They've got new tyres on it. John, I think they might have got away with this. Really? Really. It was doing all kinds of weird yeah, rear steering. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're just, they're just, they're just um, cutting off some of the bodywork now on the right hand uh, rear side. And uh, oh, all the suspension, uh, there's none of the, the tow links, uh, they're definitely OK. Right. And the, uh, the rear body work is going, this is amazing. But maybe, maybe it was just the tyre moving around. I think it must have been, John. Yeah, I think it the, must have been. Rib. Yeah, all right, Andrew. Yeah, well, the Danes are going to it. And um, we've got a new rear wing going on. Yeah, I think you're going to see this car go out maybe in the next minute or two. Unbelievable. And the eight arms were all sorted as well, apparently. So, right, yeah, OK. Yeah. Wow. You know, you see car. the kinks in those. That is a very strong car, then, as Jeremy Shaw says. That was a big impact there. That's a high-speed turning with just under 13 and a half hours to go. Steve Tarrant. Hello, Steve. How are you, fella? Oh, well done for staying up for this time of night. Was it five o'clock in the morning in the UK? He says, quiz question on the, from the onboard on one of the DPIs. I'm seeing a cylinder-shaped item to the right that looks like a Coke can or a coffee mug has been left in the car, but it doesn't blow off. What is it, please? I, I think that's the external camera uh, mounting. Uh, some of these cars have more than one on boards. Some of them are on the roof, some of them are inside. We've also got some movable inside cameras as well uh, in the uh, last few races here in IMSA. I think that one in the front is, is that. You'll also see, as in the number four Corvette, into the middle, there appears to be two little pea shooters sticking out. Those are pitot tubes, measure air, pressure resistance they have them on aircraft as well to give you a very accurate reading of what you're doing going forward obviously direction of wind will play part on that quick update from andrew from high class racing don't tell me it's gone out Ger uh, it's gone out andrew john i'm standing where it was i'm on the concrete <laughs> it's gone that's extraordinary. <laughs> and uh, lots of other activity, though. I've got to get out of the way here. I've got to run because I've got the 16 coming in right behind me. Yeah, a lot of LMP2 cars in here. I'm just uh, heading down to G-Drive because I saw the rear deck off that. But that seems to be going back on the racetrack as well. So uh, give me a minute to and we'll give you an update on all that. It's dropped down to seventh position, high-class racing. But oh, I think it's dropped off the lead lap, Jeremy, hasn't it? The... Uh, Fabio share a car yeah yeah from first then down to seventh and the first car off the lead lap by my reckoning in LMP2 it looks absolutely immaculate they are having a laugh there was a big shark bite out of the rear part of the uh, the fairing there on the just in front of the right rear wheel well you've got to see it these Oricas you to Shawnak Based, main base at uh, Circuit Paul Ricard in the south of France. Uh, they make these cars strong, but they also make them serviceable. Who really understands endurance racing, and that's why he's worked with so many manufacturers down through the years. Now, 
the pits were open for G for, for LMP and GT whilst we were watching that. So let's take a, an update from Andrew. Yeah, a little bit surprised. The uh, John Bennett, uh, George Kurtz, Colin Brown, Nick Johnson car is actually having a front rotor change. Now, that's seen the 54 car, that is. Uh, so I'm surprised that that uh, change of the front rotor so early. So maybe they did have a problem. I can't find out if that was scheduled. No, Andrew, they, they have to make a mandatory uh, pit stop in the P2s any time they can P3s. make it. In the P3s, excuse me, thank mm. you, John. Uh, before the 22-hour mark in the race. And, yeah, we're pretty close to halfway, so that's pretty much an ideal time to make that change. Did we saw on, didn't the 74 yeah. car made its change after, I think, about eight well hours. Remembered. I think it was. That's, uh, that's the car that won here last year and went on to win the season-long championship as well. They swept the board last points. season. Uh, they made their, their stop uh, you know, a long, long time ago. So, But it is something that has to be done by all of the LMP3 cars. And it's a, it's a, a minimum pit stop time of four minutes to do that. So whereas the uh, the pro teams can do it a lot quicker than that, we're seeing it on the Risi Competizione Ferrari in GTD Pro as well. That car also changing its brakes. Under caution, of course, is a perfect time to do it. The uh, In the pro classes, they're not going to lose a lap. In the AM classes, i.e. LMP3, uh, you are going to lose a lot because it's a mandatory four minutes. And the reason for that is you know, these are supposed to be teams that are just learning the uh, gra the craft of uh, of endurance racing. Although you can't really classify Riley Motorsports as that for sure. But uh, yes. they, they don't want they don't want the teams you know spending a massive amount of money to try and make a, a pit stop more quickly than everybody else. So they're just trying to keep the, the, a level playing field. And I think it's a really smart move. And you have to make it at some place, at some stage during a race. And, and that's you know, come even down from last year, hasn't it, that time? The, the, the time has come down from last year. Indeed, yeah. Last year it was a minimum eight minute pit eight stop. Eight minutes, that was, yes, yeah, that's that was, right. Uh, yeah. I'd forgotten This about year it's down to, down to four. They've, yeah, they've figured out it's, you didn't need that much time, but uh, you know, safety again is the, is the number one factor here. So they wanted to make sure last safety year that there was cost. no, yeah. yeah, and cost. Uh, so, you know, no rushing involved. And uh, you even under yellow, you'll lose a lap here, but uh, you know, it's everybody is on the same footing there in LMP3. Andrew? Yeah, there's a problem for the uh, 38 uh, car down here, the uh, performance uh, tech motorsport car. Uh, the mechanics have been working on the cockpit, something in the cockpit. Can't quite see what they're doing at the moment, but they've now got the rear deck off. I'm going to try and open my head and see what the guy's working on. It looks like the ECU, maybe. And, uh, it's Garrett Griss, the uh, young Canadian who used to be uh, in Indy Lights and was quite successful now. He's still at the wheel and now people are sort of pushing wires and uh, connections uh, together. I don't like the sound of No, I don't. Yeah, that's not good. That's I'll a shame. try and dive in and find out what the problem is from performance tech. But um, as I say, uh, Griss is uh, still sitting in the car. Yeah, they've had quite a long stop. That's a shame. They had a really good run going there. And John, you'll be happy to know this. We've got another lead change here. It's the uh, 27th in this race. By virtue of not making a pit stop during this caution period, the number 31 ah! Cadillac leads the race. That means now Full that house. all seven DPI cars have led this race. Tristan Bingo. Nunez is at the wheel of that uh, wheel and engineering Cadillac right now. Yeah, bingo, we've had the full house. Excellent. I cannot believe the number 20 high-class racing cruising around, all the bodywork matching. Uh, it doesn't even look that different in terms of clean or dirty. It, it went back, it looked like it'd been attacked by a shawl of piranhas. Andrew, not good news for the car that you're next to. Where are you and what's happening? Yeah, I was just reporting on that uh, 38 uh, character is still at the wheel, but the car has been pushed down the pit lane backwards and it's going to go behind the wall, so they can't sort it out here. Uh, just an uh, amusing little thing, though, for them. Uh, over their pit, the number 38 car, you know, they like the pink colour, is a pink flamingo, a little model of a pink flamingo, which is... Another first for me, seeing that in the pits. <laughs> I do like the attitude of some of the teams. If you're going to be up for... It's not really a 24-hour 
race. It's flag to flag, it's a 24 hour race, but you're up at eight o'clock in the morning. So you're adding another seven, possibly eight hours onto the top of that. So really you're talking 32, 34, 36 hours uh, in terms of getting up in the morning, probably add another couple of hours on at night, maybe more. So you're probably looking at 42 hours by the time it all gets wrapped up and you get back to your hotel after a celebratory glass of water with your teammates or a, a, a consoling glass of iced water. It's, it's Alex Blow still at the wheel of number number zero one car. Yes, yeah, he's super glued himself in there, well, Jeremy. He's decided uh, he's not uh, he's not getting out. Yeah, well over three. He's done three hours, I reckon. Well, I think he, he got in that car at seven thirty-five uh, hours into the race. We're now ten and a half into the ra uh, into the race. Let me skim back and see what the computer says. It's he... getting a bit marginal, isn't it? My goodness, hang on. I'm to... He took off from Scott Dixon. Indeed. Uh, at uh, at 7.35 and the race on lap 236. Well, that's extraordinary, isn't it? What's, what's, the, what's the rule? Four hours Four and in six. six. I mean, they're so going to they're gonna have to get him out of that car because, uh, uh, yeah, if he stays out for another stint now, that, that's going to take him over, over four hours, isn't it? Am I missing something here? Uh, 218. And by the way, the number zero 02 car did not pit when the other ones did, stayed out, got its lap back. So now we have once again all seven DPI cars having led the race on the lead lap. There's a splash of fuel, hopefully nothing more than that, for the number 48 car of Mike Rockefeller. I like Cadillac car. Uh, let's hear from Johnny Adam, Aston Martin Works driver with Andrew. Aston Works driver, as you say, but new at Magnus Racing. How are you coping with these crazy kids here? Yeah, it's, uh, it's great fun. The team is brilliant fun, and uh, we've been so unlucky so far. You know, we've just not had the uh, rubber the green so far in the race, but uh, we're getting uh, a couple of laps back there. Uh, car feels okay. It's all pointing in the right direction, so a long way to go now. So we just have to stay out of trouble and get to the morning and see, see how we fare. Johnny, of course, you had a couple of great wins at Le Mans. How does this race compare with that? Uh, it's quite a different procedure. Obviously, the American rules and regs are quite different to how we race at Le Mans, but um, it's a special race, you know, and I think it'll be a, a sprint to the finish for the for the win. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we're in the fight come the end. Will you be with this team at Sebring? Uh, no, not at the moment. It's just for Daytona at the moment. But uh, yeah, the, the, the team are new to Aston Martin Racing. They seem to enjoy the car, but if we can get a good result, that'll be great for them. Excellent. Thanks, Johnny Adam. Three hours and ten minutes and counting for Alex Pelot. So he might just get one more stint in, Jeremy, at under 40 minutes. But it's uh, it's a bit tight. They don't want to have a full course yellow just before he has to come in in, you know, 40 minutes time. That could uh, be a little embarrassing. Ivan Chambers tweets at him to radio. Turns out I've got to eat my hat at 5.30, thanks to the miracle. That is the number 20 making it back on track after shaking itself to bits. Yeah, it is a couple of laps down. Uh, the is the number 20 car after limping around slowly and taking on that service. But still, uh, to be uh, in, you know, still in the running uh, and, you know, with uh, still more than half the race remaining, to be only two laps down, you know, that shouldn't if they have no problem for the difficulties, no problem to get that back, most likely. Yeah, well, I'm with Ed Jones, so we tend to forget that uh, in your first Indy 500, Ed, you finished third overall, you're a Rookie of the Year. Yeah, um, you know, it was really tough stints out there for me. Uh, when we went out, the car had some damage, and, you know, a lot of the time it was trying to just keep it out of the wall, so it was, it was really tough. I, I was really far off the pace. Um, but, you know, the guys are doing all they can to, to get us back out there. We just um, hopefully have fixed the issue for, for the next driver. So hopefully no more problems to end and uh, we can get back on the lead lap. Now, are you British or are you an Emirati or are you both? Well, I'm British, but I was born and raised in Dubai. I always lived there. So uh, it's a bit of a mix. But um, yeah. Yeah, I saw you racing European Formula 3, though, I remember. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, I won that in 2013, and so it was a good season for me. But uh, great to be back stateside and uh, racing in the Rolex 24. And how are you enjoying uh, working with Stuart Cox and the gang? Yeah, it's just been difficult, you know. In practice, my pace has been super strong, one of the fastest guys out there. And uh, just frustrating not being able to throw it in the race so far with the damage. So uh, hopefully we've got it fixed and we can, we can get going from the next time back in. Are you likely to go back to the Indy 500? Obviously, you had that great result. At some point, for sure, but uh, I don't know if it'll be this year, but uh, we'll have to see. Thanks very much, Ed. Great to hear from Ed Jones down there with Andrew. We're getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing with 10 minutes to go before we click off another hour, Jeremy. and. As we reported, if you are just joining us, we've now had all seven of the top flight cars in DPI leading this race. Tristan Nunes will lead the cars back to the line. A uh, slow car going down towards the... Oh, no, sorry. It's an SUV on the infield. <laughs> uh, strange how perspective changes in the evening. Just saw some lights moving slowly, thought it was somebody struggling coming out of the pit lane. Still a goodly number of uh, spectators out there, you hardy people in the uh, bleachers on the infield. A little bit quieter in the main grandstands now as the uh, hospitality areas have been closed for a couple of hours or so. But as I run the binos around, the infield, there's people still on the fence line in the bleachers on the exit of the International Horseshoe. It's about uh, a quarter full down there, huddling together for warmth, I would think. The two little uh, bleacher grandstands down there and down at the kink. Yeah, still a few hardy souls uh, on uh, the grandstand, the larger grandstand just before the kink and the one just after as well. Oh, I, mean, I, I love this time of the it's race. Uh, for me, it's, it's, the, it's the best part of the race. Uh, so, yeah, midnight until one or two in the morning. Absolutely love it. The uh, safety guards coming in. Just a quick note then in the GGD Pro, Philippe Nazar back in the lead for FAF Motorsports, car number nine. Similar Porsche, Patrick Pile, uh, KCMG, second place, car number two. The number 15, then the number 14 uh, of uh, the Lexus uh, behind the number 15 Mercedes, the Lexus number 14, Lamborghini number six. 63, Ferrari number 62 and Mercedes kind of 97 all on the lead lap in GTD Pro. In GTD, as we get the green flag once again, and a side by side battle into turn one around the outside. Oh, Whoa. that's a bit hairy for the number 60 of Elio Castro Neves. He's done that every time on the restarts, Jeremy's demon on cold tyres, but even he couldn't keep the car on the track then. He may lose second position here, side by side, with the number 10 of Alexander Rossi. Seems like no time at all that that car was two laps off the lead. Smart work and a few full course yellows, and they're back in the fight. It's still Tristan Nunes who leads from Elio Castro Neves, Wheel and Engineering Cadillac from MSR Acura, from Conning and Minolta Acura. Uh, I'm indebted to Vincent Bruins who gave me a picture a moment or two ago of Nick Boulle. Boulle spinning the hard point Porsche under yellow, but he got pointing in the right Boulle uh, uh, in that car. And Nick got it pointing in the right direction very, very quickly. And we were able to go green. 47 penalty hitting equipment drive through it's made a lot of mistakes well yeah it's it's super tight down in the pit lane That's it is. The, uh, now that is a fair point Jeremy. And, and, yes. and that well the number 47 car hit just about everything in any case hasn't it quite frankly that's the uh Settler racing ferrari they've had a really a torrid I time in this race twice so haven't they it's been well, behind yeah, the wall quite. twice or three times yeah if it's back in the race i'm impressed Six minutes to go to completing another hour at IMSA Motorsport. Hello to everybody who's doing the long shifts. Early morning in the UK, down the inside. Whoa. Zero two, Earl Bamba throws it up the side of Tristan Vautier. 
and gets that one done. Rossi all of a sudden down to fifth position. Nunes, Elio Castro Neves, Fortier, Bamba, Alexander, Mike Rockenfeller, and Alex Palau thinking, uh, not, maybe I don't need to be a part of this right now. He's just dropped to the back. More penalties, pit lane speed violations as well. That'll be a drive through for. I saw it pop up. Where's it gone? What's the car number on that? Oh, 25. So that is the BMW again. Uh, the uh, sorry, Jeremy? the BMW again. Yes, the yeah. uh, the darker of the two BMWs. Oh, a bunch of penalties, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Just oh, over 13 hours remaining. So Tristan Tristan Nunez has managed to hold just, just about hold off all comers there. In brilliant yeah. style. That it's was good. really classy. I mean, you're under attack there from the. Uh, Four-time Indianapolis 500 winner, defending race champion here, Elio Castro Nevers. Uh, he was going around the outside of you, but no, you've braked it exactly the right place. It's Elio that goes sailing wide. Tristan Nonius uh, comes across and to complete that 331, still in the lead in that number 31 wheel and engineering Cadillac. In the GT categories, battle for the lead. Patrick Pele with Jack Hawks with up his tailpipes. KCMG Porsche, Vassar Sullivan Lexus. Numbers 2 and 14, the blue marker strips, easily recognisable on the run to the tri-oval. Now, who's that right ahead of the KCMG car? It must be one of the prototypes, the Andretti car, I think, as they go down into turn one. Is that the 36? No, it's not. It's one of the Muller racing cars. I thought I saw a little more black on that car, and he's... In fact, holding up Patrick Pele, who's the leader. He's got to get down the inside here into the international horseshoe, but he can't make that stick. He's compromised his line there, and here's a chance for Hawksmith in the Lexus. Once the prototype gets going, it corners very well with the additional downforce. Down to the far end, as the Turner BMW is back behind the wall. The battle for the lead is hotting up in GTD Pro in the cool of the night, out towards turn six, three degrees Celsius in the air, seven on the track. Oh, magnificent stuff. Hawksworth will be loving this, so will Pele. Yeah. Not even a half distance yet, Jeremy, you know. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? So uh, the uh, leader at the restart there, Felipe Nasser, uh, is down into third position, then behind Patrick Pile and Jack Hawks. What a great comeback has been for the number 14 car. They had that penalty earlier on, assessed on uh, Kyle Kirkwood. Right at the end of his stint, he made contact with another car and was assessed at responsibility for that. Had to come in and serve a drive-through penalty. That dropped him for a little while, I think, off the lead lap, but they come back and that uh, Lexus is fighting for the lead now with Patrick Pile. It's brilliant to watch, really, really is. KCMG, by the way, a word for them. I, I said it was a big group. KC Motor Group is what the MG stands for. You know, he was mentioning about it being ba based in Hong Kong, but with uh, interest in many places. I met Paul a few years ago at one of the... Uh, prologue events for WEC when they were racing there and just a very genuine enthusiastic motorsport fan and prepared to promote his businesses through the medium of motorsport just a little double lift there through the kink you heard the engine lap lap a very air and center of Jack Hawks with Senna Love pumping the throttle just to try and get the car balanced. Well, That's why it was so good keep, in the running car keep, as well. Who? Senna. Yeah. Yeah, mainly to keep the turbo, turbo spinning back well. in the day. I remember yeah. watching him at, uh, at Detroit on the streets there. That fabulous streets. Back to the good. streets. Uh, absolutely, exactly. I was going to say that. But uh, there was a carousel corner uh, just coming off uh, the, the waterway. I'm watching that uh, Lotus balance through there. Bap, 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 with the that was mega, marvellous.
car in a um, great lap there by Tristan Nunes. Couple of great laps, 34-7 and a 35-0 there for our race leader. He stretched out well all of a second and a third over Elio Castrodevers, John. I'm told that the BR1 Matheson Motorsports LMP2 car, which has been running the sharper end of the field, has gone off at turn six and is now behind the wall. But which one? Yes, Stephen Thomas in the uh, PO1 Matheson car. That car off, off course, behind the wall, off course, or running slowly or stopped. I've had all three messages on the race control channel. Well, we're coming down to another race hour completed. Tristan Nunes has completed a brilliant restart and has pulled away to the tune of 1.4 seconds in his Cadillac number 31 for Whelan Engineering, ahead of Helio Castro Neves for Acura and MSR with Curb Agajanian's number 60. Then it's a full course yellow, full course yellow. Stephen Thomas resumed, so there was something going on down at turn five. But I've had the binos out down there, and I can't re really see what the issue is. We'll try and pick that up. Let me run through the class leaders. LMP2, Tower Motorsport, the number eight, Ferdinand Habsburg, and of Renus VK for Racing Team Netherlands, number 29. The Jumbo car, Mikkel Jensen, the PR1 Mathis and the 52 car. In P3, Kai von Berlo with Riley in the 74. Ori Fadani for AWA, what a race they've had up and down. And then Malte Jakobsen for Sean Creech Motorsport, the 33 Stars and Stripes car. Patrick Peely has the KCM Jeep number two Porsche with the lead of GTD Pro by just half a second when the yellows came out from Jack Hawksworth and the Lexus RCF GT3 from Vassa Sullivan, that's the 14 car. And the number nine, Philippe Nasser, driven FAF Motorsport Porsche, is next up in that category. In the arm class, it is Mike Skeen leading for Gilbert Kothoff Motorsports Mercedes. Yeah. 3.6 seconds ahead of Zachary Robichon for Wright Motorsports Porsche. And another Mercedes, Philip Ellis, Winwood, have been there or thereabouts all the way through in the 57. A race hour has been completed. RS2, IMSA Radio, live from trackside at Daytona International Speedway on www.imsaradio.com around the world in the North American region if you are so equipped Sirius XM 2 or 2 and we've got sound and vision for those of you who have no TV coverage in your territory that's on imsaradio.com if you click the live video tab or on imsa.tv another racing hour once again under yellow as we come back in a moment or two's time Gives me a chance to take my breath, and this is the 10th full course yellow. Now 59 laps and counting. I'm presuming that this, Jeremy, will be a quick yellow. How long were yeah. we? Yeah, only eight minutes under green flag conditions, so the pitch should not open. However, they are going to do a pass around. Not sure what the problem has been for Stephen Thomas in the number 11. PR1 Matheson Motorsport LMP2. Yeah, you just mentioned the uh, Gilbert Courthoff Motorsports mm. uh, uh, Mercedes up into the lead in uh, GTD. And uh, it's interesting. What's interesting to me is the, the, the first and second pl place cars exchange positions. So it's number 32 ahead of number 16, right most sports Porsche. Zachary Robichon at the very of the Porsche, Mike Skeen in number 32 Mercedes. The third and fourth place cars also swap places. Actually, no, uh, Lewis Perez Compong lost a couple of places in car number 21, the Ferrari. Uh, a to third place now is Phil Ellis in the number 57 Winwood Racing Mercedes. In fourth place is Kiffin Simpson, uh, back again at the wheel of the number 66 Acura for Gradient Racing. He has moved ahead also of the Ferrari 488 GT3. Come at 21 from AF Corsa, that's the uh, former rally champion Luis Perez Componc, 
and also on the lead lap and running very very well that number 42 nte sport lamborghini as we see the number 11 car being towed uh, out of the way there and into the uh, escape area i think to, to, to turn six uh, turn uh, five uh, uh so behind Jaden Conright in the number 42 car, the number 70 Inception McLaren. Ollie Milroy now at the wheel of that car uh, is still very much in contention. And John Potter in the Magnus Racing Aston Martin. They, that's one of the teams that had a, a major stop and go penalty. Stop in three and a half minutes, it was, I think, earlier in the race for an improper wave around early, much earlier this evening. That car, number 44, is back on the lead lap as well in GTD. So we've got eight cars on the lead lap in GTD. 32, 16, 57, 66, 21, 42, and 70, and 44. The, the next car one lap down is number 19 Lamborghini with uh, Jeff Siegel at the wheel. Was that car just got the wave around? I think they might be on the lead lap as well, actually. I think they might be on the lead lap as well. Yeah. No. Yes, no. What's the scoring doing? Perhaps not. So okay. who's that, Jeremy? Okay. Number 19, Lamborghini. Mm. No, I think it shows a lap down. It is a lap down, I think. Jeff C. Yeah, oh. lots, lots of cars still in contention in, in all of the classes. It's but hard to say under full course yellow because the timing numbers for the gaps don't make any sense of the sense of course until everybody gets um, packed up together. Uh, Felipe Nazar was slow in the number nine. What do you mean? When? Just a moment or two ago in GTD Pro, Faf Motorsport. No, I mean, he, he, he lost the lead uh, of the of the class, uh, you know, a couple of three laps ago, soon, shortly after the restart, but uh, still running there in third place, I think. Yeah, that was 30 seconds ago. No. Oh running slowly or stopped and then resumed. What if it was just a, a snag, a, a, a glitch as they went across one of the loops? Now we have got a car coming into the pit lane. Is that the That's a safety, safety car? car? Isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. To... Doesn't have its main headlight. Oh, we're going straight back to green. And somebody dives immediately I think that was a leader, into the it? pit lane. And that was almost very, very yeah, dangerous indeed it is indeed the yeah it's Tristan Nunez, it's Tristan Nunez. Course, that yeah. is the car that did not pit to join the uh, the previous caution period uh, which is uh, why, what enabled him to, to take the lead of the race so he was in need of service so because that was a, a short yellow uh, the pits were not open so he's now going to come in now he's going to be able to make this stop and get out again without losing a lap assuming no no difficulties but uh, yeah, that's uh, not really what they were looking for. Also, McLaren into the pit lane. That is the 59, but I think that's a penalty, is it? He seems to have... I don't forgot his pit lane was... pit box was all the way at the end. The wheel and Cadillac that haven't given up the lead is rolling again. So Elio Castro Neves leads the motor race. He dived in quite late and made the commitment now locked up as he came in hope he hasn't got a pit lane speeding violation there but all way, already on its way back out with just under 13 hours still to go Tristan Nunes actually entered the pit lane before no, actually on the same second as the green flag was given he was already in the pit lane Now, Turner Motorsport, game over this year, not our weekend, we'll go over the data, have beers with Imza and figure it out. Rear diffuser damaged and it can't be reattached to the car. That's two BMWs that have had that problem and we've got a spinner. It is, that is the Carbon Lamborghini on the far side of the track. It's well off the circuit and grass tracking to get back on and will make it back to the track but did it jump or was it pushed 
restart, you never know. It's at the at the uh, bus stop, and it was pushed by the number 21, Ooh. and pushed and pushed and pushed again by the AF Corsa. Ferrari, AF uh, Amato Ferrari, no relation, but a great servant of the Prancing Horse brand. We've often said, haven't we, there isn't a Ferrari works sports car team at the moment. If it was, it would look very much like AF. And that car is going to have to come into the pit lane, Jeremy, after that contact. So Luis Perez Compank is into the pit lane in GTD number 21 Ferrari. And finally, Alex Blow brings that number 01 Cadillac onto the pit lane. Service down there for the Cadillac racing uh, team of uh, Chip Ganassi, that is the uh, V Performance Academy car. Let's uh, see who takes over. It has to be driver change, surely. Yeah, it has to. Uh, I just can't quite see the car. Where is it? Uh, turn, uh, let's go through the kink. Go turn five, I think. So uh, who's, who's still showing uh, us that's Alex That's still Palau. showing us Alex Palau. And if that, that is correct, they are going to be very tight for their driver time. Uh, Andrew, down in the pit lane. Well, actually, in uh, the Ganassi pit, as I see Sebastian Bourdais, helmet on, has come down the uh, ladder, uh, getting ready to uh, get in that car. Yeah, I think the car's going to be in there momentarily. Oh, it's the word we're not allowed to use, so I just used it. Uh, we, the whole day is getting ready, and uh, we'll get Palau when he gets out of the car. It's a fantastic sim for the young the Spaniard, and of course the reigning IndyCar champion. No, so that, that's perfect use of momentarily. Uh, in a moment, not for a moment. That's perfect. I have no problem with that. Penalty for the number 20 car, not fulfilling oh. emergency service requirements. That's uh, Fabio Scherer, the high class racing. Yeah. That's uh, insult to injury. They came in and fixed that car, of course. Now, the incident involving the 39. Oh. Uh, that, that wasn't Lapa the 39, Gini. that was the 62 and the 32 Oh, yes, there. sorry, but the, the previous one between the AF Corsa and the uh, and the carbon is under investigation, and then we had a bit of hip and shoulder there yeah. a moment or two ago involving the AMG. Uh, one of the AMGs, uh, Jeremy. Yeah, the, the, the GTD class leading car number 32, Mike Skeen, uh, was at the wheel of that car on the outside of the road coming out of uh, turn three, and he was... I should off the racetrack, basically, by the number 62 Ferrari, Alessandro Piaguidi. I think, could, I think the stewards are going to be fairly busy over the next few minutes. I like it when you say ushered off the race. Excuse me, could you just come over here? Look at that race. Just, look that at that little bit, please. Look at that lap time there. 34.077 for Elio Castro Nevers. Uh, that car's fastest lap of the race, and only fractions away from the fastest lap of the race that was set uh, a little earlier on at 134.000. That was a 134.077 for the Indianapolis 500 champion. Brilliant stuff. But he didn't pull away from Earl Bamba, who remains just a half a second behind him in second place in car number two. So it's number 16 and number two, oh, zero two that are uh, heading away off the banking and down the, the, uh, the, the back straight again in this super battle for the lead. Tristan Vautier in third position in car number five. And a hot on his tail is Alexander Rossi in car number 10 followed by Mike Rockenfeller in car number 48. Evening to Alan Space. Surprised, uh, says Alan, that uh, the cars that were running, the teams that were running GTLM last year are not in contention in GTD Pro. I would have expected them to have a leg up. The problem, of course, Alan, is that they're running different specification cars on completely different compound Michelin tyres with different control systems, etc. 
particularly for Chevrolet, given that that is the same car that they run that Corvette last year. They've had to re-engineer the car to something like GT Daytona regulations. Uh, RLL, the BMW, works effort over here in the States. They are uh, running a GT3 rather than the GTLM. See above. And as for the Porsches, well, we haven't had a Porsche works team over here for a couple of years. So WeatherTech have been running, were running the RSRs last year. They've gone to the GT3, GT Daytona version of the car. They have had some experience of running GT3s in other series, but uh, again, what you're doing is dropping down into a category where other teams have already been running the cars for some time. The biggest change, talking to RLL and to Chevrolet Corvette Racing, is that they've had to get used to the customer tyres. One compound of slick Michelin tyre rather than what's called the confidential tyres, where they have three different solutions for slick tyres. And particularly for Corvette, of course, used to the cars being set up for those tyres, the setup differences as well. Race control have made their decision, and it will be a drive through for the AF Corsa for that incident with the Lamborghini. And no further action between the Corvette number three and the leading GT Daytona AMG number 79 that no. we saw. No, that's a different. That's, oh, no, that's, no, a, that's different, a different. That's a different, different one. Yes. Not sure, what, not sure that one. What that one is because number three car is uh, you know quite a, quite a long way behind. They say just 12 laps behind after the problems they spent uh, with the alternator. I think it was changing that number three car. Don't, we, we didn't see that instance. 79 car is the uh, one of the WeatherTech cars. Isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah. My apologies. Yeah. It's the Porsche. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, GTD with uh, after the Mike scheme was. Uh, ushered off the road there. He's fallen to third position, but still right there in the, in the mix. Phil Ellis then leads. Philip Ellis in number 57 for Windward Racing. That's the Mercedes. Then the Porsche of Zachary Robichon right behind him in second place, kind of a 16 for Wright Motorsports this year. Zachary Robichon, the Canadian, of course, last year drove with Faf Motorsports to win the championship with uh, Lawrence Vantour, who stepped up into the GTD Pro class this year, John. It, it was the 62 Risi car and the 32 AMG, that's been reviewed and it's warning. resulted in, in a warning for the 62. Jeez. Andrew, down at Chip Ganassi, update please. Well, I've been waiting very patiently, Sebastian uh, Bourdais has climbed back up the ladder and is uh, now sitting atop of the uh, perch, uh, but I'm assured that Alex Palau will be stopping in three laps times, I think you're going to hang on here, John. <laughs> But, but, but why didn't Pelo get out of the car when he came in, you know, four or five laps ago? That's that's the curious thing. Yeah, agreed. Four laps, absolutely. It'd be, it'd be five when he comes through yeah. this time. That's going to be an extra stop. They've had two opportunities, Jeremy, in the last uh, 17 laps to get Pelo out of that car. He did an eight-lap stint, and then there was a caution. And he stayed in, then he's done 13 laps of this caution, and now he's done a four lap stint this caution. He's getting very, very close to his four hour maximum. Yeah, he's still got about 15 minutes or so, to, uh, I think. Uh, it was yeah, 7 uh, 7.35 he came in, so we're now at 11.18 into this race. So he's got about you know, 15, 16 minutes or so. It's not that, uh, but, but he certainly won't be able to run a full stint now, having made that pit stop what, five laps ago. That's it. What that's time did you say he got into into the car? Um, into the race at uh, seven hours and thirty-five oh. minutes into the race, and it's now it, we're now eleven hours and eighteen minutes into the race. So it's about seventeen minutes short of four hours. Right. So he's okay, and it, I mean, he's, I mean, he's obviously pretty comfortable in there. But let's say it's odd that they wouldn't that they would. Uh, 
not have made the change when he came in just a few laps ago when he clearly was, you know, was not going to be able to complete a, another full stint uh, it, it, without violating that four hours in a row rule. Yeah, Bourdais was here, so I mean, he could have yeah. got in the car, he didn't have his helmet on. There was, there was, it was obviously planned, but it does seem strange, I must admit. Yeah, he's got about 18 minutes still to run on that. It's one o'clock in the morning, Eastern. Good to have your company. So a warning for the 62 Risi Competizione for, as Jeremy beautifully described, ushering the lead Gilbert called off GTD EMG off the road. Excuse me, excuse me. Can you just over there, please? Just if you don't mind, to the left. Thank you. Like bridal groom, bridal groom, thank you, over there. Uh, that has resulted in a warning. I think he's a bit lucky to get away with that one, quite frankly. Yeah, uh, and it's, he's lost positions from that as well uh, in that car. It's Philip Ellis now for Windward Racing that leads that category. So th there was a, a disadvantage for oh, that yeah. car. Right Motorsport have gone through in the second, and Mike Skeen down to third. Yeah. And some, you know, two and a bit seconds further back. Yeah, look at young Kiffin Simpson. He's right with uh, number 32 car. I mean, we've got the, now the top six cars in GTD non-pro, all covered by by four and a half seconds. That's number 57, 16, 32, 66, 70, and 42. Uh, and in terms of manufacturers, a Mercedes, Porsche, Mercedes, Acura, McLaren, Lamborghini. That's pretty stout, isn't it? And then the best of the Aston Martins is in seventh place, and John Potter is only about eight seconds further back down the road as well in the number 44 car for Magnus Racing. Yeah, but it shows no sign, does it, of... Uh, John Potter's doing a nice job. He, he's a... He's a, he's a pretty decent... Uh, Steer is, and he, he likes this honest. car. You know, he loves this car. Yeah. He loves this car. I, I don't think he would have come back, Jeremy, uh, had it not been for the fact that LMP3 was was brought into the full championship and, and able to run in some of these longer races. Uh, he's uh, really enjoying his racing again. Atoms of Radio, by the way, if you want to get in touch, it's John and Jeremy in the. Haggerty Global Broadcast booth overlooking the tri-oval. A note here from Acura, the early race flat tyres for number 60 and number 10 car were apparently caused by contact with the kerbs before the tyres were fully yeah. up to pressure. That's exactly what we talked about yeah. that earlier on. Yeah. You know, when the, in, in these cool temperatures, you've just got to be really careful not to abuse those tyres in the early stages. So thanks very much indeed to uh, Dan Layton for passing that information Excellent. Uh, along. Uh, and uh, we, you know, we thought it was you know, slightly odd, but uh, you know, that, that explains it perfectly. So, we continue with this stop-start race, but amazingly, when we are racing, it does seem to settle into a rhythm very, very quickly. Hawksworth for Lexus leading in GTD Pro by just half a second. Felipe Nazar for Porsche in the number nine Faf car in second. Then it's Ferrari, Alessandro Pagidi with a warning. Yellow card, if you will, in soccer put parlance in that Risi Competizione Ferrari. At the front of the field, Earl Bamba is close to half a second on Elio Castro Neves. As they steam towards the International Horseshoe. And a little bit of traffic ahead. Oh, now this is significant actually because it's Alex Palau who's right in front of the leader. So when Palau comes in, they're going to drop off the lead lap here, Jeremy, with these pit stops that they took and then didn't take. That's going to cost them the lead lap in the, in the zero one one for Palau. He's right in front of the leader now with a pit stop looming in the next, what, 15 minutes or so, less than that now. Yeah. I'm not sure this is the smartest. He's been fast, no doubt. I'm not sure that it's been the smartest. I wonder if they've got communications issues with that car. 
don't understand why they left him out. They issued two opportunities to get Palau out of the car as he's coming towards his four hour maximum. He's right in front of the Elio Castro Neves car. Elio has got uh, pressure from behind. Earl Bamba, isn't it great to see Earl? The affable Kiwi. Oh, weaving left and right by the leader through the tri-oval as Earl Bamba goes to the left, makes the leader defend. Now he can cut back around. There's traffic ahead of them. This is marvellous racing at almost half distance. 12 and a half hours, a little over that, into the International Horseshoe. And they're still at it as if it was the first race, first lap of a 20-minute sprint race through the kink. Every time you think it's going to ease off, it bursts back into life. That is the... I think that's the 0-1 right ahead of them. Yes, it is. And Bamba goes to the right-hand side, the high side, coming through turn six. Now he'll come back. Does he get the drive onto the banking? He does. He's going to put the right-hand wheel almost to the rear quarter. Flashes the lights. Chopped down from Elio Castro Neves on the banking. That was really aggressive defence from the leader in the race in the Maishank racing car. And right ahead of them is Alex Palau, struggling to stay on the lead lap at the moment, and with a pit stop due for him imminently. I'm not sure how, how has he managed to fall that far back? I mean, he, you know, when he came in, he was... Here's the battle for the lead, Jeremy, while you're cogitating on that. Through the tri-oval, past the Jumbo, Racing team there, the Lance car. And Elio timed that a tiny little bit better. A lot of bias to the back brakes on Elio Castro Neves' car. They're lighting up much redder than that of the 02 Cadillac behind him. Palau has got it. Cars cover. Here comes. Earl Bamba to the right-hand side through the King, but thinks better of that. More traffic. That is the Tower racing car. Gets round the outside of the horseshoe at the western end, and he drives past into the lead. That's an extraordinary pass at any stage of the race. But after almost 12 hours of racing, that outside line must not be in the best condition in terms of the... Rubber pickup that's been laid down there, and Earl Bamba leads the race for Cadillac and for Chip Ganassi. Superb piece of overtaking, confident, decisive by the New Zealander. And we have yet another lead change. Well into the 20s of lead changes. I'll remind you that we have had all of the seven machines in DTI at the head of the field. Well, something else. Yes, there was the tower car there that may have just caught the attention of Elio Castro Neves, but Earl Bamba just rolled the brakes off as he went into the corner and claimed the outsiders. Elio and the leading car come into the pit lane, so now it's down to the pit crew. Palau must be due in shortly as well. He doesn't need to for fuel, but he needs to on time. So they're coming in at the end of 26 laps for Elio Castro Neves and 24 laps for Earl Bamba. They're both staying in the car. They'll both be given a new set of Michelins. Big wheel spin from the Acura. And he gets back into the lead on the pit lane. So the pit exchange, Earl Bamba fights hard to get the lead coming in. And Elio Castro Neves retakes the lead in the pit lane. Marvellous stuff down there on the track and in the pit lane. 
quality entertainment here, Jeremy. Uh, Absolute quality. Yeah, I mean, officially, he never actually lost it because he, he led the previous <laughs> lap. He came into the pits behind him, yeah, but it got ahead of him again. So when he came across the start finish line, he was still ahead. So officially, he never lost the lead on that. So because of where his pit is, exactly. yeah, and he, the fact he got out earlier. Yeah, so I can't count that as a 29th lead change. <laughs> no, in, in point of fact, in, uh, across the, uh, the, the line, you're absolutely, yeah. absolutely right. That will continue. Still waiting to see Palau come in. The ally Cadillac of Mike Rockefeller was in and out. He stayed aboard as well. And Alexander Rossi came in in the Conica Minolta uh, uh, Acura uh, the lap before, actually, uh, as did Tristan Vautier. Spin for the 31 Whoa. and the 0 2. That's two of the major contenders. That's down at the West End, and that was contact. It's all kicking off with half an hour to go to half time. And it's Bamba who regains the track quickest. Tristan Nunes, who didn't stop, so therefore made up time and was going for the effective second place there. Well, that's going to take race control some sorting out. <laughs> Don't forget, they can't go to sleep either to our left, so they're working just as hard as all the teams and immediately gets back up to speed. John Doonan, president of IMSA, joins us as the action kicks off. What, what did you do? Light the blue touch paper before you came in, John. Good evening. Or should I say good morning? How are you? Yes, good morning to you both and good morning to all your listeners around the world. How, can you believe it's been two years since we sat in this booth together? Exactly. Yeah, really. Um, to call this race. And I'm, I'm so, so happy that we can all be back together again. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, fresh as a daisy at the moment. Um, it's been a <laughs> tremendous build up to kick off the season, especially after Petit Le Mans. And um, now we're all back together again to, uh, to, to showcase the 60th running of this great event. Uh, and just to prove that it always goes mental when John comes into the booth, <laughs> all the hard work by Elio Castro Nevis and the MSR with Curb Agajanian crew is undone by a pit lane speeding violation he'll have to come back down through the pit lane he retook the lead on the pit lane strategy jeremy but one k over he'll have to come back through oh. do it again elio man that's that's going to be annoying number 31 car meanwhile that uh, was uh did, you know, was not making a pit stop. When he made that contact with the number zero two car, it's costly for zero two. Is a problem also Dragon for the fourth place car, Pado Award, off the road at the uh, at the uh, Le Mans chicane. That's the fourth place P two car for Dragon Speed. Unmissable that uh, yellow and orange car. He's pointing in the right direction. Again, that hand at the new Le Mans chicane. John, let's start with you talking about that. Uh, real affirmation of the continuing partnership and respect for between the ACO. Yeah, was there contact there yes. from behind? Yeah, there was. The zero 2 on the 31, it looked like. I think Bamba might be taking a penalty for that one. Not our call to make. I'm looking across to my left to see. <laughs> we get, was there? Oh, no, yes. was no. there? Yeah. Just a little touch. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, the the Mont Chicane. The, the bus stop, uh, an affirmation of the continuing partnership and respect between Daytona and Le Mans, IMSA and the ACO. Yeah. How important is that to the outside world to know that, John? Well, I think for our audience and all your listeners, it should be a statement about the stability of endurance sports car racing going forward. For the automakers, I think it's an additional affirmation after we made the announcement of a 10-year extension on our strategic alliance and licensing agreement with one another at Le Mans last August. Um, I think for um, all the partners of the championships uh, to know that um, our convergence that was announced back in July last summer um, is, is real 
and the statement of, of naming such famous corners on such historic and famous um, circuits uh, and, and events, it it's, uh, may appear a minor thing, but it's actually extremely special. Yeah, just a very quick note, very good point there. Uh, the uh, number zero one car has just come onto the pit lane, uh, and uh, Sebastian Bourdais finally has been uh, installed in that car in place of Alex Plo, who I reckon drove for three hours and 58 minutes. Yeah, I was going to say 57 or 58. I'm just looking. It was rather, rather close. Uh, we'll come back to John in a moment. John Doonan here. Let's go to Andrew down in the pit lane who has uh, Earl Bamber, I think. We've got Earl Bamber here, it's just uh, finally debriefing with his mechanic here, uh, engineer. And uh, I'll just be a little bit patient. Now he's coming now. He's a good lad, the, the Kiwi, the uh, twice Le Mans overall winner. Wow, what racing that was! Yeah, that was uh, really good fun in the middle of the night here. Uh, I mean, it was a bit wild there a couple of times with Helio. He was getting a bit wound up. Um, but uh, yeah, it was good fun racing and the car was nice and quick. We managed to get a lap back and then get back in the lead. So, um, shows the Jeffy Ganassi guys doing a great job at the pit lane. So, um, had a bit of a bubble on the outlap there for Marcus. It's a bit tough coming first ever Daytona and the freezing cold and trying to get the tyres on. But um, I mean, we'll come back and uh, yeah, just going to keep pounding around. I mean, it made fantastic viewing. Uh, when, you, when you go home, you should watch that last hour. going to be uh, pretty hot and awesome. Uh, did you touch the Wheeland car? Did you hit the Wheeland car or what was the story there? Yeah, I think there was a bit of a coming together with Wheeling car on the outland, but um, let's see what the people upstairs say. Fabulous drive, mate. Uh, the people upstairs say drive through. So, yeah, he put his hands up to that. Uh, absolutely fine and a very quick decision by race control who'd been really on their metal today. John Doonan, president of uh, IMSA, with us at the Haggerty Global Broadcast booth here. So the, the strength of that relationship between the ACO uh, and IMSA uh, affirmed in a, in a public way, absolutely. Uh, you and Pierre talking sensibly about the future. We've got a new name. Hang on a second. We've got the high-class racing car off at Term 5. That might be a full-course yellow. That's extraordinary. That number 20 car rebuilt after a big accident uh, to turn one earlier on. And local yellows at the moment down there, but it's in the straight on position. And there's yeah. someone else off uh, at that area. Was that the same car? I think it was. Looks like that car maybe is turning around and trying to get through. Oh, it's turn 26. Uh, it is uh, car, car 26. 26, not the high class racing car. I apologise, Jeremy. It is the Nolan Siegel Mulner Duquesne LMP3 car. Yeah, in that case, they've had a incident back race. <laughs> it's fair to say. Uh, and yeah, they got themselves uh, yeah, pretty much back into contention uh, a while ago. But uh, th that spin certainly isn't going to help. Tell you what, the guy does need this full full course caution, Sebastian Bourdais. He's uh, not far short of but not quite, I think, a lap down to our race leader. I think he's the head of Rossi on the road. So, just to, to go back to where we were, John, uh, significant uh, announcements this week. That very public... Uh, no, it is turn 20. That has been uh, corrected to turn 20. At uh, turn 20, car 20. Was it both of them, or is ah, that just being... Yeah, really. 26 spun and 20 is off. So they may be, they may be connected. Um, let's talk about the acquisition that IMSA have made of HSR, Historic, Historic Sports Car Racing. There's been a partnership there for a while. Uh, IMSA uh, helping them out with uh, Historic Sebring, Historic Daytona, the, the 24 hours. What's the thinking behind that? Well, first of all, David Hinton and his staff at HSR have done a fantastic job working on celebrating the history of our sport. Um, you know, several of their events <laughs> happen at circuits that are 
part of IMSA properties or, or NASCAR, obviously the classic 24 getting uh, world-renowned recognition here presented by IMSA. Uh, we've got uh, two races at uh, Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, most notably the MIDI, uh, the classic MIDI event, and then of course that's two. A, that's a brilliantly it kept is. secret. It I mean, is. the entry for that is fantastic. And it's at a level that, that people can come and take part in that. I know Joe Bradley's done the commentary for it for, for many, many years. He raves about that event, John. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a hardcore racers, um, you know, Monterey historics, in my opinion. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's been an active event for years and, and a couple events at Sebring. Um, so much of HSR has IMSA content. Uh, uh, we, we've got full course yellow so we can develop this uh, in a second and we will do. John is John Doonan is with us at IMSA Radio if you want to ask John any questions. Let's have a word with Alex Palau after that marathon stint. Three minutes under the maximum. Three hours and 57 minutes in the car. Andrew. Well, that was a marathon. That was an IndyCar race and a half, that was. Oh, my God, yeah, that was a bit too much. I just told the engineers that uh, maybe we went a bit too long. But I think we we're a bit unfortunate with uh, some yellows, some issues on the car, but uh, also really lucky to, um, with the issues and the bad moments we had to still be on the lead and on the lead lap, I mean, and, and still be fighting. So, yeah, we have a good car. Um, the teammates are fast, so uh, it's going to be a great day. Were you struggling with the tyres a bit at the end? Yeah, because we did like a double stint with, uh, yeah, I don't know, we did a bit of a mess. Um, but um, yeah, I was struggling quite a lot, um, but we made it, so it was good. Yeah, you did. Oh, we were surprised when you came in under the yellow that um, you didn't come out of the car then. Yeah, because we did only two tires instead of um, having four tires. That's why then I was, we were struggling a bit. But uh, yeah, we wanted to try. We didn't want to drop to the end of the field. But uh, yeah, as I said, it worked out. We're still there. We're still fighting, and we have a really fast car. A, a, a different experience for an IndyCar champion, eh? Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing to be here as uh, an IndyCar champion. It doesn't really count here. Uh, it's a total different experience, but I'm loving it, learning a lot, and yeah, having a lot of fun. Gracias. Thank you. Oh, great to hear John Turner listening to that, nodding away with the uh, the comments from from Alex Palau. Uh, let's go to something else. I'll come back to the the HSR thing in a minute. We've we've got Rolex here, right back where you and I remember the Rolex 24 hours at Daytona being. First big international race of the season here in America, and international being the key word there. Yeah, the original vision of this event, which uh, as a historian like you and Jeremy and so many of your listeners, was Bill Francis, and that was to have an international event with the best uh, drivers on the planet, the best uh, manufacturers, the best race teams uh, here in Daytona to, to, to emulate, frankly, what he had seen uh, in his international uh, approach to the sport uh, with Le Mans. So uh, the fact that we're now doing it for the 60th time, mm. Le Mans obviously knocking on the door of their 100th uh, time, it shows you uh, how much... Uh, has happened over the years uh, with with the same format, uh, but really the ultimate uh, same foundational theme. Isn't it amazing that we sit here now, John, and, and you say that matter of fact, and of course that's absolutely true. And the coming together of Grand Am and the American Le Mans series was because Dr. Don Pino's God rest his soul, who, to whom we all owe so much, and I'll put my hand up to that one, had exactly that same vision years later and created Petit Le Mans at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. That's exactly right. And, uh, you know, what Dr. Don uh, did and then what ultimately uh, Dr. Don and Jim France did to uh, put it all back together uh, in the right way, to do the right thing for the sport, uh, do the merger. And uh, back in 2014 is the last time we saw a field uh, anywhere near this. That was 67 cars 
and so we're uh, we're celebrating the the largest field since 2014 this weekend. We couldn't have got 67 cars in this pit no, lane. You capped it at 61, and, and uh, that that is. I mean, we're squeaking here. You'd have to put Vaseline on the cars uh, to get them in if you got any more else in the pit uh, lane. I can promise you, uh, our entire IMSA staff, all my teammates, walked this pit lane to make sure that we were <laughs> using every foot that we could, <laughs> but also trying to keep the quality of the experience up for the team. Absolutely, and safety, of course. Yeah, safety's number one, and uh, in the end, um, not putting the quality of the show uh, at risk uh, to, to uh, just have the quantity. 